A very warm welcome back to the Triton Super High Roller Series here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Resort in North Cyprus. I'm Laura Nisi. Joining today, Henry Kilbane and Ali Najad. Guys, back together again. We were last here back in September, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. End of September. The Three Musketeers. Was I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. The I'm just focused on oh. the sling. <laughs> um, today because Henry <laughs> was a tough guy over the first two streams and now all of a sudden he's coming. I just, uh, you know, personally I want to know what did you do that you shouldn't have that's got you back in the sun? I don't know, man. I've just been using it too much, all right? Let's not take away from what we're okay. here for, okay? Right. The poker. Five good arms. That's enough <laughs> to do a pregame, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Well, now that now that we are a few days in, obviously we got to start recapping things. Yesterday we saw the end of the GG Super Millions, the 25K No Limit Hold'em event. Uh, 29 players came back yesterday. 23 got paid. Uh, Ali, I think it went fast there, down to the money. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, at the onset of the broadcast, we sort of speculated that we were going to see one of these grindy affairs and then suddenly we were corrected because the bubble burst rather quickly and then we even got down to the final table dare I say rather quickly but that's when things began to slow down as uh, Orpin Kisachikoglu eliminated in 10th and that would set the stage for of course our final table of nine players as we take the recap from yesterday's action where a number of fresh faces to Triton five in total were amongst the final nine, and Christoph Christopher Putz was among them. Here he found himself all in for his final 350K, one of multiple Germans that found their way into the event. His ace five was in a bad way against the ace queen and queen ten of Schwede and Jaroszewski, who played an active side pot on the river. He was not able to hit the ace as Jaroszewski out kicked by Schwede pointed to him, the entire pot went his way and puts collected $91,000. Not a bad debut on the Triton Super High Roller Series. Next, it was the turn of the Belarusian Alex Boyka, who jammed pocket threes. Sam Greenwood with the min-raise open on the button, promptly in there with an ace-king suited, which turned into a nut flush draw and then binked the diamond on the turn and left Boyka drawing dead as he would collect $115,000 for his maiden voyage into the Triton Super High Roller Series. And the newbies were dropping like flies, ninth and eighth, and then another one among them in Tobias Schwecht right there with King Eight suited, decided that he needed to take his chances and ran into two kings and ace 10 on the flop. Straights were dire for him, and on the turn he was drawing dead. Side pot between Greenwood and Salahadine Badir, who woke up with the two kings. As Badir would dispatch Schwecht, who took home $156,000. Then six remained, and it was the turn of Robert Hydorn. With an ace jack, he opened to $1.3 million. Greenwood was the customer with king queen. And on the all-heart ki all king high board, Hydorn flopped the nut flush draw, decided to jam in the remaining 1.8. Greenwood was a customer. Held on on the turn and on the river, turned into top two as Hydorn failed to connect with a heart, but certainly did not fail to perform as a $211,000 payday headed his way. And then it was Greenwood's turn. The man who dispatched Hydorn found himself sitting on an ace nine suited. 776 board here. He isn't quite all in yet. He's got one token, I believe, in his hands there. And of course, his Schwede had flopped trip sevens. Barreled, Greenwood forced to make the call and drew dead. Rather unceremonious end to his event, $272,000, and of course points toward the Ivan Leal Player of the Year Award, which we'll get to a little bit later. Then it was the turn of Igor Yaroshevsky, first timer, the last one remaining in the field, four-handed. He would be dispensed with two sixes as he ran into a King Jack, which turned into top two. Unable to hit the set on the river, but giving us a little wink as we gave him a little payout. Maybe not that little, 339,000. Three players then remained. Santos Suvarna, the overwhelming chip leader. Badir and Schwede involved as well. And you see Schwede with an ace king here up against the nut flush draw and Jack High for Salahadin Badir, Suvarna. Able to make the nut flush on the turn, and not one, but two players drawing dead at that point as 
the board would pair, and Suvarna, like a hot knife through butter, slicing through the competition. Badir, 620,000, courtesy of third. Shwedi, 636,000, courtesy of second. And of course, if those payouts seem a little sus, it's with good reason, because a deal was struck, of course, by Suvarna with the other two boys. Suvarna taking home $700,000, and perhaps more importantly, that title, which meant so much to him. Yeah, a bit of a bizarre ending there, you know, but the numbers were crunched. Luca came over and, you know, offered ICM, offered Chip Chop. These guys, a bit of backstory between the three. I believe they play a lot of cash games together, not just here at Merritt, but around the world, and said, no, we're happy with these numbers. Santosh wants the title, and, yeah, ultimately, Santosh Savana coming out on top in event number one. Paid for it in a way, obviously, yeah. giving up a lot of the equity that he would have otherwise had, To much to the surprise, I think, of a, of a number of people as kind of word got out as yeah. to how they decided to draw the curtain on the event. I, I don't know about you, Henry. It was a little bit... Uh, unusual, not something that we normally experience here, but obviously I think the ethos at Triton is to certainly defer to the players, allow them to do what it is that they feel is in the best interest uh, for themselves and, you know, not get too involved, not interfere too much, but uh, certainly a bit of an unorthodox ending. Yeah, I mean, look, Luca did what he did. He did everything by the book, incredibly professional, always yeah. looking to protect the players. Went over the numbers on several occasions, and the three of them said, no, we're happy yeah. with this. So, yeah. yeah, they ponied up the 25K. They decided to split the money the way that they did. To everyone's credit, plenty of transparency there, Lara. Yeah, and aside from Suvarna winning it, uh, a lot of talk about Greenwood because he did put a dent in his Player of the Year running. Yeah, in with uh, that the finish. lead that, yeah. that Stevie had, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sitting atop that uh, Ivan Leal Player of the Year leaderboard is Chidwick with a number of people who can threaten him. This, of course... Going to be the last stop, Henry, where players can pick up points. Greenwood picking up 130 of those coveted points. And, of course, it's not just points we're talking about, no. but $200,000. It's going to go to that eventual champion. Currently, Greenwood, 2,223 points. Stevie, 2,885 points. So some runway there, but obviously Chidwick's going to have to perform if he hopes to continue to stay atop that leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, look, 16 events. Chidwick coming in with a pretty sizable lead, but even a fifth place run there from Greenwood has narrowed the gap. Now Chidwick may be looking over his shoulder for a little bit because, you know, you look at Greenwood, you look at Seth Davies, Jason Kuhn. If any of them start making runs in the, you know, first four, five, six events, all of a sudden we don't have our runaway leaderboard uh, in Chidwick. And yeah, I mean, it's the 200k, but also not necessarily the bragging rights, but winning the player of the year leaderboard at a triton series where these guys have been coming to every festival competing in not only the no limit hold'em events but the short deck events as well it really just broadcasts to the world that hey look i've tangled with the best throughout several events around the globe and I've held my own. So there's a lot more than 200K at stake here. Yeah, in that sense, I would push back on the idea that it's not bragging rights. I think it absolutely is bragging there rights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing that, you know, maybe the average person thinks to themselves, well, it's all about the money. But these guys, they've gotten themselves to a place where, uh, you know, the money's there. You know, most of the guys ponying up several different events at a yep. Triton, they're not on case funds, right? <laughs> but they're certainly at the top of their games and they're looking to kind of make that that statement leave their mark on the game if you will uh and i think a lot of players at the top of their game the top of their sport kind of feel the same way yeah i couldn't agree more i mean it, yeah let's call it what it is mm -hmm. bragging rights yeah. for the eventual champion yeah and another thing to note about the final table, Greenwood obviously a familiar face at these final tables, but otherwise a lot of unfamiliar faces. Uh, I think it was five players. It was their first Triton ever, and they were all at the final table. Uh, where was everyone else? Well, where, 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 where were everyone else? I mean, shots fired by Lauren here on day one at the desk uh, to the regs. Uh, I mean, listen, some of them were at the ATM for a rebuy. Others <laughs> ponied right up into uh, event number two. Of course, look, they made their showings. It's tough. I think we touched on it in the booth on a number of occasions. There is a slight advantage, not in terms of experience or skill level, but the unknown entities that come in here, there's no tape, there's no film, there's no scouting that the pros can do on these guys. But conversely, they've had an opportunity to watch these guys play specifically in Triton events against one another. And in that sense, if they've taken advantage of it, they do have a bit of a leg up. And, you know, it's, it's a bit of an investment. You know, you play a few pots, maybe some big ones, some awkward spots against these guys. And then you go, OK, now I know what I'm working with. But it can lead to uh, an early bust out if you're not careful. 
Yeah, I mean, think coming in as a new player, like you said, maybe the OGs haven't got as much experience or maybe uh, they've only played with them online. You don't really know what to expect. And I think big deviations in strategy can be made against some of these unknowns. Maybe some of the new players not getting credit for what they're capable of. And yeah, you, you know, more often than not, I know I've found myself playing against a new player, whether it be in a cash game or a tournament, and maybe just not giving them the credit that they deserve and ultimately losing big pots to them. So yeah, it's really nice to see such a strong showing from the newcomers and, you know, 15 more events. Hopefully we'll get some of them, uh, yeah, taking down some trophies. Important to mention though, newcomers to Triton doesn't mean newcomers to high oh, rollers. They could definitely I, have I was about to say, yet. yes, I was, uh, not uh, unfamiliar names uh, in the high roller scene, yeah. but just their first Triton event. That's right. And with that aside, moving on to what's happening today, the 20K, uh, 138 entries, total 28 coming back today. Uh, I think it's 20 will be paid, Ali. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. $35,800 is going to be the min cash. That's for 28th place. Then we work our way all the way up to a payout of 663000 So obviously tidy pickups there for a 20k without question for those who are lucky enough to make the money but we're still eight players away from that point point. Mm -hmm. and what about the payouts uh well 35 8 for mm -hmm. the min of course the 663 up top as i mentioned mm -hmm. taking a look over here it's going to be a flat payout i believe for the first three spots there it is 20th 19th 18th and then onward and upward we go the jumps don't get really huge until you start to work your way into that final table and maybe the latter half of that FT. Yeah, I mean, look, we've got some big names still in the field. Mm -hmm. We just mentioned Stephen Chidwick at the top of the, the leaderboard in terms of the Ivan Liao, player of the leaderboard, player of the year leaderboard, rather. But he's still in the hunt here in event number two. Jason Kuhn, Paul Pua, O'Dwyer, Dwan. I mean, talk yeah. about a star-studded field coming back with 28 and 8 off the money as well. Yeah, a couple of feature tables, of course, as usual, that we're going to have to start the day. Laura, just a few minutes away from it, aren't we? Yeah, maybe you can uh, take us through table one. Table one? How about mm -hmm. I take us through table, table two, two, even. Two. There Let's we go. do that. <laughs> I think I've got it up here on my screen as we look at the Triton Poker Plus app. And we find yet again Tobias Schweck making a deep run there and his countrymen former World Series of Poker main event champion Hossein Ensan alongside those two level in chips. Uh, not entirely deep stacks until, of course, you feast your eyes, Henry, on Jason Kuhn there in the one hole. 38 big blinds relative to the rest of the field. That's going to be a big figure. Uh, Sasaki being the only other with 30-plus. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at Smith, Mateos, all in that kind of shovel fold territory. And given that we're still eight off the money, some of the ICM implications coming into effect... Uh, yeah, expect to just see a lot of open jamming and a lot of cagey play from some of the shorter stacks. Henry, maybe you could take us through table three. A hundred percent. And what a table it is. It is our Ivan Liao player of the year leader, Stephen Chidwick, as we take a quick jump into the Triton Poker Plus app. Stephen Chidwick, Bradley, Marta Roshan. Halle, a name that I don't recognize. I believe I've seen so maybe another Triton newcomer, of course, boss man Paul Poir. Our Madrid main event champion, Hecklin, and Tahakani with 33 big blinds. This table, Ali, slightly deeper than the one we just looked at, a uh, bar boss, Paul Pua, who is going to look to get busy sooner rather than later. But everyone else playing a real, you know, 33, 39, 48 big blinds. A lot of post-flop maneuverability yeah. there. Yeah, I would agree. That's probably what we can look to expect and maybe kind of awaiting what trajectory Paul is going to have to start things off on the day. You know, those short stacks, when they linger, oftentimes players are less incentivized to get involved in pots against the other bigger stacks as we are working our way closer to the bubble. Not on the stone bubble, still eight places left between now and then. But I'm curious, you think we're going to get burst it quick like we did last time within a level, or uh, is this going to be a, a more cagey affair? Uh, I mean, looking at the app, average stack is 25 big blinds, so I, I think we're going to be here for a while. I know there are, you know, quite a few short stacks going through the app. There are, what, four sub-10 big blind stacks, but still, that only takes us to 24, and uh, yeah, with the average stack being 25 bigs, I, I think we can expect a lot of single raise pots, a lot of big blind defends, and yeah, let's... Uh, Take it to the streets and see some flops. Let us. And with that, I do see Luca Vivaldi getting the dealers ready behind us. So I'm going to head off and uh, leave you to calling the action. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, we're just a little bit away from it. Good job, mm -hmm. by the way, Lara. Thank you. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> did you have it, a little man. date with uh, 
like uh, Mr. Almond, uh, producer James, this morning? Our <laughs> Do they know about this? I don't know that they know about this. In the Vietnam, spawn. these two grabbed ice cream every <laughs> single day, but the ice cream vendor didn't know their name. They ordered the same flavor every day, so they were referred I'm to as Mr. I'm going to stop you doing Almond. this to me right now. <laughs> Let's get back to the poker. All right, fine. <laughs> we're going. Here we go. It is time for day two action as we send it into the arena. 20 and 40,000 are the blinds brought to you by Poker Stake. There are our two feature tables. Jason Kuhn up toward the top of the leaderboard. Fourth overall right now is the mayor of the blue table and Arthur Martirosi and the overall chip leader, mayor of the red table. 1.53 and 1.9 respectively. Short stacks, Dan Smith, and as discussed, Paul Foy. 9 and 13 bigs respectively. 100K in orbit will be the cost of poker. And we will play down to a champion tonight. And if there's time remaining, maybe we'll get a little mystery bounty coverage, Henry. There we go. Event One of my three. favorite events of the series, especially the way that we broadcast it last time. You know, you were doing the old pulling the rabbit out of the hat kind of magic trick vibe. <laughs> it was uh, really good fun. And yeah, that 30k mystery bounty. Actual 30. It's amazing. Bigger buy in this time round. But for yeah. now, I'll focus on this 20k. 7 max with some recognizable faces, the usual suspects at a Triton Super High Roller Series. Among them, of course, the most decorated of all Triton players with five titles under his belt, the American Jason Kuhn, who goes to work up front with Queen Jack off suit, running into Alexei Tsatsarki's Ace Jack. Now, these two did battle a bit yesterday towards the later part of the evening. We do have fresh tables and a fresh seat draw. How about this? Under the gun open, plus one flat. Dan Smith in the small with Ace King and one seat over Adrian Mateos with a couple of jacks. And the brewery is open for business as Smith jams and Mateos with 3.05. Be tough to imagine him not looking to get it in. Two of the shortest stacks in the tournament. It's going to be interesting. Jason, I assume, will be getting out of the way. We may have a three-way all in here, though. Alexei, after putting in 100,000, getting a pretty insane price on a call, 265K with 930 in the middle. He's got the worst sort of kit for this spot, too, is the Jacks. Yeah. For Mateos and the Ace King for Smith, have them just smothered. Wouldn't fault him for putting chips in the middle, though. Five. Adrian is the shortest out of the three. He's going to use a time extension here in his first ever Triton event, is Tsetsarki. <laughs> he knows it. He knows it's not good news, but he does yeah. make the call. <laughs> if he thought he hated it before he saw his opponent's cards, how much does he hate it now? This is a tough one to win. Just 3% of the equity. Three ways. But five cards to come. Stranger things have happened. Hearts working for him. Spades not. Good luck. Gentlemen, you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Real small side pot, by the way, between Sasaki and Dan Smith. Mateos plays for the main. 854, couple of hearts. Jax, still looking good. Same story on the turn. The six would be a chop. Three ways. Mateos definitely doesn't want to see that card. Comes the river, and it's the 10. So Mateos will scoop the main. Dan Smith will haul in a modest side of 40K. And a brilliant development for the Spaniard to start day two action here. In the 20K, seven max. I know for a lot of these guys, the shorter handed, the more they enjoy it. Seven max action. 
Good morning, Can't sir. hide as much as you can in fouring. <laughs> Got to be out there battling, fighting for every pot. Oh, lucky, lucky owl. Like a chip leader. <laughs> well, the graphics department obviously needling. One BB. That's quite the needle. You expect anything less from Pauls and Victor? I don't. <laughs> so onwards we march. Bit of a wound to Satsarki's stack. Not negligible as he's <coughs> sub one million now. Tens for the other Spaniard at the table, Sergio Aido. Came back into today, 23rd in chips. Some work to do. Pocket 10's a good start. See the chat loving that triple up for Adrian Mateos. Welcome to the stream. Well, how about this for the WSOP main event champ, Saint Ensign. Kings. And the royal treatment. All 800 shipped into the middle. Dan Smith, ace nine suited, decides let's take a spin. Yeah, happy to. His final blind with some dead money in the middle as well. So action back on Ido with a couple of tens. Credit for no snap call, by the way. 720,000 more. He's covered, obviously, so they play for his remaining 525. But go. That's cool. in it goes, and the bad news is going to be delivered to Sergio here. So now a three-way all-in. I mean, at this rate, Ali, this will be uh, <laughs> over within a couple of orbits. Have we burst the bubble yet? Smith looking for some clubs or an ace. Ido in rough shape. For some diamonds or a 10, as the dealer sorts out the main pot and the side pot. Shout out to Hussein Ensign, by the way, and his family and friends said that they'll be tuning in for this one. Pulled me aside last night around 2 a.m. Said, Henry, it only took me four bullets in event number one and event number two, but I've got a stack back for day two. Just thrilled to be here playing high stakes. Five cards to come in great shape to eliminate two players in well. The ace, king, nine, middle set for Inc Anson. Incredible that Smith would make aces up and be no good, given that the third card on the flop showers two pair. Two tens in a bad way, but wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Jack on the Hold turn on. and some smirks spread around the table as Ido now draws live. Four outs, two a queen. For the side, and instead hey it's a seven. So two pelts claimed here by Hossein Ensan. Dan Smith's remains and Sergio Idos both sliding into the middle and over to the German. It's now up to third in chips overall. Ali, 26 players remain. Well, that'll. Certainly up the price on the under, whatever the line was for bursting the bubble. As a double elimination here. Likely see some rebalancing and a player delivered to this table. Not long from now, but a lovely start to the day for Ensign. Well, the good news for Ido and Smith is the spa's open, the sun's shining. Got a couple of hours to unwind before firing the 30k mystery bounty. Some GG's in the chat for Ido and Cowboy Dan.
Pocket fours now, the follow-up act to the two kings for Ensan. Shoots it up to 85,000. And a suited connector for Mateos. From the button, <coughs> lovely bit of kit to go to work with. Double gapped suited 10 for Kuhn in the small. Not afraid to play pots out of position, nor the sub-premium parts of the deck is Jason, but this spot deemed not the one. Yeah. Looking for his sixth title. Did say yesterday on stream he's leaving Cyprus, a seven-time Triton champion. Power of intention. Well, 26 left, top five stack. If anyone can do it, it's him. Two clubs, two deuces, and an ace here. Not the worst texture for Ensan, who can credibly rep the ace, and it's very difficult for holdings that don't contain an ace or a deuce to proceed, barring bigger pocket pairs having flatted. Little 100K barrel gets the job done. Yeah. As he continues to amass that, chips that, here in the early going. For sure. See the black dot here on the line? On the white? Oh, yeah. See right there? Yeah, and I'll see that all across the table. See, Biao Ding is all in on the outer table. We'll keep you all updated about that. Once again, can sweat all the action over on the Triton Poker Plus app. And we are, in fact, down to 25 players now as Ding has been eliminated. King-10 into Jews, King-Queen. Triton Poker Plus. I currently have all four tables open. Ali sweating that every hand. Was that Samuel Jew, the uh, other Triton newcomer from Germany that he uh, was indeed. got showered by? I do apologize. Ding down to 235K, down to six bigs. Oh, okay. Jew doubled up. Let's dry him off, get him back in there. Not showered. Jack 5 4, two diamonds as Hecklin's ace queen open. Picked up queen 10 for the ride. Martirosian, the overall chip leader, obviously a dangerous seat to tussle with, regardless of how many chips he's got in front of him for that matter, just given his aptitude. Arthur just seems to run deep in everything, man. Yeah. Whether I'm like scrolling an online lobby. The GG Super Millions online or a live event. It's a Triton Super High Roller Series or some obscure event in the middle of nowhere. He's there. He's in the mix. Year round. Always rocking the Tiger Cap as well. He puts in a tremendous number of hours on and offline, doesn't he? Yeah. Definitely when I think of people that are just in the mix nonstop, he, he's, he's out there. Leads out for 160,000 here. As he suspects that Hecklin does not have a jack or better as played. And as the defender from the big blind, he can more credibly rep the stuff we're staring at. But of course, the wheel gutter helping Hecklin to make this call here. Yeah, when you check back on the flop as well, going to need to defend some barrels with ace queen high. Hecklin obviously going to be balanced enough to check behind with some top pairs, it's some no pocket longer pairs. Ace queen high, is it? As the ace of spades rolls off on the turn, four liner on board, but top pair, queen kicker for Hecklin. Let's see whether or not he's going to be put to the test. Yeah, nice clean river for Henrik. Feels like a bad spot for Martirosian to be betting, doesn't it? It does, but also in terms of what the big blind range looks like, he's certainly going to have more deuce X, more six seven. Artel doesn't strike me as the guy to bet turn to give up river, but this may be a spot that ace of spades. A lot of Henrik's floats are going to be hands like ace king, ace queen, ace ten. Oh boy, Artel putting Henrik all in. Wow. Our Madrid main event champion in the blender after rivering top pair. How nasty is this? 
And Hecklin well aware that Artur would come with this sort of figure instead of trying to milk if he had those deuce-ex combos just on account of the fact that there is a good deal of ace in Hecklin's range, which could find the call against a wheel. But of course, on this occasion, it's <coughs> against queen high as the time banks are pushed forward. Yeah, I mean, given at this SPR, it wouldn't make sense for there to be any other bet size from Artur, less than one SPR. So with that in mind, just trying to figure out the bluff combos, plenty of them, by the way. I mean, you know, Arto going to be defending as wide as like Queen Six, Ten Six, that barrel turn, Jam River, blocking hands like the Nut Straight. Yeah, it looks like an overbet, so I stand corrected. It's not obviously as they're playing the 455 effective of Hecklin. And on a river like this, where you know Henrik has more Ace King, more Ace Queen, more Ace Ten. To see the follow-through from Artur really polarizing his range here. I think if he's digging as deep as Queen-10, then uh, this becomes pretty easy call as Hecklin agrees and flicks it in with the ace-queen. It's shown the queen high, and now our Madrid main event champion moves up to third on the leaderboard, 1.5 million. You know, you know time he's piece, by the way. main event champion. I was just zeroing in on the same thing you were, Henry. I love that he still wears it. Of course, way, man. Takes slip pride over in it. To our other Sleeps with it, showers with it. Don't ask me how I know. I won't. <laughs> Ian Bradley. <laughs> Ace King. I call that more of a five star hand than a three star hand. He's 10 for Tobias in the small blind. We know these button opens can be a bit wide, and as such, Schwecht jams. 6.55. He is covered by Bradley, who surely will be making the call and dominating. Well, our GG poker qualifier, who made his first final table in his maiden event, looking to come up short here. Just five off the money, unless he can improve with five cards to come. Needs some help from the deck. No dice on that board, Ali, I mean. Yeah, that's the opposite of help. It's as rough as it gets, drawing to running cards now. And dead on the turn. The river, <gasps> just a formality. Ian Bradley up to 1.9 million. And Ali, yeah. as you alluded to, Action thick and fast here. Four eliminations within the first orbit or so. Off Wiedersen, by the way. Tobias. I think I butchered that, but, you know. Sorry, which part did you butcher? The German. Off Wiedersen. Isn't that goodbye in German, Kilbane? Back me up. Why am I turning to you? Well, exactly. Culture? Why are you turning to me for German, I mean? Have I ever spoken to you in German? Did I ever uh, give off the impression that Aryan Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yes. Ich wohne in einem Haus in Phuket. Yeah. Nine. All right. So Poker there we commentator. Go. So you, you know, were come right. <laughs> Twenty-four <laughs> remain. Four off the money here in event number two, and Ian Bradley now finds himself as the chip leader. I gotta bring you with me to the Mercedes dealership. See what, so that they charge you more money work a deal. for the extras? No, you know, uh, Damla, Benson. Sure. Bitter discounting. <laughs> I think you'll be fine, pal. <laughs> A6 for Jason. <laughs> 85,000. What a stacked field we have, by the way, chat. For those of you that aren't watching over on the Triton Poker Plus, at Patrick uh, Antonis in third, five, Ike Haxton, one Jason one Kuhn, Henrik Hecklin, Hussein Ensign, not to miss any of the OGs. Put out Punsri as well, Stephen Chidwick. I mean, come on. What a day of poker we have ahead of us. What are two weeks of poker we have ahead of us? You just pick a day, the Henry, and you can likely make that assessment about what we've got in store in these streams, which really are just robust with talent. Our cup truly runneth over on the Triton Super High Roller Series in that regard. 
My cup runneth over with green detox juice. It does. On the daily. It's have, you, have you dabbled in those streets I mean, yet? your skin is glowing, mate. You look fresh. Well, that's just the shower. But I definitely need to cleanse from the inside, just based on dietary shortcomings for decades now. That's what these trips are good for. They're like my your detox. semi-annual cleanse. Ace nine suited as Bradley. Tournament chip leader. Yeah, you're right. Not sure when that took place, but here he is in his first ever Triton Super High Roller Series. Failed to cash in the GG Super Millions. Ah, cheeky little three bet here with the small pair. Hussein just wanted to take the betting lead pre-flop. Allows him to you know, navigate post a little bit easier as the pre-flop aggressor in terms of ball textures. Look at that, power poker. Getting the ace nine to fold. Taking down the money in the middle uncontested. Now Ensign moves up to first in chips. Chat loving the German, by the way. Greetings to all of our German viewers, of course. Do you mean loving the German as in Hossein and San, or loving the German There's as that. in that failed De attempt definitely by yours truly to say goodbye in German? Loving uh, loving the German in Hossein and San, but also... Detesting the German that I delivered earlier. I, so you do speak German, then? Uh, I don't, know. Oh, so you know, like, one sentence. Exactly. Yeah. But I know it fluently enough to convince... You that maybe I, you know. Yeah, the German tourist that you have a house in Phuket. I get it. 8-9 suited here for Paul Poy in the big blind. Flops himself a two-way straight draw. Backdoor clubs. Marta Rosian was picking on the blinds. Got himself bottom pair and backdoor diamonds in front of Paul. 55K into 220 after the Poy check. Takes a moment before deciding to flick in 55 of his own as another 110 slides into the middle. And that is a very troublesome card for Paul as the queen will leave him play in the board at this point. Still drawing to the seven for the scoop. Checks it over to Artur, who obviously doesn't necessarily love the texture himself. Oh, he's going to... Dip his feather in some ink and tell a tale. 110,000. Getting the job done there. So credit to Artur Martirosian for finding the second barrel. I really wish that I could somehow <coughs> adequately describe to those of you streaming us live the resourcefulness of Henry Kilbane trying to adjust his sling with one good arm. <laughs> one good collarbone. Not a full rack of ribs intact either. No. No, it's been a it's been an annoying day because I, I don't like letting it interfere with the work. We'll be back. Full recovery. Three months. Stephen Chidwick. Got to fold suit connectors. 24 left. <laughs> Biao Ding eliminated in 26th. Shortest stacks in the field. Andrei Lubovetsky, <coughs> Tai Thin Chu, Samuel Ju, and Boss Man Paul all playing sub 11 bigs. And the funnest part, as well, is when we get down to the final 21, we will have our final three tables and will be on the stone bubble. You can sweat the action from all of the tables over on the Triton Poker Plus app. Jack-10 
10 off suit here for Chidwick. Up front. Grab breakfast this morning with he, Orpin, Kisichikolu, Chris Brewer. Just a chance to sit back and listen to them kind of same old, same discuss old. things. Yeah. Hand histories. <coughs> Seven four off suit for Kanan Taherkani. First ever Triton Series, first ever Triton event. Limps to small. Shares a four with Hecklin, who checks back to six four. And he's flop bottom pair on the King Queen high board. Little 50K bet. Gets it done. Look at that timepiece, Henry. The blue strap. When are you going to buy a watch, Charlie? No, I we've mean, talked about this. I know, but come on. If I break that seal, insolvency is imminent. It's just game over, is it? Game over. I'm going to build some collection, end up illiquid, <laughs> and just... You know, RIP me. I'm in. Axel. Maybe get a Ale. credit line extended to you. Yeah, that's just what a guy who can't say no with actual funds needs is extended credit for the bad habit. Real solution you've come up with there, Kilbain. Three suited. Gives it some thought and then comes out swinging with a three bet to 215,000. Certainly not what we might have expected, but we touched on it during the pregame. The unpredictability of these unknown commodities to our regulars. And on this occasion, it is the queen three suited. Putting in the third scoop, leaving Chidwick to mull over ace five in the big. I like the three bet suited variety. Going to play the rest of the hand in position. Has some nice blocker effects. And also, you know, as you mentioned, the newcomer, lesser known potentially to some of these players. Going to get a lot more respect given that we are four off the money. And that was yeah. newcomer on newcomer violence too as Axel Ale is at his first ever Triton Super High Roller Series. Didn't cash in the GG Super Millions. A timepiece like that and biceps like that, you, you know, the I'm getting three bet mm -hmm. with a guy that's got when arms bigger than my torso. You got arms okay. like that. Okay. Honestly, I just feel like you can take a grandfather <laughs> clock, put a strap around it, and then wear that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like <laughs> vertically around your bicep. <laughs> Have like a full working cuckoo clock. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's just a thought. You know what I mean? Welcome back to the desk here, Ali and Henry. Uh, table five going to be breaking, rebalancing yes. efforts right now. So just a few minutes back here with us, and then we'll send you right back to the action. Not a, a long break. Artur Martirosian back at the top of the leaderboard, it would appear, followed by countryman Vyacheslav Buldigin as the Russians run 1-2. Patrick Antonius currently in third, and Son in fourth, and Ian Bradley, who was in the chip lead moments ago, in fifth. Event number two. The 20K7 Max underway here from inside the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel Resort and Casino. And uh, from what we've seen thus far in the early going, uh, Henry, it is again that storyline which emerged in event number one across two days of play with newcomers throwing us curveballs, being unpredictable, and uh, presumably riding that to great success. I guess we're going to see a handful of them at this final table as well. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, looking at the field, there's what... I want to say like half the field newcomers to a Triton series. And also it really throws some of the OGs off of their game because when you have people that maybe aren't familiar with ICM or final table approaches, uh, understandably, you know, we saw it yesterday at that final table, the likes of Sam Green were just making some big adjustments, playing a bit tighter and just waiting for some of these wild cards to potentially slip up. So it does kind of 
inversely make players play a bit tighter. Yeah, tight and chew. Andre, uh, well, Lubavetsky actually played in Madrid, so he's not a first-timer. But Titan Chu, currently the shortest of stacks. He's a newcomer. Samuel Ju, uh, Nikolai Losev, let's see, Tsitsarki, Barsegian, Ale, as we alluded to, Tahir Khani. Not quite half the field, but certainly enough of the field that just by law of averages, we would think a few of them would work their way into this final table with... 20 places that will be paid. 24 currently left in the field. We started things off with 28 players, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think the stream would agree. I think everybody out there enjoys when we have the dynamics associated with well-established pros. Not being able to simply look up and go, I've played a, a thousand hands against yeah. this guy. I know exactly how I want to navigate these waters. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few guys that I'd really love to see make the final table. I mean, Patrick Antonius, for me, is one of the most entertaining players to watch, especially at high stakes, because when it comes to bluff catching, I, I don't think there are many people better than Antonius. And for whatever reason it is, some of these new players love to just try and get a bluff through to then go back home to their friends and family and say, look, I, I bluffed Antonius live on stream. And yeah, it, it leads to some crazy things. It's actually kind of inconvenient. Uh, it cuts both ways, I should say. When you are a known pro and you are playing against somebody who maybe has taken their shot or, and I'm not alleging that that's what's going on with our newcomers. Many of them, like we've talked about, are well established in the high roller circuits, maybe doing their bidding online or beyond the borders of the Triton Super High Roller Series, visiting us for the first time. But you don't know necessarily which of those two things it is when mm. you're encountering these people. And sometimes, as you mentioned, it could be just going for the glory and doing something reckless and yeah. completely inexplicable. And now you're left to try to determine what side of the fence you're facing. Well, that's definitely the case with a lot of these OGs, you know, because they do have that image. And like you said, a lot of these newcomers, newcomers to Triton, not necessarily newcomers to high rollers, whether it be live and online, and they definitely know what they're doing. They wouldn't be poning up the 20K otherwise. Yeah, they're going to be doing a little bit more of it in just moments as we're going to send it back to the arena for the continuation of play. One less table out there as the 20K7 Max gets back underway. Brought to you by GG Poker. A look at the chip counts where Mayor Ensan has a small lead over Vice Mayor Bradley. Shortest stack here is actually 20 bigs deep for Tsitsarki, so playability to all the stacks. There's a look at Punat Punsri, who last time we were in Cyprus, I believe, took down the main, was it? Took down the main for 2.6 million. I was speaking with Jason Kuhn and Uncle Paul yesterday. And he got brought over to the feature table, fresh off his 1,400 runner field main event victory in Taipei, taking down the APT main. Did you have and the call there? I did. Nice. Did have the call and then had the pleasure of partying, you know, maybe a little bit too much into the early hours of the morning. But that's but not how you broke your arm, though. No. That's not, and I haven't broken my arm. My arm is fine. It's my uh, shoulder and clavicle. Is your arm fine though, Henry? It is. Look. Can you use it like I can? <laughs> Depends. Depends who we're asking. That's what we're talking about. He's 80 here for Mateo, says the Spaniard from the hijack, getting busy picking up Punsri, we were just talking about. King 10 on either side of this queen of clubs as Mateo turns into a Nut flush draw, still with the best hand. Did yep. you enjoy Taipei, by the way? Loved it. Isn't that a great yeah. city? Yeah, loved awesome. it. Awesome. Was very surprised that, I don't know what I was expecting going in, but yeah, really nice place. Did you go to uh, some hot pot? Did you do uh, some I of didn't, that? No. no. No, I was oh, in the nice. booth quite a bit. Okay. I know when you weren't in the booth, <laughs> after Punsri's win. It's true. Still seeking details on that party. You know me, I love a good. I'm sure Punsri. More than happy to share. Yeah, but he's out there. He can't tell the story. You're in here, and you can. Inquiring minds want to know. Well, he's about to fold, so, yeah, we went to... Uh, nightclub? Nightclub called AI. Okay. Downtown Taipei. Is it run cheap. by robots? <laughs> no. Shame. But you step outside and just look up to the night sky, and you got the Taipei 101. So, yeah, pretty insane part of the town, and the architecture there is... Yeah, for anyone that's into 
that kind of thing. No is, one's yeah. thinking about the architecture of well, Taipei as you're telling the after party story. More so, how much Cristal slash Dom Perignon did you guys put it a was, dent in on the island? It, w- it was uh, Dom Perignon and vodka, and let's just say the moment he arrived, uh, people were pouring champagne into his mouth. Nice. Then we didn't see him for about 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's back. He's, he's back. He's recovered. Flew home to Bangkok for a night or two to celebrate with friends and family. Missed event number one, but here he is in event number two. Um, really has been a pleasant addition to the tour since his arrival has Punat and the remainder of the Thai delegation as well, which includes KT. KT is the tent himself. Pachara won with it. Yeah. It's with yeah. us in Vietnam. P dub. Really growing the game and support from the Thai community as well as uh, whenever any of these guys are at a feature table. It's uh, incredible. Yeah, the game's growing very much in Thailand, although I'm unclear. Are there proper casinos in Thailand or card rooms? How is it that the game has been proliferating as much as it has in that part of the world? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the answer is no. And, you know, these guys are doing everything that they can um, when they're not at the tables to you know, take it to the right people and try and showcase that, hey, look, this is a skill sport, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but with the success that Punat's had, that Pachara had in, uh, in Taipei, um, hopefully some movement there. And, yeah, I mean, these guys are, are doing their best to continue to showcase that yeah. it's, yeah, a couldn't skill game at the highest level. You couldn't ask for better lobbyists. No, not at all. As the blinds go up to 25 and 50,000. Yeah, with that, the tournament average dropping quite significantly. Chip leader with just 43 big blinds. Could be a bit of a pacey day. As a lot of people now find themselves in that rejam territory between 10 and 20 blinds. Five seconds. And 75. Raised to 175,000. And how about this? Adrian just opting to 3.5x from the big with the raggy jack 7. Nansen with a decision does cover Mateos. Would be playing the rest of the hand out of position. And out of position against the likes of Adrian Mateos. Is not where you want to be. Not that that was what awaited him. With the Jack, it was a Jack 8. Dust. Jack seven, queen eight as we head to the outer two tables. 24 players remain. What do we spy there? Ike Haxton, Sean Winter, there's Buldigan with heaps. Yeah, Haxton with heaps as well. He's moved up to third in chips overall. Now playing two million. I do apologize, second in chips just behind Arthur now. He's just British, he's very polite. <laughs> what a stacked field we have. Think of accolades and trophies and the millions of dollars won oh. in oh, tournament poker by these final uh, 24 players. I mean, we're talking healthy nine figures. Healthy nine figures. I feel like anytime we're talking about nine figures, it's always healthy. There's no unhealthy. Well, you know, 100 million compared to four. I like the sound of that. <laughs> You're not well, there don't yet, give Ali? Me 100 million. You slacking? Kill Bane. What, do you got 100 million sitting around? <laughs> Don't take that tone. King 10-7 with a couple of spades here as Mateos flops second pair. Kuhn with the 6-5 coming up empty. Blind versus blind. What would you do with it? With 100 million. Yeah. I'd 
build a funeral pyre and live stream it with the first five million just to send the Earth into a reverse orbit. <laughs> just like the Joker in Dark Knight, remember? Okay. <laughs> Chaos, Henry, you know? I can afford it. Don't look at me that way. So it's not about the money, it's about the message. That's right. Okay. Jesus. I mean, I'd put out the fire pretty quick and then try to salvage at least 4.2 of it. Well, talking of fire, know. Jason Kuhn saying fire to 100k with a stab in position. Understandable, this one may be a one and done. I can also turn some equity, that not being a card that Jason's going to entertain in terms of double barreling, most likely. A few of the obvious draws getting there. Jason with just six high. Oh boy. You know, it's funny. The minute I heard you say Jason setting fire, and I know we were just doing a little wordplay there when you called his action as he barreled, I thought to myself, this is Jason Kuhn we're talking about in position. I don't care that he has 6 5, which, by the way, could have turned equity backdoor. This dude fights for every chip. 225K. As does Mateos. Fair. Bet and called. And you see Mateos, the brow furrowed, looking over. Now four to a straight on board. Any 9x combo is there. Spades are there as well, of course. Check. Zero showdown value, obviously, for Kuhn. But 5-6 offsuit blocks... None of the stuff that would beat him. Yeah, I'm blocking pairs. I'm blocking the gut shots. Okay. He's going to wave the white flag, though, and get shown the 10 3. That is a sizable pickup for number one on Spain's all time money list, Adrian Mateos. Kick things off today with a triple up. Held with his pocket jacks against the ace king of Dan Smith and an ace jack. Now up to second in chips. So quite the spin so far today. Great shot there of our crack staff that Travel with us around the world to all of our stops, well-trained in the dealing standards oh. here on the Triton Tour. The Triton free roll on GG Poker kicking off in eight minutes' time. If you haven't already registered into that one, the password is Triton Rocks. No late reg, join now. And as always, let us know if you're grinding along on GG Poker whilst watching the stream. Shout out to our title sponsor. Currently have a 200 million guaranteed f tournament festival going on all the way through till June 6th. Let us know of any deep runs. You've been playing much, Charlie? Back home, I know you've been busy, you've been on the road quite a bit. I haven't really been home that much, but yeah, when I was, I. Probably put in five sessions. Nice. Uh, between. How oh, the boys? Last gig. They're beating up on me is how they're doing. And <laughs> looks like Sasaki is looking to beat up on Ensan here. He's picked a decent time to do it, jamming 755,000 against this Queen 8 suited cutoff open, which cannot <coughs> proceed. Nice. What do we know about this? Sasaki character. Taking a peek at Hendon Mob, see whether or not we can find any results. Well, he's named after a king. What do you know your Russian monarchy <laughs> history? No, but it's uh, the surname, Desar. Same as in Caesar. 
fucking butt in Russian. Come on, Ali, you went to school. You Can't find a, anything. Did you do a stint with the FSB that I don't know about? How do you know? You know a little bit of German. Now all of a sudden you got weird Russian insights. <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't matter. Come on, man. You you know these things. I feel like I'm in the Bourne Ultimatum over here. Who are you? I mean, I spent did a little internship at NATO. Is that a true story? Okay, now it's all coming together. <laughs> Don't give me that humble stuff, NATO boy. All right? <laughs> NATO boy. <laughs> <laughs> Punsri King 8 suited under the gun goes to work. Queen Jack on the button for Jason Kuhn, respecting the position. Now an ace four suited for the Brit, Bradley. Has he paid a visit to the Shambhala store? Maybe. It looked that way, didn't it? Understandable defense, but no improvement on the 7-7 jack board. Under the gun versus big blind, annoying spot for Bradley, given that he does have the backdoor spades and ace high, but against this under the gun open. Continuing small and wider, maybe a sizing that Bradley is going to stick around for. 65k. Those backdoor spades. Again, this open, pun out opening off of what, 17 bigs. Start of the hand. Paired flops oftentimes do tempt these ace highs into continuing. Backdoor spades available as well. Oh, not just to continue, but a check raise, Henry, as the seven's going to get repped. Yeah, Bradley's certainly going to have more 7x from the big blind. And also, just it's nice that you can pick up equity on the turn with a hand like this. You're going to turn a flush draw 25% of the time. What you're doubtful to pick up is a call from Punsri, but he also has backdoor equity. Henry, and might he have ideas? Having the eight isn't great. You know, blocking some of the check raise bluffs like eight nine, ten eight. But he does have a significant overpair range advantage. And Bradley gonna have a ton of hands like this that are somewhat wrapped around. It has like six five, eight six of diamonds, for example. Some of those hands that are going to turn equity on certain board textures, and well, this is our this is our main event champion, our Cyprus main event champion, Prince with the flop three bet. It's funny. The minute that I said you're unlikely to to pick him up, obviously the call was on my mind. But what we overlooked was this opportunity to three bet, and I think it's somewhat tethered to the notion he doesn't expect Bradley to be check raising the seven on this board all that often. Why would you look to give me an exit? Mm. Yeah, folding out all of the broadways and ace highs. I couldn't agree more, Ali. But look at this. I mean, Bradley involved in a bit of a clicking war. But not one not, to back down. He's only got 450 back. This is a very meaningful 350 of his remaining 800 that he stuck out there. It is indeed. But if he has that, all of that goes out the window, and Bradley knows it. Is he willing to risk? The idea that Punsri has folds after this three bed by jamming. What an incredible spot this would be if suddenly what looked to be a fairly mundane pot turned into something extraordinary. More so than it already has been. Well, I, th I thought Bradley was cutting out chips there, just pulling in his time extension chips. Oh, my oh word. Oh, my. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Ian Bradley with the flop four bet. Did he just show the ace four suited? He did indeed. Oh, that's nasty. There you go, boys. Have some of that. 
Shots fired, by the way. You, you, you pile on a guy there, you promptly put the ace-four in his face. You give me the opportunity, yeah. You're not making friends. I had Queen Jack. Right. I was like, what the fuck do you guys have here <laughs> on my butt? Just saying he gave him the opportunity by clicking it back. Flush draw. Yeah, I had flush draw, yeah. <laughs> and straight draw. I, I had straight draw. Flush draw. <laughs> I had every draw. Yeah, well, no, I couldn't make Broadway. Actually, I that is oh, no, I can, I can make Broadway. insane. I can make Broadway and I can make uh, the little story. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Bradley better. just correctly deducing that he's going to have more seven x <laughs> or Jack seven. Would Punsri really click back with a hand like kings, aces, queens? The four bet flop jam from Ian at it, Bradley. James Dempsey, producer, giving us a nod. He didn't at it, did he? The producer James saying he didn't at it. Well, he knows Bradley. He does. Going, going back a couple of decades, apparently. And perhaps Ian pandering to producer James, knowing he's on one of those feature tables there making that move. My head is still spinning. I don't know about yours. Punt three, king eight suited, open under the gun, jack seven seven after the defend, Bradley. Check raising with a <laughs> puns free three betting click back and then Bradley piling. Not exactly what the crystal ball looked like from this end. Well, Marlon in the chat saying if he jams, he's the goat. Well, he did jam. Ian Bradley second in chips now. Twenty three players left, and also just by showing the table, the ace four. Too much now, two in a row. Let me sending a message to the rest of these guys. You ever play NBA Jam back in the day? Yeah. Oh. Oh. And raise open for Kuhn. He's got Ensan dominated, mm -hmm. and Hussein not interested in the 10 6. <laughs> no rubber on Bradley, by the way, second in chips now. Mm. After. That's on, you're in such good shape, man. Yeah. Very strong. Yeah. Winning yeah. Oh, yeah. You're killing it. Because of um, exercise. Oh, yeah. yeah. You too? I'm all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not so good. <laughs> you need it. I'm going to take the, uh, the over on all right as the. Fitness <laughs> adjective for Jason Kuhn. Yeah. You've got it the third one. You've got, no, you've got so it the third one. The third one you've got it, yeah. Not on fire. Oh. Oh. Currently seven sub ten big blind stacks, including Tom Dwan, <coughs> Paul Poor. Panat Punsri and Nikolai Losev. Steve O'Dwyer has been eliminated on the outer table by Edward Barsegian. Quick game's a good game. Yeah. 30 minute clock, I mean. Five suited into the bin. Jack Trey, same story. Now Jack Ten in the cutoff for Punsri, who is a bit of a wounded bird after that exchange with Bradley and sticks the remains of his stack into the middle. Sub seven bigs. Ooh. Tough spot for Mateos. Small blind asking for a count. Yeah, six and a half bigs. Can see King Jack doing incredibly well against the jamming range overall. Kind of probably going to be jamming as wide as like Jack nine suited, King eight suited. 
So King Jack does have to worry about Coon behind, obviously. I'm out. But does make the call, and Coon gets out of there. So Puntry in rough shape, three off the money. After that, I mean, highlight hand, four bet pot against Ian Bradley just a few moments back. Can he get lucky here to stay alive against Mateos? The 784 flop delivering a gutter as he adds four outs Six on the turn. to the tens he hunts. Five. Six or five, just a extra, bit of extra sweat. <laughs> Oh, Turn nine. is a nine, and now he makes the nuts. Chop available to Mateos if a 10 rolls off. But Punsri, at a minimum, will be pulling back his stack, and he'll be doing so in duplicate as Mateos will double him up. Back up to 15 bigs. Have some Russia on Russia violence on table one. Boldajin against Losev. Also, the all-in player at risk with ace-5, Boldajin with ace-jack of diamonds. Again, you can watch all of the outer table action over on the Triton Poker Plus app. They are going to chop that one up. King, king, four, four, seven board. So, Losev with a lifeline, but still work to do. Just six big blinds. Six suited for Chidwick as we send it over to the other feature, Martirosian. He's two suited. Hi, Jack. Big stack. Feels like it's coming together, and he's just going to jam. Got the boys behind him all covered. Ale into the muck, and ace 10 for Paul Fua on the button. Excuse me, guys. Paul currently sat 20th. Oh. There's seven bigs. He makes the call. ICM out the window. ICM's for poor people. Got himself in a good spot. I have one too. <laughs> and he knows it. That big smile on the heels of being shown the deuce kicker. By Martirosian, this will play for 855,000. Oh Two boy. spade flop, though, and the sweat is real. Ace 10 needs to fade a ton. Oh, and the three of spades on the turn leaves Paul drawing dead. Obviously, he can be happy with the fact that he chose a good spot. Yeah, played for the win there, <laughs> taking the spot rather than kind of blinding down and sneaking into the money as a short stack. Had he just found the hold, would have been up to a very playable 16, 17 bigs. Oh, no, it's seven. Unfortunately, for boss man, it's the end of the road. Yes, he will leave 22 players behind. A new world of poker is coming, and your chance to get in on the action is now. Triton Play is a social poker game that's looking to revolutionize the way the world plays poker, and they're open for pre-registrations right now. When you see that QR code, scan it, and start your journey into our new world. we got really exciting stuff coming up, including a stealth demo, a London giveaway, and so much more. You don't want to miss out, so scan and register today. Down to the final 22 players with the departure of the head honcho. Right. Arthur Ocean way out in front now. 64 big blinds. 3.2 million chip stack. Ace queen for the Frenchman. We haven't been here the whole time, Henry, but I suspect Artur has been 
doing big stack things out here. And maybe that's what's on Halle's mind as he jams. 950. King five doesn't make a meal of it. Promptly into the muck. Yeah, he's going to be doing a lot of open jamming, a lot of raising from late position. Overwhelming tournament chip leader, two off the money. And given that there are, you know, two, five, no, sorry, three, five big blind stacks, these middling stacks, such as Halle with a very comfortable 18, 19 bigs, can only really fight back with the goods. Now, yesterday, I believe at feature and the final tables, Hydorn was rocking that Blade Runner scarf, the, the gauze number that had some Burning Man vibes to it. Ale <coughs> also appears to have reached into the Burning Man part of the catalog with today's Paisley deal. The Paisley deal? Yeah, there's some Paisley on the, on the scarf, wasn't there? Don't tell me you can speak Russian and German and work for NATO, but I say Paisley and suddenly you don't know what I'm talking about. No, I'm saying, I was just reiterating okay. what you were saying. I'm just making sure for a second. You've been oh. undercover with just how cultured you are in this booth. But I got my eye on you. <laughs> I felt like, I felt like you were... I felt like you bluffed me yesterday. I was trying to get you back. You check with me on the eighth queen bluff. I didn't have too much, but the club was horrible for me. I love it, yeah. Hmm? I love it. You bluffed me. I love it, yeah. Oh, yeah, you hit the flush. Yeah, I had a queen. I just had a queen. Yeah. I was calling non club. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I didn't have any clubs. Yeah. As we move over to the other feature table, it looks like we've. Especially when it went check, check, turn on the six. Caught an exchange between Bradley and Punsri, and it appears Ian felt as though Punat may have bluffed him yesterday and was looking for his pound of flesh maybe in that pot. Yeah, looking to get him back on the main stage. You got spades in this one, yeah. If I covered you on stage. No, it was a weird hand, yeah. It's like, is it just, it's like kind of, yeah, super strange one. Ian at it, Bradley. One of the tournament chip leaders. 22 players left. So you guys know I'm trying to win player of the year. So I will not be How much do you pay for it? How much do you pay okay. for it? I have to win this fucking tournament to be in, how, have a how, chance. How many more series for this? Shooter, you could win. If you win, if you won all of the tournaments. Oh, this is last time. Yeah, if, if, like if I win like two and put up a good result, I can do it. Oh, OK. Ah, I mean, you've loads more to do. Yeah, I know, but I'm not. Oh, ah, you want a good start. You want a good start, no, yeah. <laughs> So Jason reckoning that he needs two titles and a deep run to overtake Chidwick. The two titles alone not going to cut it? Maybe he's thinking that because he suspects that Chidwick is going to be adding to right, his Right, of course, yeah. Got like an extra million added to the prize pool for me because I get, uh, if I win player of the year, because I get uh, any of Paul's watches that I want. Any any one of his watches. Is that what he he's he told you? Yeah. I'm going to take, he's got a Patek that I really like, like a really nice one. Yeah, which one? So, uh, I, I don't know the names. I could show you a picture. Is it Nautilus? Nautilus. Or Aquanaut? The uh, Aquanaut? No, it's one of the more classic. Uh, is it one of the? Yeah, with like the uh, moon phases and oh, stuff on yeah, it, but yeah. it's worth like a ton of money. But yeah, those are crazy. Yeah. Point seven or something crazy. That'd be the one I'd take. <laughs> and San the Razor with Jack Five suited as we listen in on the <laughs> chatter here. He nice to be a fly on the wall exactly. from time to time. But it sounds like Jason's got yeah, a bit more exactly. incentive and to win Player of the Year. Of yeah. Too. Oh, nice. But Not just the 200k. Paul has offered him any one of his timepieces. If Jason doesn't pick that white RM, he's asleep at the wheel. No, Jason's going for the Patek, apparently. Stop. I mean, I have to agree with him. Oh, come on, both of you. Patek over RM. Are you kidding me? The white RM is the ultimate chronoflex. <laughs> it 
<laughs> what about a woof band or an Apple Watch? Pick that. How baller would that be if you had the opportunity to pick any one of Boss Man's watches and you reach for like this random Apple watch. pop swatch or something, you know, like in a kitchen drawer somewhere? Oh, boy. Ace Queen for Bradley, an opener, and there is subtext here between he and Punsri. This could As be showers. With the Ace Jack in 730. Gonna think it over. Bradley covering everyone behind. Gonna be expected to open wide, wider than usual, as we are two off the money. Punsri. In this case, for a three outer. Henry, he'd be opening wide for a big helping of Punstry's chips. And there is the jam that we suspected might be forthcoming. Let's get a count, please. Ace into the muck behind the boys. Don't think Bradley's folding, but he's just asking for a count. This is obviously a big spot. Two off the money. I mean, if the jam were big enough, maybe the ace queen doesn't like heading off to the races, but against this depth. Yeah, I mean, he looks pained by it. This is like the best case situation, right? Like ace 10 suited, ace jacko. It's also some future game calculations that come into effect. I'm sure you got a DeLorean. Yeah. Let's go. That is that's counted out the calling chips. Put in another time extension. There's a lot to digest here. I mean, look for chips. This is a fist bump call, but Bradley's currently second in chips and has enjoyed taking it to the streets, playing post-flop. <laughs> but listen, precisely the fact that he is second in chips means that even on the occasions in which he's wrong about this call, he's still got plenty with which to operate moving forward. And on this occasion, he's far from wrong. He's very right, as Punsri's just 24% to 71% for a 1.6 million chip pot. For the chip lead, Bradley can hold it. Be up to 60 big blinds. To the flop we go with 22 left. Uh, Paired boards are good ones for Ace Jack's purposes, even more so when there's a couple of hearts working. Things could certainly be worse for Punsri. Hunting a Jack for the W. Hello. Wow, the nine of hearts oh, is a. Uh, Heavy dose of seasoning on this dish. It twice? <laughs> Run it twice, boys. Nine or a five for a chop, heart or a jack for the win. Chop and there is the five. It's not so much of a pun I'm thinking about it. Uh, if I'm thinking about it, folding this queen to you, I didn't. Was Punat looking for a legal name change to Punt Sri? Is that what he said there? Yeah, I don't think he likes it. He's being it. hard on himself. Yeah, he is. He had a bit of results already. I don't like this yesterday, so I can't compliment him. I the same thing. I think it's fine. Big ICM as well. I mean, if he's, ta he's, if he's making Ace Queen tank. Quick peek at the chip counts on the heels of that chop. Punsri, still the short stack, just a click behind. Tsetsarki, Jason Kuhn, nose ahead of that, and San and Mateos. Third and second. Not sure whether or not you caught it, Henry, but Kuhn and Tsetsarki were having a bit of a chat. And Alexei divulged that he owns an original DeLorean, the Back to the Future car. Not sick. Not a lot of those roaming around intact. That's a fun piece of...
gear to uh, show off. Well, the boys appear to be on their feet and roaming around. Producer James advising us that soft hand for hand. No, I believe it's going to be direct pulse, right? hand for hand. Oh, is it? Okay. Losev all in against Boldajin over on the Triton Poker Plus app. You can sweat along. And it's like a King 9 9 Jack Deuce board. Boldajin with Queen 7. Losev with pocket fives. Finds the hold. And doubles up to 565k. See Luca in the background. Shout out Luca. Still plenty of chips for Bulligan. Dwan getting a jam through on the outer table. Much needed jam. Dwan down to seven big blinds. Staying here. Down to Sean Winter on the button. And 1.9 million covers both the blinds. Comes with the men, 120k. Edvard Barsegian in the big. <laughs> Local legend. Plays just about every merit series. He's got tremendous results. This is his home turf. And looks like he has chosen to flat. Winter. An extra 1.4 million, mind you, as the board comes 8 6 deuce. Believe Barsagan has checked. Yeah, 8 6 deuce, a potential check raise spot for the big blind. It's going to have all the two pairs as well as all the gut shots and straight draws. Sean Undeterred going to continue. In position. <laughs> Looks like a continuation bet of 190,000 into the 330. There's the check call from Edwin. So a sizable pot brewing. Between these two middling stacks, the four of clubs does complete a couple of the straights. 5-3 and 5-7 getting there. It does also bring backdoor clubs. We have a sizable pot brewing. 7-10 in the middle. Edward at the start of the hand, finds himself eighth in chips. 22 left. are going to check back now. Maybe some showdown. Even hands like over pairs or top pairs on that turn. Maybe you want to pot control a, a little bit with ICM. What is that river? Looks like a two across club. Could be a three of clubs then? No, three that's a none across three, club. Three or five across clubs? Three, three is none across, but four clubs is already out there, so maybe it is the five of clubs. Being told it's a three of hearts didn't look like that. But maybe, maybe we need to go spec savers, aren't we? Big hand. Jeez. The ice tested. Nah, I just, I'm just going to let it blur out gracefully. Queens. Edward Barsagan trapping pre with the ladies. As we stay over here. 
Feels like where the action is. Table Currently. one. Pulse in the room. Still 22 players remaining, as mentioned earlier. Soft bubble now being reiterated by producer James. Explain, Ali. Right. Soft bubble, two off the money. Then stone bubble, one off the money. Producer James nodding his head yes. Luca Vivaldi allowing some of the other tables which had not played quite as many hands to catch up as he pauses the action at tables that have gotten a bit ahead of the pace and love that now back at Stephen Chidwick's table where his ace queen suited has decided to jam Artur Martirosian as an ace queen suited of his own the vast majority of the time these guys are going to chop it up but we'll see whether or not anyone gets some sweat good show down for you Hmm? Good showdown for you. Very good. <laughs> Spades a slight favorite here. Maybe the best showdown. <coughs> Stop it. Not on that board. Two hearts. Jack high. Martirosian on a stone free roll of 36%. Board pairs on the turn as Chidwick anti sweats a heart. Nine outs for Artur to be the runaway chip leader. Doesn't come. Fades <laughs> it. Always a sweat. Even if your name's Stephen Chidwick. One more card for the fans. <laughs> I thought it was real Baltic calling it the best showdown. Hmm? I thought it was Baltic calling it the best showdown. I thought you were going to lose the hand. Artur yeah. still remains at top. 3.3 million. <laughs> oh, I know it's the best showdown. Ian Bradley in second. Patrick Antonis in third. <laughs> And being at the top as Artur is just so advantageous as we close in on the money bubble. Everything starts to tense up for the most part. Players not looking to enter altercations with the Reaper. <coughs> Love the hoodie, by the way. Understated part of the catalog from the House of Vuitton. No LV. Arto's always rocking <coughs> something, you know. Usually it's the chip lead. <laughs> Maybe not the chip lead, but a deep run for sure. It's got the hat, the shades, the hoodie, and the chips to just push this table around as the open jams. Let's just call it the high stakes Ball. uniform. Shall we? No takers. King Queen. It's that part of the program, Henry. Things begin to slow down. Everybody well aware that you don't want to be left out in the cold here. Uh, there's some big ICM implications in effect. There's a three big blind stack and a four big blind stack on the outer tables tight into with just three bigs. Andrew Lubavetsky with four on the outer tables. So understandable that these middling stacks who can kind of just cruise their way into the money Oh, playing snug. Tai Tin Chu, by the way, playing under the Vietnamese banner, made his way out here alongside Dao Min Phu, who picked up a title at his first ever Triton Series in Vietnam. And now Jason Kuhn picking up a couple of kings as he seeks not just a sixth but a seventh title, he says, before this one's all said and done. Takes it up to 135. Run nine. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, no. Um, I have nine back. Ah, uh, nine. Ah, sorry, I missed the last one. Sorry. Ian with the suited nine. Just got to give it up. Not interested. 
Jason, no action as we head to the outer table. So it looks like it is Chu all in against Lubovetsky and Kiat Lee. Andrew with pocket queens. I think Chu with eight, nine suited and Kiat Lee with queen 10 suited. As everyone drawing live, going to the river, Kiat Lee looking for a jack to get us into the money. Five of hearts on the river completes the board and Chu is eliminated by Lubavetsky. Is 9-8 suited, coming up short on the run out and the Queens holding for just shy of a triple up. So Andre moving up to the safe zone. Now playing around 650,000. And with that, Ali, we are on the stone bubble. It's Russia's Nikolai Losev with seven bigs at the bottom of the chip counts. Final three tables as Luca comes around with some chip racks for table five. Yeah, going to be down <laughs> Nine, three suited. Yeah, to three, three tables, which means all will play seven handed. In position, for sure. I'm going to play. Yeah, cool. Losev's got company, by the way, down there in that seven big territory. Tom Dwan, eight bigs. Henrik Eklund, nine bigs. Bit of a war of attrition on our hands. Yeah, given that it's seven-handed as well, you know, that big blind, big blind ante coming around. Pretty... No, I mean, look. Every orbit, you're looking at 150,000, so... These middling stacks, the likes of Panat Punsri, Stephen Chidwick, Jason Kuhn, all going to look to get into the money before putting chips in the middle. But having said that, they don't strike me as the types of guys that are gonna just try and get a min cash. Jason Kuhn looking for title number six. Needs a couple of wins here, in his opinion, in order to come out on top of the Ivan Leal Player of the Year leaderboard. It's Russia's Artur Martyroshin leading the final 21. As we rebalance the final three tables of seven. Stone Bubble with a main cash of 35,800 plan today is to play all the way down to a winner. Said winner going to be going home with 663k and then we'll be jumping in to event number three, the 30k six max mystery bounty. What a fan favorite that event is, by the way. The room already buzzing in a unique mystery bounty format. Obviously, we'll get to it once the coverage starts, provided that we're able to get to it because certainly if the pace to this point is any indication, we might be here a while in search of a champion in event two. Yeah, average stack 22 big blinds. I think we wrap this one up by 10.30 local time. Gives us a couple of hours to jump into the mystery bounty action. Shout out to all of our viewers, by the way. Keeping us company, this is event number two from the Triton Poker Series in Northern Cyprus. We, of course, find ourselves at the Merit Royal Hotel, sorry, Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino here in Northern Cyprus. And what a venue it is. Shout out to Merit, of course, as we look to resume coverage here on the Stone Bubble. 30 and 60K blind, 60K big blind Annie. 150 in orbit. And for those lean 10 ish big blind stacks, as you get a look at the full field breakdown brought to you by Merit Poker, the bell tolls. Could be any number of players, Henry. I can count six, seven, call it maybe even eight players from 13 bigs down could find themselves out in the cold here. 
as we pick things up. Not something you've been doing, Arlie, to my understanding. Enjoyed the spa this morning, taking full advantage of what Merritt has to offer. Normally that would be the case. You missed it? I, I didn't end up getting out to the okay. spa. I actually got out to the outdoor pool. The outdoor pool? More on that later. Mateo's <laughs> opening to 120,000. Isn't that a tantalizing tease? I mean... Ace Jack for Tsatsarki. Jamming here from the button. Innocently trying to plug at the spa. You were out here giving us a bit of a tease as to... No, it was 11 a.m. I was getting teased. An outdoor pool. It's a scene. Teased by the view. Say that. Yeah. Quite the view. Atmosphere. It's really remarkable throughout the years <laughs> how much less fabric is required to assemble a bikini. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Easy now. It's not gone midnight. It was PG. There was nothing. Right. Certainly, you know, I'm capable of worse, Henry. The this anxiety levels do go up, obviously, when I you mean, see that look on my face, yeah. don't they? I got the boot band on, <laughs> keeping track of the heart rate. Stone bubble here in northern Cyprus as we head to the outer table. Some action between... Patrick Antonius, Shaw Winter, and Barsegian, I believe, three-way affair. Barsegian was the opener to 120,000. He was called by both blinds, which were Winter and Antonius. Thought came ace, jack, jack. It was checked around. Deuce on the turn, checked around again. Here we are with a double-paired board. Jackson Deuce is out there on the end, and finally Barsegian firing. Don't know what he's holding, though. Picking up two customers on an ace jack jack board from the blinds on this run out. Really some putting, concern? Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to assume that someone has a jack from the blinds. Some king jack, queen jack, jack 10 type holding is going to defend. Obviously, Patrick likely defending as wide as jack 7. Well, Winter's going to bin it. Some raggy ace, potentially. Oh, Patrick's going to make the call. We're going to get a look at this one, and I see paint. Do I not? You do. Edward on quite the spin the last couple of orbits. <laughs> dramatic delay here at showdown and Patrick finally ready to part ways that was a protracted breakup yeah it was an Edward ace 10 and maybe Patrick not expecting Edward to go for value there with well, ace 10 where do maybe. you have Patrick on oh well Patrick mucked his hand right but I'm just saying given like, that he made the call yeah ace 9 Kind of thing, you know, outpipped by one maybe. Got it. Kind of thing. Hence the uh, the hand funeral. A rarity for Antonius, of course, but maybe just surprised that Edward went so deep. It's funny, I felt the same way about it. I cannot recall the last time that Patrick no, had very rarely. a dramatic delay when mucking there, but it was kind of, as you mentioned, seemed to be tethered to the idea that he just didn't expect to be shown yeah. that particular holding. I think so. But takes listen. takes a lot to uh, catch Patrick off guard. <laughs> Goes back to that kind of theme that we talked about with the Triton newcomers. Maybe putting our regs into a bit of a tizzy. A little tizzy. Ian Bradley. A tizzy of his own. One of the highlight hands of the day. The flop four bet with ace high. Against Punat Punsri. Yeah. Saying Ensign. 
King 6 0 in the big. A few options available. Stone Bobble going to take his time. Dealer change and understandably pace of play has slowed down as we do find ourselves on the stone bubble. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the ball, taking the game. For event number two. Check counts brought to you by Poker Stake. Shout out to Poker Stake once again, by the way. Ali, flashbacks to Vietnam. Quite a few of our viewers making a decent chunk of change with the Michael Soiser second place finish in the main and the Michael Zhang second place finish in the short neck main both I believe the only players selling action on poker stake and uh, yeah it was cool to see them wave the flag for action buying from one of our sponsors suspect we'll see Zhang later in the week once the short deck part of the we program won't. kicks off or we no? won't really no. you're aware of this what he's, happened he uh he's in japan enjoying himself a little bit of a break from poker be back in london in japan yeah enjoying himself he's enjoying his uh second place finish and taking a bit of time off from poker before what's expected to be a busy back end of the year we now live side by side. We have two matching villas, both owned by the same person. He's like, Henry, the one next to me is available. Shout out so Kilbane with I'll the villa. It. I'll take it. Doors always open, Ali, if you ever fancy yourself a little trip to Phuket. Which one of the several doors? I assume <laughs> a villa is not a single door situation. Well, Side door, back door? Yeah, you know, whatever door you want. <laughs> Well, hey, producer James with the needle in the headset. Yeah, Same I, uh, I will definitely make my own transportation to the villa. Henry, you don't need to scoop me up on a motorbike or anything. We know how that ends. <laughs> I'm glad we can laugh about it. It's probably a bit too soon, if I'm being honest. No, it's not. It's not. It's uh, it's all good. It's well, something we'll that know that it's all good once you get stitched up, once you get mended, set right. But until then... We'll just mercilessly go in on the Achilles heel. <laughs> <laughs> Villa, huh? Extra rooms? Kill me? Okay. I, I, I think I'll hit up Michael, see whether or not he's got a spare room. And then if he doesn't, then I'll... I think that will get met with a very quick no thank come you. Come on down. <laughs> Kidding me? like some action between Prince of Darkness, Ike Haxton, and the big blind Edward again involved as we head to a flop. 135k the open from Haxton. Barsegian out of the big, defending. Two hearts, two jacks, and a nine on the board. I believe Barsegian has checked it over to Haxton. Jack, Jack, nine. Yeah, a couple of hearts. Check back from Haxton, delivers the turn, which brings the heart. Action on Edward. Christened by producer James, who moonlights here during the Merit tournaments alongside yours truly as a commentator. As Edward V, Edward courtesy the of fifth. his incredible run of fifth place finishes in events here at Merritt. A fixture at the final table. Can't quite make the summit. Here he is barreling. A nice turn card to barrel. Going to have more flushes than Ike. 250k. It's 
certainly going to have more jack x as well. Can really lean into some of the ace highs, suited broadways. Well, Vikas is can't hit the mark, and Edward on the climb over on the outer table, table one. As he shows the jack, jack of spades tabled. Panning about the room. Where one of our remaining 21 is going to be quite a bit less happy than the other. Is Bradley taking a couple of fingers of the good stuff? It looks like it. I mean, why Down not? the hatch? One of the chip leaders. At it. He's at it. Ian at it, Bradley. Calls Sophia Bulgaria home. Somebody else I know used to call Sophia Bulgaria home. For a short stint, yeah, during the pandemic. Only during the pandemic? Mm-hmm. Was it like a COVID-free area in your estimation? Is that yeah, it was just nice to be around friends and there? family and, you know. Was it a heavily impacted part of the world during the pandemic, uh, Bulgaria, or they got off I think it's light? heavily impacted as most places. Mm. How many black people? A little bit more skeptical so out there. Non-believers. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Tough guys out in that part. I mean, the their definition of shut everything down doesn't really apply to. Yeah. <laughs> Onwards. Andrew with a queen in the small blind. Eight bigs. Oh. And Lubavetsky jamming with the mystery holding. Gets it through. I've done that shit like a spooky amount of times, honestly. Ace of clubs. Yeah, like calling rivers and stuff. Yeah. You do it. It's spooky, bro. Rocking the Ukraine kit there Ace is clubs, Andre. No They're going to think we're cheating. And then I had it. Looks like on table one, Bordogin has jammed button 985k effective it's losev in the big blind the shortest stack in the tournament yeah well covered and calling yes. the bubble could burst pocket pair versus pocket pair and it would appear that the advantage is with the short stack of losev who holds the two tens. A five free flop is good news for him. <coughs> Turn, sterile as well. Two outs need to be faded and uh, six of club was in the vicinity of disaster, but safe as well. And the show must go on. Stone bubble. And with that, it's none other than Tom Dwan, who now finds himself as the shortest stack in the field with just 340k. Luca Vivaldi. Sexiest man in the building. Top five. <laughs> Next time, please build one out. How many suits do you think Luca owns? I'm going to say six. All right, how many good looking suits do you think he owns? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Very bespoke, very dapper is Vivaldi.
Producer James stepping in to advise that Luca snapped up <coughs> four new suits in Vietnam. They're known for their tailoring, by the way. They are indeed. Yeah, if you're looking for some tailoring, Vietnam, Thailand, pick up some really good quality pieces. Get that made-to-measure stuff working. As and Son tries on Ace Jack, likes the fit of it. As he picks up blinds and annies. Artur Martirosian. We're on table three, just open jamming. It's 4.3 million. He's really enjoyed this bubble. Overwhelming chip lead. Wrong. Looks like Losev has three bet jammed against the Winter Open. Sean Winter opening from early position. Looks like a couple of kings for Sean, and is that queens for Losev? Wow, a bit things? of a cooler here for Losev, who had to have been thrilled coming into this one. Queen four, deuce, three, king. Make it Up against one of the only two hands that has him beat pre as the bubble is in jeopardy. Wow, that's Ace, brutal. six, four. The Queens unimproved as Mateos and Kuhn alongside Punsri and Satsarki all front and center. Anti-sweating a Queen, obviously, as Losev is covered, and they're looking to make their way into the money and grease the wheels a bit. Turn card is of no help. Can the two-outer come in? It can't. It is the five of hearts. And with that, Nikolai Losev ends up with the unpleasant experience of being our bubble boy. The Russian in his second ever event, first ever Triton Super High Roller Series, did not cash the GG Super Millions and will not cash here either. Yeah, that's rough. Just doubling up and then waking up with queens the very next hand to the kings of the high roller regular, Sean Winter. And I say high roller regular. First ever Triton Super High Roller Series for Winter, but no stranger yeah. to high stakes. Has quite yeah. the resume. <laughs> it's going to get everyone. Calls Vegas home, I believe. Someone that you would have uh, no, no, I'm, called I'm the action on many times in the oh, yeah. Poker Go studio. Absolutely, Sorry, and he's a very mind. entertaining presence at final and feature tables, just given the fun. animated facial expressions throughout pots. Tom dwan has got a few facial expressions as well. Queen nine suited, not going to be garnering any of them, though, as Axel Halle's under the gun open with the ace-10, waits responses. Well, given how long that bubble took to burst, we have seven sub-15 big blind stacks as things stand. So expect the pace of play to pick up a bit now. The shorties look to get their chips in the middle sooner rather than later. Martirosian ends up defending off of that boss stack with queen six suited. Braggy board. Checks it over to Axel. By the way, furthering that kind of observation there by you, Henry, that we have seven mm -hmm. sub-15 big blind stack. Currently 35,800 locked up by the field, flat for the next three spots, then a flat 40 for the next two, a flat 44,200 from there. Seven spots really only represent 13,000 roughly in added pay money. Yeah, and I think given that it is as flat as you just stated, typically see players just going for the win a lot more. Because there's just so much value in building a big stack and not much value in laddering a couple of spots. Not that I would turn my nose up at 13k. Like a big Arthur, you absolute beast. Just every spot 
has to take it. 5-5 five, five deuce, check raising with the queen, six of diamonds. Going to pick up equity on a decent amount of turn cards. That being one of them. Yep. And now Axel, Halle, just ace high. I mean, it just feels so over aggressive, but the timing is impeccable. Axel with just ace high. When I do this, they always have aces. Yeah, yeah. No, by the way, that Ali did tear one off for the extra 100 here, looking for an ace of 10, maybe a wheel card. Mm -hmm. That feels mandatory to peel one off. So many gut shots and straight draws in hands like this, case in point. Artur making this th a three street hand. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Runaway chip leader. Yeah. Bullying the Frenchman. Yeah. Well, he's got the ammo to do it, but so far he's been unsuccessful. As Ale calls 110, and it does feel like Martirosian is setting things up for a potential jam. And of all the cards yeah. in the deck to roll off, Henry, the Ace of Diamonds giving yeah, Martirosian yeah. More the second nut flush and Halle perhaps inevitable walking papers. Yeah, GG's Halle, I mean, correctly calling Artur down on flop and turn. See the eyebrows get raised as Artur triples and yeah, Halle knows he can't get away from it, gets shown the queen, queen six of diamonds. And with that, we have our first elimination in the money. Is Triton first timer Axel Halle? Is served a bad batch of escargot. I mean, that's disgusting. The Ace of Diamonds, really the only card uh, in the deck where Axel gets stacked. Of, uh, Dare I say that there's no such thing as a good batch of escargot? It's all disgusting as far as I'm concerned. Snails, Henry? I, guess that's okay. I don't want to get judgy. I'm yeah, Epicurious, but I can't do it. No? Nah. Ever tried? Yeah. Producer James stepping in to advise that French members of our crew have decided to go on strike now in response to that statement. They've hit up HR. To be fair, they're always on strike. They're good at that. Yeah. They are good at that. National pastime of sorts. Like what is Triton's retirement age, by the way? Did we lower it? It's like yeah. a weekend thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, Artur, with that elimination, up to over 5 million in chips now. Yeah, we might be laughing here in the booth, having some fun with it, but Axel certainly isn't. Good news for him, though, is he's on the right side of that bubble. So picking up 35,800 as the pay stays flat, but the blinds do not. Up to 40,000, 80,000. Brought to you by Bookmaker. Tahir Khani making sure to get some texts out there and let the boys know I'm in the money. My money's on that guy against Sylvester Stallone in an arm wrestle. What was that movie? Over the Top? Yeah. I think that's what, you know he was in an actual arm wrestling movie. Oh, really? Oh, you Four didn't even know that. Oh Stumbled onto one there, did you? <laughs> we did indeed. Much like Eklund with Pocket Kings, who stumbles forward for 410,000. But the stumbling could be Stephen Chidwick's to experience here off of 985 in the cutoff with Ace Jack. How will he proceed? I think this is a spot that mm. Chidwick has to take. And he has taken it. A little bit easier to take it, of course, Henry, once the ICM pressure of the bubble has been lifted. But now pocket tens for Martirosian, and he's going to get involved. This is going to be a beautiful setup for Hecklin. You see Tom Dewan. Asking how it is that everybody's got something they want to play but me. Eight deuce into the muck, and now we get a peek at roughly level pots in terms of side and main. The main a little bit healthier. Oh, Madrid main event champion Hen Henrik Hecklin 
Great shape for a treble. Thank you. Chidwick all in at risk against the chip leader. An ace would win it. The jack would at least get him the side pot as it oh. comes ace high. Devastating development there for Henrik Eklund's two kings. Martirosian's tens in a bad way as well. Heart on the turn, and now a ray of hope for the kings as Eklund possesses the lone flush draw for the main between Chidwick and Martirosian for the side, and Stevie ends up with trip, aces, and the whole enchilada. Hecklin out in 20th. 19th, is it? Same thing in terms of payout. Yeah, yeah. Now, back over to one of our outside tables where we find Patrick Antonius locking up with Vyacheslav Buldigin. It was an all-in pre from the small out of Patrick, and Buldigin got it in there with him, covered. Board of nine, ace, five, seven, six. And it would appear that we're counting down Buldigan's stack. Looks like aces. Ace paint. Broadway combo there, gonna be good. Ace jack specifically. Antonius had king five with the jam. Yeah, blind v blind, 11 bigs. Push him with the king five. It's close. But Chidwick now, after having the gap closed in event number one, the Ivan Liao player of the year leader with that double up and then some. Back over to the feature, picking up the action between Mateos and Ensan, both of whom share a 10 on the King-Queen 5-10 board. Ensan, open-ender versus the Broadway gutty. Out kicked at present with 620 in the middle. A two pair on the river now. For Ensign, not straight for Adrian. Plus one V, big blind. It's going to come with block, just shy of third pot. Has unfortunately run into the nut straight. What an awful run out that was. Not what he had in mind. So many combos that Mateos has here that beat the Jackson Tens. And nevertheless, he is the man repping as he bet 185,000. And we swing it back out to the outer table where Barsegian is going to give Ike Haxton's remains a spin with 5 3 against Ace Queen. And to the flop we go. It's ace 5-5, five, five, Barsagian with trips. And look at Haxton. Hands up to the sky. Needs to hit an ace instead. It's a diamond on the turn, and I believe he's got the diamond draw. More outs acquired, but the 10 of clubs is not going to allow him to escape fate as the 18th place finisher. GG, Zyke. G, geez, my man. Adding another cash to his Triton track record. Well, this is usually how it goes, Henry. Those short stacks that were just hanging on, trying to get into the money, find a spot, go with it, and either they begin to spin it up or they find the exit as well as we return to Ensan's dilemma with Mateos having raised it up with the nuts. It's been effectively clicked. Back to 4-2-5. We're done with Jackson 10s. Are we not? Feels like it.
Always tough letting go two pair. I mean, what hand do we identify that we can beat? Yeah, we'd have to have Mateos turning some wild hand into a bluff. Benson deep in the tank with his two pair, throwing out a couple of time bank chips. What's on his mind here? Well, I think it's the check on the turn. Turn went check, check. Probably expecting most ace X to barrel. Hands like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Trying to get Mateos to let on. Man? Nine, half, or two pair? As I just mentioned, massive shout out to one of our sponsors, Poker Snake. We had so many people in the chat by action of Michael Soizer and Michael Zhang when we were in Vietnam. Of course, Soizer and Zhang both finishing runner up in the short deck main and the no limit holder main. So a few of our viewers, I say a few, quite a few of our viewers. Maybe a few of our commentators. Up, maybe. Snagging up some value and cashing in over on pokerstake.com. Stake your champion. It's again, pokerstake.com if you want to buy some action from some of your favorite players. It does make it could be entertaining to sweat along. Especially when you've got a piece or two in the field. Financial incentives. Always nice to have an economic interest. Yeah, five ball or a ten ball here and there. Always nice when they end up running deep. That's right. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, sorry, sorry. I wasn't doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. He did say on the butt Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. He was about to do it as I folded, but yeah, sorry. You just knew it. Oh. Satsarki. Ripping in the two black threes and bringing the chips back home along with some extras. Did they keep an eye on the pace still? I like that uh, little quarter zip there, by the way, Hugo Boss. That vibe's rich. <laughs> There's like wealthy undertones. Yeah, it's like he's got a boat in but yeah, Monaco. Right, exactly. Not yeah. sure where the nearest harbor is, but I suspect the SS Tsarki may be docked. It is clean. Moored. Not sure we have a deep water port, but, you know, it's out there somewhere. You know what it is? Go on. I realize that you get to a certain stature, you get rid of the hood. You don't want the hoodie anymore. You just go with like the hoodless kind of the quarter zip in particular. You know, it's it's a it's a different vibe. It says something different. Yeah. Vineyard in southern France kind of wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Don't give me a hundred million, Kilbane. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. I'm not going to spend it on grapes either. Just for the record. Mateo's spending his 1.9 on Ace Trey and gets immediate ROI. I would make a horrendous wine. I don't even drink, so what do I? I'd make a great grape juice, unfermented wine. Right. 
How do you make your money back on like Emirates first if you're not drinking the champagne and wine they have to offer? Stuffing your face you with order the caviar. It, you walk back to premium economy and you pedal it for, you know, <laughs> 50 cents on the dollar. Oh, man. <laughs> just reach up and grab the flight attendant phone and just kind of make an announcement. Five dollars for a glass of <laughs> Perignon. Anyone? Any takers? That's what I mean, yeah. yeah and, so and it's the last, that money. the last time I have this situation, basically. Yeah. And grapes, anyone? Yeah. Any grapes? <laughs> By the way, in the booth here, this may come as a surprise, but only one of the two of us have flown to Emirates first, and it isn't me. Have you not? No. I was going to hit you up first time. I was going to be like, dude, what can I expect? But I was like, no. Well, I might have been able to help you with that regardless. Mm. Just from all the trip reports that I've read. But Stephen Chidwick, A7, upstairs, 180K. Marta Rosian, King 9, big blind. Wow, did he just say Jam all in? City? Did he just say all in or did he just ask if it was 100 No, more? no, okay. I think it sounded he said like it, didn't it? Yeah. 100 all in, same thing in some parts of the world. Bottom pair, which is more than we can say for the A7 in this spot with two clubs on board. Martirosian checking. Out or flopping best. Big blind V button. Chidwick going to check behind and turns a pair of sevens. Potentially going to cost him some chips here. Well, let's find out. Does Martirosian expect that Chidwick's going to be checking back having hit this flop? He's going to have some showdown, a decent amount of time, yeah, some top pairs, some middle pairs. Hands that don't want to get check raised, For sure. given the texture, and yeah. given the fact that Martirosian obviously has been playing bully. Incredibly wet ball texture with ICM. Yeah, and the running sevens for Stephen Chidwick, How fresh off it? that triple up with the ace jack earlier on. Can now go looking for value. 480 in the middle. Third check in front of him. And this will be a comfortable barrel. What kind of sizing does he want to go with? 480 out there. This looks healthy. Exactly half pot. Laying three to one to this king nine. As played, one can understand Artur getting curious. Yeah, I'd say so. Wouldn't fault him for making the call here. He does know Chidwick's balanced enough to check some Queen X, Jack X. Just kind of working through the combos that Taking this sort of line and the King Nine performs well against. Understandable to see Arthur tank here with this spot. Feels like such an under bluff spot. Check, check, flop, check, check, turn, check, B50 on the river from the button open. Yeah, it does make the call. Couldn't get away from it. The king nine 
looking up Stephen Chidwick's a7 and Chidwick now up to 2.8 million currently sat third in chips overall putting a dent in Artur's stack and I believe on the outer table Puntry squared off against Kuhn Oh, ace-king v ace-queen situation. Jason coming up short. Down to just four bigs. Well, that is certainly going to make things difficult in terms of that sixth title he hunts at present. No shame in it. Bit of a cooler. Tom Dwan's had better days at the office, it would appear. Maybe shy on adequate REM sleep. My read. Typically. Yeah, I'm case, not sure the uh, last time I looked up at Tom and thought, that guy got eight hours. If I'm being honest. I'm talking busy. over the last like, decade and a half. Yeah, there it is. Pocket sixes. Jamming. Maybe on the flight over. Although I know that the stakes get high up in the sky sometimes. So, you know. Uncle Paul's jet. I believe they came in from Manila. Well, listen, if you're flying air foie. <laughs> you're not sleeping. You, yeah, yeah, there may be some cards. There's some the gambling air. going on. Shout out Danny Tang and crew. But you're doing it right. Martirosian, ace five, small blind. Be well served to get away from this one, given that Leobovetsky awaits him with an ace queen behind. His chips will certainly be headed to the middle, but will they be joined by Martirosians? And we've got our answer. We do indeed. Yeah, it's a jam. Obviously, we're playing 500 effective. Artur taking the spot with the ace five. Just knows that he's going to be ahead of Tom Duan's under the gun jamming range a decent amount of the time. Tom loves seeing these guys fight for an ace as they block. And that side card. Why do I feel like Arthur's going to find a way to just, like, somehow win Stop this with that. 9%? Stop that. You don't want to be off of Tom's Christmas list. Jack 9 8 here. As Leibovetsky with the gut shot. Duan hydrates and holds on the turn. Ace, queen, or a 10 needed for the Ukrainian. He is covered by Durr, and a clean run out will leave Tom with a near triple. GG's in the chat for Andre. Yeah, and Tom Duan. The nursing this short stack for most of the day. Now up to just shy of 20 bigs. Holding with the sixes three ways. For Lubavetsky, meanwhile, his second cash in his Triton career went one for five back in Madrid. Tenth place in the 20K eight max. And here he is. Collecting some additional shekels. Courtesy of a 17th place finish, I believe it is. Out of table action, it's Edward again. All in against Patrick Antonius. Well, here's how this one came down. Antonius raised it up to 735,000, effectively all in. Barsagan then jammed, asking for the rest. Of course, Antonius made the call with pocket fours up against King Jack. He was looking good on the flop and the turn, but then runner, runner hearts for Barsagian, the king of hearts, to be specific, leaving him ingesting the rest of Patrick Antonius's tokens. Keep an eye on this Barsagian, by the way, Massive Henry. Massive stack, yeah. Edward V. He could be Edward the I. Three things keep going that way. Fifth place finishes during the last series here at Merritt, followed by fourth. Looking to go a few steps further in this Triton Super High Roller Series 20k. 160k, Min open from Tsitsarki, who is ready for 
oh, my any three bets, but not ready for aces, which is what Mateos wakes up with in the big. The king of Spain with kind of the goods. Flat call, too, and give his man some rope here. 440 in the middle. As the Spaniard slow plays and flops aces full. Kind of board texture that could leave the jacks not losing all of it. 875 back. Tsitsarki telling the tale with a follow through. He set the trap with the aces. Comes ace 9 9. Once he gets called on this board, yeah. he's obviously going to be very wary. <laughs> Quad aces for Mateos on the turn. And this is kind of an interesting and relevant card in terms of Sasaki, Henry, because it may feel as though Asex slightly less likely. Maybe there was some 9x, but Mateos decides to lead out. Daily quads for the Spaniards. Getting some value here. Betting just 100 into 640. It's Jacks retained. And an arid four of spades on the river. Sub one SPR for Tsitsarki. And Mateos doesn't put it all on request, but rather 275,000 looking to retain hands such as this. Yeah, Addy going to be disappointed when he sees that Alexei had a couple of jacks. Would have managed to get the lot pre-flop this ball texture. Potentially going to miss out on some value. Tough to have bluffs, obviously, from the big. Especially against the hijack open that did continue on the ace 9-9. Nine, nine. Not many floats. Alexa with the jack of hearts in hand as well. Somewhat key card. See, feels a lot easier when we're in here. We can see the whole cards. That's cut out calling chips, and he's yeah. going to make the call. Nice line there from Mateos. And I promise you that that was not the hand he was expecting to be shown. Quad aces. Fadri. I would have appreciated a snide Sasaki declaration of quad nines after the flat on the end. It'd be like, nice. Figure. <laughs> JK, piecing out to one of the outer tables. Looks like he's found the shepherd's hook. Should have folded anyway. I told you this guy never had a good hand. Yeah, four, four aces. Pretty good against four nines. <laughs> there you go. They heard you. Yeah, they sure did. Son can't take advantage of his button with Deuce for off suit as Mateos continues to be an ace rack. Just one of them on this occasion. Making it 450 to go. Tsitsarki just 240 back, and it looks like he is ready to go sailing for the rest of it as the Jack 10 off suit will trail. <laughs> Rebate on request. Listen, man, if you can get it in behind and still find the energy to crack a joke, love that from Alexei. Easier on the inside of the bubble. And Jack, hi. That's true. Dry board there. Keep it this way. Not of affirmation from the Russian. 720 in the middle. Oh, oh 
my. Ace of clubs, a gut punch to Alexei, who now has five outs to stay alive. And the Spaniard finishes what he okay. started. Jason faded again. Jason, go on, redraw. Redraw. GG's in the chat for Alexei. 15th place finish here in event number two, the 20K seven max. And with that, Ali, not only are we deeper into the money, down to the final two tables of seven, I believe. Well, on that note, we'll be headed for a little break to arrange those final two tables. As 14 remain here in event number two, Adrian Mateos up to 40 big blinds after showering the first timer at Satsarki. Back here at the break, break desk, Ali Najad alongside Henry Kilbane, and it happens just that quick from time to time. You think you're in a good way with pocket jacks. You think you're in a good way with jack 10 on the jack high board, but just the jab and then the hook and yeah. out you go. Yeah, man. I mean, look, it's been a highly entertaining day. A couple of callers, but more so just seeing someone like the post flop play from some of these top pros and some of the newcomers as well. Yep. Shout out to Ian Attit Bradley with that flop format with the ace four. I mean, plug that one into GTO Wizard. You know, we've been talking about using the app, one of our sponsors. I, I think that hand might not be able to be solved. That was more <laughs> of a... Uh, yeah, playing the player kind of thing from Ian. But yeah, it's been a great show, and you know now we're really at the business end of this tournament. No question about it. Current short stack is Samuel Jew of Germany, a first-timer. And at the top, we find Edward Barsagian. Going to step aside for about 15 minutes, are Henry and I. We're going to swap Kilbane out for Randy Liu, but we will return. And as we send you to the break, it's time for one of our GTO Wizard quizzes. following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. A common trick in poker is to multiply your outs by this number to approximate your equity on the turn. A, 4, B, 3, or C, 2. Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one-month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
And the royal treatment. All 800 shipped into the middle. Dan Smith, ace nine suited, decides let's take a spin. Yeah, happy to. His final blind with some dead money in the middle as well. So action back on Ido with a couple of tens. Credit for no snap call, by the way. 720,000 more. He's covered, obviously, so they play for his remaining 525. But in it goes, and the bad news is going to be delivered to Sergio here. So another three-way all-in. I mean, at this rate, Ali, this will be uh, <laughs> over within a couple of orbits. Have we burst the bubble yet? Smith looking for some clubs or an ace. Ido in rough shape. For some diamonds or a 10, as the dealer sorts out the main pot and the side pot. Shout out to Hussein Ensign, by the way, and his family and friends said that they'll be tuning in for this one. Pulled me aside last night around 2 a.m. Said, Henry, it only took me four bullets in event number one and event number two, but I've got a stack bagged for day two. Just thrilled to be here playing high stakes. Five cards to come in great shape to eliminate two players in well. The ace, king, nine, middle set for Inc Anson. Incredible that Smith would make aces up and be no good, given that the third card on the flop showers two pair. Two tens in a bad way, but wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Jack on the Hold turn on. and some smirks spread around the table as Ido now draws live. Four outs, two a queen. For the side, and instead hey it's a seven. So two pelts claimed here by Hossein Ensan. Dan Smith's remains and Sergio Idos both sliding into the middle and over to the German. The job done. Yeah. Yeah. As he continues to amass that, chips that, here in the early the going. For sure. See the black dot here on the line? On the white? Oh, yeah. See right there. Yeah, and I'll see that all across the table. See, Biao Ding is all in on the outer table. We'll keep you all updated about that. Once again, can sweat all the action over on the Triton Poker Plus app. And we are, in fact, down to 25 players now as Ding has been eliminated. King 10 into Jews, King Queen. Triton Poker Plus. I currently have all four tables open. Ali sweating that, every hand. Was that Samuel Zhu, the uh, other Triton newcomer from Germany? That he uh, was indeed. got showered by? I do apologize. Ding down to 235k, down to six bigs. Oh, okay. Drew doubled up. 
Let's dry them off. Get them back in there. Not showered. Jack-5-4, two diamonds as Hecklin's ace-queen open. Picked up queen-10 for the ride. Marta Rossian, the overall chip leader, obviously a dangerous seat to tussle with, regardless of how many chips he's got in front of him, for that matter, just given his aptitude. Arthur just seems to run deep in everything, man. Yeah. Whether I'm, like, scrolling an online lobby, the GG Super Millions online, or a live event. It's a Triton Super High Roller Series or some obscure event in the middle of nowhere. He's there. He's in the mix. Year round. Always rocking the Tiger Cap as well. He puts in a tremendous number of hours on and offline, doesn't he? Yeah. Definitely when I think of people that are just in the mix nonstop, he, he's, he's out there. Leads out for 160,000 here. As he suspects that Hecklin does not have a jack or better as played. And as the defender from the big blind, he can more credibly rep the stuff we're staring at. But of course, the wheel gutter helping Hecklin to make this call here. Yeah, when you check back on the flop as well, going to need to defend some barrels with ace queen high. Hecklin obviously going to be balanced enough to check behind with some top pairs, it's some no pocket longer pairs. Ace queen high, is it? As the ace of spades rolls off on the turn, four liner on board, but top pair, queen kicker for Hecklin. Let's see whether or not he's going to be put to the test. Yeah, nice clean river for Henrik. Feels like a bad spot for Martirosian to be betting, doesn't it? It does, but also in terms of what the big blind range looks like, he's certainly going to have more deuce X, more six seven. Artul doesn't strike me as the guy to bet turn to give up river, but this may be a spot that ace of spades. A lot of Henrik's floats are going to be hands like ace king, ace queen, ace ten. Oh boy, Artul putting Henrik all in. Wow. Our Madrid main event champion in the blender after rivering top pair. How nasty is this? And Hecklin well aware that Artur would come with this sort of figure instead of trying to milk if he had those deuce X combos just on account of the fact that there is a good deal of ace X in Hecklin's range, which could find the call against a wheel. But of course, on this occasion, it's <coughs> against Queen High as the time banks are pushed forward. Yeah, I mean, given at this SPR, it wouldn't make sense for there to be any other bet size from Artur, less than one SPR. So with that in mind, just trying to figure out the bluff combos. Plenty of them, by the way. I mean, you know, Artur going to be defending as wide as like Queen-6, 10-6, that barrel turn, jam river, blocking hands like the nut straight. Yeah, it looks like an overbet, so I stand corrected. It's not, obviously, as they're playing the 455 effective of Hecklin. And on a river like this where, you know, Henrik has more ace-king, more ace-queen, more ace-ten, to see the follow-through from Artur really polarizing his range here. I think if he's digging as deep as queen-ten, then uh, this becomes... Pretty easy call as Hecklin agrees and flicks it in with the ace queen. It's shown the queen high, and now our Madrid main event champion moves up to third on the leaderboard, 1.5 million. You know, another you know time piece, by the way. Main event champion. I was just zeroing in on the same thing you were, Henry. I love that he still wears it. Of course, way, man. Takes slip pride over in it. To our other sleeps with it, showers with it. Don't ask me how I know. I won't. <laughs> Ian Bradley. <laughs> Ace King. I call that more of a five star hand than a three star hand. Ace 10 for Tobias in the small blind. We know these button opens can be a bit wide, and as such, Schwecht jams. 655. He is covered by Bradley, who surely will be making the call and dominating. 
Well, our GG poker qualifier who made his first final table in his maiden event. Looking to come up short here, just five off the money, unless he can improve with five cards to come. Needs some help from the deck. No dice on that board, Ali, I mean. Yeah, that's the opposite of help. It's as rough as it gets, drawing to running cards now. And dead on the turn. The river, <gasps> just a formality. Ian Bradley up to 1.9 million. And Ali, yeah. as you alluded to, action thick and fast here. Four eliminations within the first with a lifeline, but still work to do. Just six big blinds. King six suited for Chidwick as we send it over to the other feature, Martirosian. He's too suited. That Jack. Big stack. Feels like it's coming together, and he's just going to jam. Got the boys behind him all covered. Ale into the muck, and ace 10 for Paul Fua on the button. Excuse me. Paul currently sat 20th. There's seven bigs. He makes the call. ICM out the window. ICM's for poor people. Got himself in a good spot. I have one too. <laughs> and he knows it. That big smile on the heels of being shown the deuce kicker by Martirosi. And this will play for 855,000. Oh Two spade flop, though, and the sweat is real. Ace 10 it needs to fade a ton. Oh, and the three of spades on the turn leaves Paul drawing dead. Obviously, he can be happy with the fact that he chose a good spot. Yeah, played for the win there, <laughs> taking the spot rather than kind of blinding down and sneaking into the money as a short stack had he just found the hold. <laughs> what about a woof band or an Apple Watch? Pick that. How baller would that be if you had the opportunity to pick any one of Boss Man's watches and you reach for like this random Apple watch. pop swatch or something, you know, like in a kitchen drawer somewhere? Oh, boy. Ace Queen for Bradley, an opener, and there is subtext here between he and Punsri. This could As be showers. The ace jack in 730. Gonna think it over. Bradley covering everyone behind. Gonna be expected to open wide. Wider than usual as we are. Two off the money. Punt three. In look this case, for a three outer. Henry, he'd be opening wide for a big helping of Punt three's chips. And there is the jam that we suspected might be forthcoming. Let's get a count, please. Ace into the muck behind the boys. Don't think Bradley's folding, but he's just asking for a count. This is obviously a big spot. Two off the money. I mean, if the jam were big enough, maybe the ace queen doesn't like heading off to the races, but against this depth. Yeah, I mean, he looks pained by it. This is like the best case situation, right? Like ace-10 suited, ace-jacko. There's also some future game calculations that come into effect. I'm sure you got a DeLorean. Yeah. Let's go. That is original one. Oh, my God. It's so cool. Not from the movie, but it's so exactly dope. the same. Oh, yeah. That is so Just cool. came like so cool. I love the yeah, that's counted out the calling chips. Clicked in another time extension. There's a lot to digest here. I mean, look for chips. This is a fist bump call, but Bradley's currently second in chips and has enjoyed taking it to the streets. 
playing post flop. But listen, precisely the fact that he is second in chips means that even on the occasions in which he's wrong about this call, he's still got plenty with which to operate moving forward. And on this occasion, he's far from wrong. He's very right, as Punsri's just 24% to 71% for a 1.6 million chip pot. For the chip lead, Bradley can hold it. Be up to 60 big blinds. To the flop we go with 22 left. Paired boards are good ones for Ace Jack's purposes, even more so when there's a couple of hearts working. Things could certainly be worse for Punsri. Hunting a Jack for the W. Hello. Wow, the nine of hearts is a heavy dose of seasoning on this dish. And welcome back to the desk here inside the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Ali Najad joined now by Randy Liu, continuing coverage of event number two, the 20K7 Max, where we began the day with 28 players, burst the bubble. Now the field has been paired in half, as 14 remain with a $44,200 payout at present, roughly a 4K pay jump from 14th to 13th. The man at the top of the leaderboard continues to be a part of that theme, which has emerged in the early going from here in North Cyprus, the newcomers. Edward Barsagian, certainly not short in the tooth in terms of his poker career, but he has 3.7 million and 46 bigs at present. A man who is a fixture here in the merit tournaments, which take place throughout the year. And we're seeing a lot of these guys kind of dip their toes in the water. We come to your backyard, you come play with us. And a lot of times it can be a very profitable venture. Well, yeah, like you said, we have uh, plenty of newcomers who have been um, just performing extremely well. Yesterday we had Badir, right? He plays at the Merit Poker, um, finishing yes. third, I believe, uh, last night. Um, you know, like these guys, you may have never heard of them, but they are extremely good. They just don't play on the normal circuit that you're used to seeing live stream. But right. when they see that the Triton's coming to their hometown, they're like... This is the one. I'm going to make my debut. Listen, sometimes it's not that they're coming to their hometown. It's that they're going to come out and finally take a shot, as we've seen Ian Bradley do. And I know when you and I were talking just before we came on air of all that you bore witness to prior to stepping into the booth for the day, that Bradley bluff against Punat Punsri, a hand to be circled. He got at it. I mean, <laughs> that's sure the Ian Bradley pretty that's much, nickname, right? You know, right? He, he, made the, he made the play there on that really gangster bluff, Jack 7-7. Mm -hmm. seven, seven. You don't got it? Punsi, you don't know me, but I've got the talent. I think the fact that he rolled it over immediately, right there next <laughs> to him, Punsri, feasting his eyes on Ace Four suited, and everybody else taking note of that as well. Bit of a statement, declaration of war, perhaps, would be a fair way to describe it as we send it back down to the arena where there are just two tables, so not a hand to be missed. As our two features stack up as follows, brought to you by Poker Stake. Blinds at 40 and 80,000 with the 80K ante, and there is Barsegian. Not far behind him, Mayor, Ma Mayor Martirosian, 44 bigs at the red table. As we carry on here, looks like 13 players by our count. Who's missing there? It's Somebody's got 525,000 <laughs> in front of them. I think that's Jason Kuhn. It is Kuhn. Jason Kuhn, yes. That's disrespectful. Put some man. respect <laughs> on the five-time winner's name. Yeah. You're right about that, Randy. Maybe Man's not an empty minutes. chair. <laughs> what is going on around here? Yeah, he, he's, he doesn't have a chance, right? Five titles. <laughs> What's up, Tom? Good to see him in the mix, making a deep run. Samuel Jew. I believe he's a newcomer, if I recall correctly. That is correct. Never seen the short stack. He's out. Chidwick on the button. Nine six off. Currently number one. Player of the year award. Mock the nine six. Don't blame him. It's not that good of a hand. Sean Winter. Is this a debut? I'm not sure. I believe this is Winter's first Triton. Obviously not a debut in terms of high stakes. <laughs> first circuit. time he's Such played a high roller. Fixture. 
on the high rollers. Did play the GG Super Millions, failed to cash, but this is indeed his first ever. Yeah. Triton high roller series, <laughs> and look at him. Thought about it. As yeah, his fellow first timer, Kanan Taharkani, the Turk, in the big, gets a walk. He'll welcome that. <laughs> Looks like yeah, the mood is light yeah. the, that's what they're at our other feature table. Well, the boys are asking for blankets, and the air con does feel like it's been kicked up today, Randy. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't mind uh, some blankets over here for us, maybe a little tent. We can just spend the night here, too. Me and I you, want to cozy up? Skin? I could cut glass with these nipples. <laughs> cut glass. <laughs> I'm only All kidding, right. man. I got to smile. I'm, I'm happy fine. to be back in the booth with you. This I just wanted to say that. Classic Ollie. <laughs> 160 to go, says Bull Deegan, with mm -hmm. the Jack Nine of Spades as Bradley, Ace, Queen in the small. Very interesting spot here, especially with Arthur Martha Rosen coming in with eights in the big blind. Yeah, very much so. I like this flat call. It makes a lot of sense. Approaching the final table, you're going to kind of reduce the variance a bit. Hard to get in good against the early position raise. Keep those weaker hands in. But we have an all in. Arter. Oh, Bradley. You see Bold again frustrated putting his hand into the muck. And it is a bit of a decision here for Bradley, who sits with two million. This is definitely a time card worthy hand. Multiple, possibly all of them. It's just. You kind of feel like the ace queen is definitely good, but you're like, am I really getting my stack at risk right now? 25 big blinds. I don't have to think. That, yeah. You have banana. Uh, Archer definitely does this with uh, ace king as well because the opening raise was just uh, had like 20 blinds, so no reason to three bet small with his hands. Huge tournament implications, right? 14 remaining. As you suspected, time cards have been deployed. He's running out. It's important to note the first raise was the early position. <clears throat> so, in theory, Archer's jam should be stronger. Shouldn't be like the bottom pairs. <coughs> what frequency is an ace jack in these 10? Does Archer maybe take those hands to a flop instead of jamming? That's the big question, and lay down it is. That's a big pickup for two eights. Martirosian narrowing the gap between himself and Barsegian. Twenty-five. I will play. Ah. Was this a color up? Okay. And. Uh, oh, no. It's not, it's, it was not new at all. Is it okay? Intervening here. Not clear. No. Quite like yet, but as he does the business, let us do ours. Finding Jason Kuhn in search of his sixth title, but obviously work to be done off of 685,000. Man who knows a thing or two about titles himself, Hossein Ensan, perhaps the most difficult of all titles to obtain. The World Series of Poker main event. Sitting on 10 bigs. Keep your eye on Bradley, by the way, Randy. He's got some game. I think if given the opportunity, we could see him with a little speech play in a spot, too. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, after that, that, big, that big bluff in the show, you know, mm -hmm. he, that's not the type of guy who just does it once. You know, he, he's got game. Uh, you know, he's got that verbal speech play that you just alluded to. We'll see. And, you know, Jason Kuhn, one of those guys that will get in those verbal battles. Maybe potentially a target. Who knows? Seven blinds, not too much to work with anyways. Hands will play themselves. Tails. 32 bigs. Been a bit of a roller coaster for him on the day. Oh, no surprise to see him at the top. Seven cash is 2.5 million for Adrian Mateos after looking at the Triton Poker Plus app. One final table finish in the main in Vietnam. 1.2 million for fourth place finish. That's quite a lot. Indeed.
current shortest overall stack belongs to Samuel Ju, who is quite a bit shorter than Jason Kuhn, sitting on 355,000. Yeah, he's got the, the super short stack. There is a little pay jump out there, if you notice. 44-2 uh, for 14, 48-4. If you can survive one more, might be crossing his mind a little bit. The real ladders are going to come deeper <laughs> toward the final <laughs> of table. Course. 663,000, by the way. Up top for first in this one. <laughs> All right, cards back. Round of mucks in front of Bradley's button. Jack Dewey, not the candidate. <laughs> Marta Rosian with ace nine suited, sharing a laugh with Kiat Lee. Is, I think Kiat knows with high frequency, Artur is going to be getting after his big. Yeah, but Artur actually is holding quite a strong hand in this mm -hmm. situation. Expected to have some weak Just holdings. It's going to bump it up. And, you know, for Kiat Lee here, I do think that both plays are reasonable. He's expecting this chip leader to raise a lot. He could make a stance here, but calling usually is the standard. Does come in with call. 15 blinds back. Inside straight draw, but do you see that flush draw from yeah, Arthur Rosian? Two hearts on the Jack A. Trey board as Kiat came along. Has the benefit of position. Suspect he's going to be facing a barrel here. I think so, too. And the nice thing about ace nine of hearts with this stack to pot ratio is you can kind of bet flop, get called, jam turns, and a lot of turns you can jam. Doesn't mean we need to like improve the board at all or, or make it scarier. 150. Lots of equity. You can put a lot of pressure on 8x if it happens to be a, a call on a flop. For now, Kiatli in position, likely to take one off here rather than put in a raise. No reason to do so. Another 300 into the middle, and the heart rolls off on the turn, so Kiat draws dead. Suspect that he's not going to be interested in continuing in this almost 1 million chip pot. Should Martirosi and Barrel, which is not a given when you got this much hand, Randy, you can always slip it exactly. to the opposition. If there was a lot of stack to play for, then you most certainly would see another bet from Ace-9 suited, but given this stack to pot ratio, you can easily just check it. Give your opponent some rope with those straight draws. Don't get that 8x to hero fold to another bet. No heart in hand. Gonna make a check for Kiat. There could be a number that keeps Kiat in here on the end. Yeah, let's let's see what Archer comes in with. Like, the fact that his opponent checked back the turn would make me think it's less Jack X heavy. Possibly, well, he's just gonna pile it all in. <coughs> Does look a little bluffy. Hmm. Kiat <laughs> yeah, feels the same way, but does he really want to risk his tournament life at this point on second pair, queen kicker? Yeah, so Kiat, of course, is thinking about how often he gets checked to for flush. Also wondering, can Arthur do this with just a lone jack? It, it is an over bet. The 10 does improve that kind of big blind calling range, right, in the form of like 10, 8, 7, 9s that called flop check back turn. These are possible queen nines. So the fact that he's still kind of pushing all the chips in there is... I don't know, it's, it's dicey because it's not, you're, you're unclear what to do here with this pair of 10s. Your hand looks like 8x a lot. 8x can't really handle the heat. Two overs to that card. Good lay down. Yep. Kiat conceding there. Well served to do so. <laughs> Thank you. He's a fun one. Your friend will be. Where I guess up there. I don't know. Do we have a blanket delivery? It's good to watch. Yo, yo. 
but it's not good to play it. In the foreground there? Feels like we did. I mean, remember the other day with Hassan, he had that cloak. That would be good timing to use that. Right. Wasn't it here the chlorine thing happened? Mm -hmm. Were you here for that? Mm -hmm. That was where I demonstrated my allegiance <laughs> to the Triton brand, Durr. Got a little bit of an inadvertent I wasn't there chemical for mix it, up here. But, um, yeah, but I stayed I've in the foxhole, Randy. All right? You were going. You were Everybody going scattered. <laughs> and I was like, no, no. We go down with the ship. Mm hmm. Well, the fans appreciate it. Needed your commentary to the end. <laughs> to the bitter <laughs> end. So I'm gasping for air. There's nothing to commentate on once everyone <laughs> leaves, though, is the, that's the problem. He's four suited here for Sean Winter, and he puts it in the bin. Yeah, it's a it's an understandable laydown because of this, you know, final table bubble approach. You're, you're going to see ranges tighten from the everyone but the big stacks, basically. A seven making the stance here. Looks like it will get through. Tidy pick up there for Taharkani. I know, just not, I'm not trying to cheat. Like, oh, no, it's yours. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Uh, because I have my money here. It's a very far. It's unclaimed. It's unclaimed. Okay. Looks like he's made a recent visit to the barber shop here. As have I. Second straight time I've saved my haircut for Cyprus. Did you? Okay. They do good is, work is, out is here. The, it's, it's better here? Hair is kind of the Turk's thing, Randy. Uh. Okay. I don't know if it's better. It's certainly cheaper. <laughs> the almighty dollar. Okay. Randy. It's um, just economics. Maybe next time. Um, that's my plan. Looks fresh. He looks swole. That's what he looks. Guy could probably curl each of us <laughs> at the same time. Ace king for <coughs> Tom Dwan now. Cut off deliberations. Yeah, looking for some actions, especially from Samuel. Sitting on six blinds. Problem is, if he jams here, he's never getting any folds. Chidwick, ace queen. This is a problem for Stevie. Mandatory. In the big 20 blinds. Cooler. Good news for Tom Dwan fans, I'll tell you that. Well, there's still a whole board to come, provided that Chidwick takes the line you suspect he will and jams. He's definitely going to be putting in more chips, just whether it's all-in or some kind of induction. Yep, there is the all-in, there is the snap call, and there is the bad news in Camp Chidwick. Pipped in a 4.1 million chip pot, which is an incredibly meaningful one as... It'll be good for second in chips overall behind Martirosian. You can see Stevie not amused by this development. Yeah, keep hot for both players. Give them lots of ammo. To the flop we go. Queen and the queen high rainbow board. Duan devastated. Has three outs. His stack is the one that is covered, and things getting worse now on the turn as the ace of spades. Well, it's already in Chidwick's hand. Would not have been an out, though. And on the river, the needed king fails to materialize, and Durr, given his walking papers in brutal fashion there, Randy. Yeah, lights out, GG. Good to see him in the mix in these No Limit tournaments. Somehow, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles, right? Indeed. I wasn't sure until then, but then. Switch. It went from a 70 30, what you were thinking to pure. You were leaning, and then it went pure. Let's see. Was it Mr. Ross? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
That is how the cookie crumbles here. Deep into day two here in event number two. 20K, 7 Max. Alina Jad alongside Randy Liu bringing you the call. Our thanks to all of you who are streaming us live, whether it's on YouTube, Twitch, or the Triton Poker Plus app, which we certainly encourage all of you to download and utilize. You guys cover me, right? <laughs> Good question, Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see he's got a light heart about his 600K. Hey, he got a page out. He might get one more if he can last one more player from 48.4 to 55.2. Not that he needs it, but if someone's going to give you extra money, why not? Sure. Let's see how Stephen Chidwick uses this newfound stack, right? 40 blinds can put a lot of pressure on Sean Winter. Jack-6 offsuit, not a great hand. You can see it both ways, depending on his approach. And that approach is raise. Getting after Sean Winter here. 10 tray offsuit. It's a tough opponent to get after, but 10-3 offsuit, nothing to work with. And not kind of the size up to 275 here. Typical small. A little chuckle. Big. Oh no, Winter's the stone best. And he gives it the Florida, not the Florida high muck, <laughs> but kind of the, Did you see the that? mid muck. Yeah, maybe. Did Chidwick mean to show it? No, no, he was just Chidwick trying to imitate to, the, the Florida muck. He tried to imitate muck. him, and yeah. the cards flipped over. It's a really revealing hand, too. Jack six off suit. Secret Lab. You know it. The same seating that we here in the booth enjoy can be yours at home. Game-winning comfort for when the stakes are high. Check out the entire catalog at secretlab.co slash 2022. They're comfy. Sometimes they're too comfy. <laughs> too comfy. They actually make us worse at our job, right? Cause well, just like comfy. late in the night, you know what I mean? I'm like, bring me a blankie. <laughs> I might just catch some shut-eye. What do you think? I don't know if you caught that comment. I swore I heard Sean Winter say 10 threes. Doyle Brunson's father? Dead. Yeah, is that a thing? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to Sean. Troll extraordinaire. Okay, so me, me and him just, he's just going to get me every single time. 100%. Okay. Such I mean, a believable face, though. Listen, the greatest facial expressions mid hand that you will see <laughs> in High Roller are courtesy of Sean Winter. Let the record reflect. Okay. Barsegian, raise and take it. Chipwick, by the way, after showering Dewan, emerging as the chip leader. Why is the clock clock? I was just just a click in front of Martirosian. Are we balancing? That's a tough top two right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we played like a lot of hands. Just roll it back. Did we do it again? Were on break? No, no. Is there a pigeon in the rafters? <laughs> they point it up. I didn't know if they did like a certain amount of hands before the blinds raised or something. Or that I don't know. Sam's in trouble as he's hitting the big blind next. Six big blinds. Out. This looks like a chip leader hand. Jack 10, 44 big blinds, late position. My money's on an open. I'd bet the bankroll. Should never do that. <laughs> shouldn't. You could misclick. <laughs> yeah, oops. What? Well, that was in Randy Lou. You'll rebuild. I would stake. You're gonna, okay, you're going to stake me. I was going to who's going to stake me? I'm just wondering it what I have to raise. It rounds up to 250, I would imagine. Hmm. Actually, it, it might round down. Oh, what's happening here? I feel like we're missing the chip. Hmm. Do we have to, we have 25k chips? Yeah, the whites, right? 
those are. Okay, so apparently Chidwick declared 235,000 and must raise the nearest amount, given that we don't have 5Ks, to the amount that he declared that is available. Uh, and obviously 225, 10K away from the declaration, 250 would be 15K away. I understand. This guy's just full of mistakes lately. So he folds the jack six up. Can't choose the right chip count to bet with. Come Take on. it back. <laughs> I can't say these things about Chidwick, can I? What's Whatever gonna... Chidwick's full of, mistakes is not among them. It's going to just fall into the trophy by mistake. Watch. Huh. If he falls into the trophy, <laughs> it's going to be on purpose, Randy. What did you What did you do on your break? Did you... <laughs> You end up getting loaded on accident. <laughs> Is there some of these spiked the fruit punch out there? Maybe an opportunity for Samuel. It might get folded to him. He's sitting on six or less blinds. I believe it's less now that he ate the big blind. Into oh no, King Deuce going to jam. That's pressure. Did not expect that necessarily off of 1.3, but 13 bigs deemed enough. Oh, Sam's in the big blind. By Kanan and Jew with just 400,000. Ace Trey. What's he want to do? I mean, the stack just kind of plays itself. You got an ace against a dealer button open. Maybe it's crossing minders a little page jump right now from 12th to 11th mm -hmm. is something. No shame in using a time card here. None at all. Tacker Connie Taker really shouldn't be jamming too light. In this case, he is, as the big blinds calling range should be much wider given the stack size situation. Interesting. Wow, he just laid down ace three offsuit, Ollie. A little surprising. Very surprising. He's got the big blind Annie and the big blind out there, and he's up against the button open, which, as you mentioned, you don't expect to be all too wide given that spot. But nevertheless, into the muck it goes. Can't say the same for the ace queen of Ian Bradley, which has chosen to flat the hijack open of Jason Kuhn. And Bradley's going to be in a good way as we head to the flop. Heads up here. 1.4 million in the middle. 12 left. Just one blind, too. Ten high flop as Kuhn manages to bink the side card and take a big lead against Bradley. Asks for the rest of Kuhn's biscuits. And in they go. 1.6 million chip pot. All Jason's got to do is dodge a queen. So far, so good. And the river is safe as well as Kuhn wets his beak in more ways than one. All about getting him in with three outs. I know. <laughs> Frustrating there for Bradley. Yeah, it's uh, these big, these big time players, Jason Kuhn, Stephen Chidwick, just getting full doubles dominated. It's not fair. Yeah, and the frustration is twofold. Obviously, losing the chips, but then not being able to clear that kind of talent from the field. Of course, uh, and you give those guys more chips, and they know how to put, apply pressure. They sure do. Put some pain on you. Ace nine suited now for Jason Kuhn. We'll Coming to the open. Oh. 
Coon goes back to work up front with an ace nine suited, yep. and now. 16 big blinds, 1.6 million. Yeah, good stack. Colin. Ace <laughs> Jack <laughs> awaiting <laughs> orders. Give me some. How much do you have? One, we'll two. He's funny. Jams from the small. He is funny. Fuck it. Speech, you're scaring the shit out of me. I think I'm supposed to call you, too, and I might just fold. Oh, wow. It's oh, 1.2. Kind of God, you hit me with the speech. Look at that fucking hand, too. I might just make a crazy fold. Show. Show. What do you have? <laughs> Holy shit, you might as well just tell me what your two cards are. What do you got? You got Ace King off? I feels like Ace King off to me. Holy oh, okay. shit. Fold, man. Here's wow. Fold. Uh, and it sure it seems there. like Bouldigan cost himself a call there. So if we were to believe like. Jason Kuhn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Suited, too. Got a free look. Well, listen, the... Dominated aces have been performing well, so maybe... <laughs> he should have made that call. What a mistake, Jason. <laughs> right. Better outcome for Bulligan, perhaps, as we slip it back over to the other feature. Bulligan up to 1.8 after that one. Now another ace-nine suited, this time in hearts up front for Sean Winner. 22 bigs. Certainly deep enough to open. Yeah, he's got the heart version as Jason and Diamonds. 235. Double. <laughs> <laughs> he is a troll, isn't he? 235. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing full well it's going to end up 225. <laughs> Even the dealer got a kick out of that one. Time running out for Samuel. Is Queen Jack the one? Remember, Ace three out of the big wasn't. Yeah, I know. I'm uh, facing an up front open. He does have a few more hands he can consider, given he's on the dealer button. And they're going to open with the stack sizes. Usually doing pretty good against Queen Jack, actually. Can you maybe? You want to get a heads up if you happen to get it all in. Maybe get an overlay from the big blind, big blind ante and small. Tough though, 350. He's out. Parsegian now. Working man's hand. Works its way into the muck. And the dirty diaper for Chidwick and the big. Not interested. Works every time. Yeah. 237. What did you have, Sean? 237. <laughs> I got to do some math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, you are playing with 10. 237.49. You are not going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> what if you declared 237.5? Do you get to choose whether or not you want to make <laughs> right, it 250 or 225? Do you get the option? <laughs> Actually... Yeah, that does look like more. Like any, well, I want Winter to open for 237495 <laughs> <laughs> Well, we close enough, Floor. So it would work the opposite. 3.6 million. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many trolls at this table. Oh, it's fantastic. Love to see it. Personality on display here. Deep into this one with 12 remaining as Kanan Taharkani finds an ace king and Samuel Jew thinking patience rewarded with the two black nines. But it's going to be a real sweat as he sails his remaining tokens into the middle. Yeah, as good as it gets here with two nines. Going to get some overlay from the blinds assuming they don't wake up with a hand. Which they don't. And we'll play for 950. It works. <laughs> It's King David. That's my favorite, you know? Never can beat me. Nines. It is a big hand. It never can beat me. Nines is my favorite. Put it out in the universe, though. I told you. 
Well, the threat from Tahir Khani that the Nines were drawing dead, perhaps. I knew lost against my Coming to fruition on the ace-eight-seven board as Samuel is yeah, on course, his feet, but suddenly on the turn he picks up a gutter. <laughs> so from two outs to six. Oh, also three. Three of clubs. Okay. Spells the end of the road and good sportsmanship on display there from Samuel Ju, who can certainly be proud of a 12th place finish. Going to be collecting $48,400 is the German. And perhaps some respect as well based on the decisions that he made en route to the final two tables here. See the player standing up a bit. Are we perhaps waiting for potentially hand for hand? Well, 11 left. We combine at nine, I believe, Ollie. Is that right? Correct. Thanks for the hesitation. That well, that look. On seven your seven max event, right? So. Oh, it's seven max event. Yeah. Okay. But I mean. Oh right, we still do some combination. Because yeah, you don't want to make them play five and. Five and four. Yeah, no, you don't definitely don't want to well, do that. I guess you'd be playing five and five. Yeah. Plus one. Five and four. Combine it. But we're not. You'd think after all these stops. <laughs> I'm sorry I put you on the spot without you knowing the answer. Well, normally ahead of time. I've got my little cheat sheet here, but <laughs> producer James walked off with it. And now I'm flying blind. Min rays open here from Barsegian. In the light. And for suited, playable, but would be understandable if he folds. We're actually down to 10. I don't know if you catch that down there. So we, I see. Yeah, Kiat Lee got showered. It was a big pot, it seems, because Jason Kuhn is on a mountain of chips. I see Kiat Lee in with Queen Jack of Diamonds, Vashlislav, Ace 10 offsuit, three way all in. Jason Kuhn with pocket nines runs out a straight for him. Big. Must be nice as his nines performed quite a bit better than Samuel Jews in that spot and led to ten handed action as we proceed. Five handed at each of our two featured tables. Queen for Stephen Chidwick. Is there any big chip over there? Stack? Oh, I thought we won point five. Sorry? I thought we won point five. This is the Chidwick five. hand. Sean Winter, ace nine suited. Okay, bro. That's fine. Well, big stack that? raising. That's, that's a good hand. Currently sixth in chips. Chidwick the chip leader. I actually can see a plethora of choices that uh, Winter can take calling is pretty good i think the one you see the most because it's a little bit excessive to kind of put in a jam and three bet folding this hand is not ideal yeah. they'll put not ace five of clubs also one of those hands where you can easily pile it in ace blocker would get looked up in this spot can you find a call since we are on the final table bubble or final ten I see a case for keeping it slow and coming in for call instead, but I'm uncertain what to do is best. Flat from Sean, inviting Punat Punsri in the big blind to maybe do something. Solver bait. It, is, it can be a bait for sure because a lot of solver, most people see as well, this is just, i got to have some frequency of bluffs, and it is going to be it right here. Chidwick, ace, queen. Too good. Too good of a hand. Really no other play than to commit this, I feel. Credit to Winter, by the way, because he came with the flat on the button. Instead of three betting or jamming, doing something silly that would have got him into trouble. And as such, it's going to clear the way for him to find the muck. 
For sure, and you know, had Winter put in a raise, Punat Ponsri would be saved, as he wouldn't want to put in action. Why didn't I just, why didn't I just jam? Oh, you'll see why. Yeah. There's your answer, Mr. Winter. As a cold breeze would have come over his ace nine. And instead, it is directed toward the ace five suited of Punat Punsri. But as we touched on earlier, Randy, the inferior aces have performed well. Late stages here. Will this be another occasion? Doesn't look that way. Queen, Jack, seven. Chidwick was pipped with an ace queen, showered Dwan. Here he is dominated and in great shape. 98% on the flop, and now let's call it 100 as Punsri extends a hand to the rest of the table as he will not be claiming his second ever Triton title. Main event winner here last time we visited North Cyprus. Yeah, he's been putting up some pretty big results. Good to see Punat Punsri getting in there. You know, someone who loves the game. Plays, doesn't play professionally, but clearly got the talent. <laughs> Good on him. Got another main event for him to capture later this week. I, I said spades. Oh, spades. What is that? His 10th place finish will earn him 55,000, 66,200 rather. It was Kiat Lee finishing in 10th for 55,200. So, well, forgive me. Something is afoot here in the app. Fairly certain that Kiat Lee finished in 11th for 55-2. That would leave 10th for Punsri, which I believe is 66-2. Now Chidwick given yet another ace. Ace four suited. Min raise open. Six point four. Strangle hood. Strangle hold right now. With this situation. I like what you did there. Strangle hood. Maybe that's his <laughs> new nickname. <laughs> Strangle hood. Back over to the other feature now. I think I have worse. <laughs> More or less. Oh. 4.4. 4. <laughs> Man, just Stevie and Jason Kuhn just keep building chips. Bradley, pocket nines. Lays it down. That is a huge <laughs> lay down to open raise. Oh. Surprised to see it? I was until I saw Booty and Snack. Let's He's forced all in in the big blind. We got pay jumps. You <laughs> know how they get big at those final tables. <laughs> so. Keeping a watchful eye on that were the two nines as Martirosian and Kuhn will indulge Bull against King Queen. Jack 10. In the lead here on the Jack A4 board. Active side pot. Currently dry. Now all of a sudden Kuhn after the check back picks up a gutter on the turn. You tend to see players just check it down though. Four fifty. But it looks like Archer wants to charge those hands. Because there is a lot of little gutties out there. <coughs> Jason Kuhn can't be happy to see that. But, you know, they're playing for the main pot here. Archer should, has to have some showdown value in order to bet this right now. Because he still has to, you know, beat out bashless slobs and big blind. So Show bluff. Showdown? It's not bluff. <coughs> yeah, dude.
Okay. So, no king or queen, and there we go, Ali. Okay. Bold again. Out of there in ninth as Marta Rosian's jacks hold. Kuhn out of the way. And with the departure of Vyacheslav, unlike as we suspected, where we would combine the final table at nine, we played five and four. And it will be time for a final table redraw. But first, picking up the action here between Sean Winter and Edward Barsegian. You can see that Winter opened the cutoff, got flat from the small blind. Small blind flats can be, you know, they actually are very heavy to be these broad ways that aren't good enough to get it in. So it's understandable that Sean Winter is firing a continuation bet here. Those like medium pocket pairs tend to kind of put the pressure on you pre-flop. I think it's pretty good awareness given the situation. 975 in the middle. Ace eight. Barrels through and the small blind of Barsegian will put it in the bin as they're up on their feet and it is time to combine here in event two, the seven max 20K. As Buldigan's ninth place finish will earn him 66,200. Officially, Punsri in 10th, 55,200 for him. And you get a look there at the counts, at the four handed feature. Chidwick, boss by a wide margin, 62 bigs. Overall chip leader. Martirosian second in chips overall. Barsegian slipping to fifth with 2.9 million as we welcome you back to the break desk here. Not going to a break, just going to hang tight while we rearrange the final table. Shouldn't take long, but uh, as we do that, Randy, take a peek, if you will, at the distribution of chips. Chidwick up top, Bradley, the newcomer, 1.5 million, 15 bigs in front of him. At the bottom, average stack, 3.5 million. Who do you like? We've got a star-studded top four right here, right? Like the biggest names out there, Chidwick, Martirosian, Jason Kuhn, Adrian Mateos. Like, you know, you really can't go wrong with any of them out there. Uh, personally, I like Steven Chidwick just because of how well he's been performing on the player. Yes, he's the chip leader. Maybe it's not fair to pick him. Um, but, you know, I would not count any of those guys on top four out. Of course, the bottom four worthy of being here, but they just don't have as many chips as those star-studded players. Note that out of the eight... It is 8th, 7th, and 5th that are going to be sitting on first-time Triton resumes. And toward the bottom half of the board there. Some storylines in terms of the Ivan Liao Player of the Year award. As you touched on there, Randy, Stephen Chidwick at the top with $200,000 going to be going to the winner of that award. And this is the last stop in which you're going to be able to pick up points toward that. Jason Kuhn... Kind of calling his shot, saying he's going to pick up a couple of titles and then another FT, and then he's going to take that 200K away from Stevie. Obviously, a golden opportunity here to make sure that he keeps pace and doesn't allow Stevie to create some added distance between the two of them, though. You think that's going to impact how they operate here at this final table at all? You know, it's, it's possible for sure. Um, for now... You know, this is still a big prize up there, and they're going to play whatever they feel is the best. Maybe at the very end you may see Jason or Chidwick kind of press a certain stop um, just a little bit more to try to cement that chance of taking down the title. But I don't think their play will change too much, as especially with Chidwick, because he already has quite a large lead. There's no reason to kind of make some unnecessary adjustment. Regardless, I know Jason is hungry. He's told me he's going to win two titles this trip. That is extremely hard, uh, given we are doing 15 events here. But he said he's going to do it. Event number two. Winning one title is he's extremely got a, hard, a Andy. I mean, let's be honest. $85,500 locked up by the field right now. Pay jump, a little over 30000 from 8th to 7th, beginning to be a little bit more significant. Some of the ICM may creep into some of the decision-making for the smaller stacks, depending on how things sh shape up. 663000 going to go to the eventual champ. That is how the distribution took place in this prize pool of $2.76 million as you too can feast your eyes on all that we are taking a look at on your screen right now, courtesy of the Triton Poker Plus app. You might have noticed that there are avatars being populated there 
into the final table. That is courtesy of the random seat draw that is going to shake things up. Let's see. Chidwick going to be in the one hole. You're not going to want to be on his right where Bradley finds himself with the short stack. There is Jason Kuhn, currently third in chip, slipping into the four hole. And we've got our order set. Tahir Khani to the left of Barsegian, just about 30 seconds away from sending it back down to the action. Randy, of course, event three, the mystery bounty, taking place over our shoulder, depending on how deep we have to go into the evening to crown a champion in this event. May have a little bit of time to bring you some oh, day you one know action from that one as well. Well, you know, that's my favorite <laughs> event, and uh, I don't need to tell you why. But uh, let us get back down to the arena where the final table is set in event number two. Can the Player of the Year Award. Ivan Leo, Player of the Year Award frontrunner Stephen Chidwick put some big distance between those looking to nip on his heels and snatch that 200K overlay away from him. Time will tell. As you take a look at the stacks and the payouts. Brought to you by Bookmaker. You know, when we looked at that little seat draw that was populating earlier, I personally really like Jason Kuhn's seat. He's got the... the position on Martiros and Chidwick, the big snacks, so they won't be able to mess with him too much. I think he's, he's in a, a nice spot here. Chidwick does have chip advantage, but out of position to those, you know, big players out there. Let's go. Queen Jack. Two and a quarter open from the cutoff. 10-7 suited for Tahar Khani. Got a very playable King-10 in the big line, but 10-7, thinking about getting involved, actually. Wow. What he's got is a very fly Cartier Juste en Clou bracelet. Okay. By the way, far be it for me to gloss over that one. I believe Philip Pline responsible for the T-shirt. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like Philip Pline. Didn't want to make some assumptions there. Not a cheap ensemble. <laughs> no, it's I'll tell you that. That's not a cheap T-shirt at all. He might have to finish top five just to fuel his fashion habits. I'm going to take it three ways. Mateos accepts the invitation from the big after the, fl uh, the flat from Kanan. 5-5 five, five, ace, two clubs. Nobody hits this flop. Mateos is king high, is best. Good spot for Jason on a very dry board. You know, when Tahir Khani flats the small blind with 20 big blinds, the chance of him having ace-x is really low. So while he is, Jason is up against two opponents, he doesn't really have to worry about that. He can still fire this continuation bet. Expect a lot of laydowns. Right, like big aces, re-jam on your pre-flop. Little pocket pairs, they'll, they'll jam on your pre-flop probably if that's the size. So, so often, some a lot of hands are just going to check fold unless they're holding two clubs. The skepticism on the face <laughs> of Adrian Mateos, man. The guy is such a tough customer. The 10-7 into the bin quickly. But, you know, just... And by the way, even if Mateos knew he was always putting this King-10 into the muck, I, for one, appreciate just a few seconds. Give your man a look. Let him know that you're not the one that's just going to buckle, crumble, be an easy day out, you know? I agree, actually. You know, some players, they just auto-fold as as fast as possible, but that just kind of sending that message that I play the cards. You know, you need to play the player, make some nuanced adjustments that are going to hopefully push you to the top. We know Mateos is capable of some extremely sick plays where he just puts a read on you and makes a play. That he is. And we've seen some of these players here at this final table Make some plays. Bradley, of course, the one that comes to mind. As we touched on, that gangster exchange between he and Punat Punsri. Two hundred K to skate, says Chidwick. Black eights for Barsagian in the cutoff. And Interesting hand actually in this spot. Well you see two eights, you might think mandatory call, but I wouldn't be surprised if this hand can consider even putting the muck given that 
29 blinds, you're not closing the action. We know there's short stacks, big pay jumps out there. You'll see a lot of people call here, but it's definitely not unreasonable to lay this hand out. It seems weak, but, you know, if you don't flop a set, what are you going to do post-flop? Let's see. Is he reaching for more chips, though? Three bet. That's right. He sure is. Comes into this one fifth in chips, so three shorter stacks than his in the field. And obviously, when those realities exist, coupled with pay jumps, you do want to tread lightly, especially against a chip leader. Mm -hmm. But conversely, we expect a high frequency of opens from Chidwick, which means it's not always going to be the goods. And on this occasion, sure enough, it's the kind of kit that can find the muck in the face of a three bet. Fortunately enough for Barsegian, whose eights were obviously vulnerable. And of the choices between 3-bet, fold, and call, I do prefer the raise rather than calling, whereas the calling kind of just gets you in so much more trouble and kind of bleed down a bit. So nicely done. I like that he's making the stance against the chip leader. Some people just let the chip leaders get away with too much. Or start getting a little bit too passive, inviting someone else to maybe squeeze behind after mm -hmm. you flat call. But this guy is so sound. I mean, I've had a chance to call a lot of his action while working the merit streams here. And it's a merit reg, right? Mistake-free is really a fair way to describe nice. the way that he operates. Randy just snug as a bug. Yeah, I love learning about these players out here. Two eights for winter. 24 blinds. No, sorry, not 24 blinds. Blinds are up. 51-25. Yeah. Excuse me. As the snowmen show up in red form on this occasion. And as the openers. Of course, raising early position with this stack size is perceived to be pretty strong, so players shouldn't play back at you too much, but unless they've got two queens. Good timing. Slide him in. Yep. Jamming the 1.7 here. Winter's got him covered. See if anything brews behind. It does not. One queen into the bin. Now we're going to get a chance to observe the many faces of Sean Winter here. That's awesome already. Yeah, this, uh, you know, it's not a big jam, but the problem is these tournament chips are just worth so much. You raise early position. Tahir Khani really shouldn't be going at you without the goods. You call and you're wrong. Well, your stack is obliterated, right? You'd be down to like five, six hundred k. Big blind coming. So you're pretty much kind of making your stance now if you choose to commit the two eights. Wow, makes the call. He's in trouble. Notice it was just kind of one of those spur of the moment. Slam the stack out there. Hope that you're racing against two overs, probably. As a best case scenario. Jason Kuhn up on his feet. Did he mutter something to Sean there? Yeah. I feel like we're missing a, a Sean Winter mic. But here we go. Flop. Jack 10-5. And it's all clubs, which means Tahir Khani <laughs> can remove the eight of clubs from the equation in terms of outs for Sean Winter. Wearing a smile with good reason as he is poised for a double. But suddenly the seven on the turn invites nines to the affair. For Sean Winter, 3.6 million chip pot, and it's top set on the end as a clean run out for the Turk. It's going to vault him up How much did you say? from seventh to fourth here at this final table. Yeah, pretty big call there, down to 700. Yeah, that's going to be shortest of stacks by a wide margin for Sean Winter. <laughs> Should change dynamics for the rest of the players, not at the top. They see that Sean Winter is sitting on six big blinds, big blind incoming. I'd imagine the next few hands, everyone from seventh to, like, say, fifth and fourth, should be pretty snug.
doesn't matter. On the back end of that carnage, Winter finds himself with 725k. Jack Nine suited under the gun. Interesting spot here, actually. Does he make a stance now or wait for the big blind? He's out. with the suited king in the hijack. Suited kings have been a bit of a theme of late. Been my observation. Seems like the solvers may have an affinity for them as yeah. opening candidates, let alone three betters from time to time. Oh, for sure. Especially king six suited. Kind of the very popular one. That's the one. one, yeah. That is the, the new ace five. Mm. Here we go. Big stack, big stack. But like I said earlier, when you see that winter is so short, you need to get just stay out of the way. Um, King for a suit, it makes sense, even though it might have been open there in the hijack. Start for limp. BVB. Martirosian third in chips. Deep enough to pose problems to Chidwick if they were to clash in a meaningful way. As such, the little suited connector decides to limp in top pair for Martirosian on the queen high two heart board. Yeah, great spot for him as the chip leader usually fires some chips at some point, trying to take away, use that chip advantage. Martyr looking to pick up a few chips. And they're so deep that it's almost impossible to get like your whole stack at risk. I don't want to say almost impossible, but you know, unlikely. Hundred and twenty five K is Chipwick just testing the waters here. Yeah, and I really just don't expect Art to do do anything but keep it small. Not just a function of the particular holdings, but also the implications with so many shorter stacks out there. Of course. And it's sure you let these scary cards just drop off like the king to overcard, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be laying it down. You're gonna expect Chidwick to kinda of press on it sometimes, so you'll probably still call that. Does pick up the bad end of a gutter on the turn. As Chidwick draws dead. Wraps the table. Could see some checkbacks here from Martirosi and just keep it clean. Of course. I um, most certainly don't want to bloat the pot. You could be up against a king axe. Some better queens, of course. No kicker. Yep. There is that check back, and now the backdoor diamonds arrive. Yeah, good stuff for Arthur here. He's contained the pot. Chidwick thinking about if he can maybe make a stance and try to bully some 10x type hands which would be third pair in this case with this run out. He is going to reach for chips. It's a very small bet, targeting yeah. the 4x as well. Gets snap called and then <laughs> rolls up the 7 high. As certainly that's protocol. Good stuff. Wonder if there's a little bit bigger number that the queen high, or queen 9 rather, starts to feel uncomfortable with full pot plus. Yeah, pretty much full pot plus. But even then, I don't necessarily think that it's an auto fold. I can see Archer making a call. With that big stack is you've contained the pot where you really you really just can't get put to the test, right? You've got too many blinds in the limp spot, so good stuff. Important things you'll notice is these a little bit more checking too, especially at final tables. Whenever you can kind of avoid getting your stack at risk, when there's very small sh stacks out there, you're going to usually tend to take that line a bit more. When we got a winter short stack in the big blind. How does that affect people's decision making? You well, expect him to be defending 
wider? I do expect him to defend reasonably wide still as he'd be able to realize all his equity pretty well with that five big blind and lower. But still not the garbage as he can still kind of take the small blind and all the free hands after. King Jack for now. Chip distribution wise, it's quite good that uh, Archer is in the middle sandwich as Chidwick can't just jam all in, forcing Winter to commit. He can put in a raise. Winter can maybe call, depending on his holdings. I don't want to go home. <laughs> did you hear that? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> well, Sean might not want to go home, but Chidwick doesn't want to limp. Is this King be. Jack suited? Opens to 325. Ace 9 off suit for Winter. Feels like a candidate. Yeah, he's not looking to fold, of course. Well, you know, we've seen some kind of like pros kind of like leave some chips behind to try to take a post flop. Sometimes he gets checked down through. Let's see. I'm in raise. Yeah. And it's, it's actually very technical, this min raise, to be honest, because it doesn't put them all in. Leaves that 75k. Sometimes it check through, he gets another life. And, and I know it seems weird, but... Uh, it really does. I I didn't expect that he would simply min re-raise 3-bet in an effort. It, it's a tough game out there. They found all these little edges they can make. Right. But, of course, Chidwick says, let's play for all of it, sir. And he's doing so with 46% equity, which... It's a large amount. Sean showing off some pessimism, but then being given a nine high board. Top pair, still looking to fade a king or a jack. Oh, wow. Your deck reads are too strong. How many just the exact river? Another king or jack. Yeah. Jack Burger on the turn, Chidwick. <laughs> hits and then Sean calls for a king or a jack on did. the end. Deck reads as Kuhn pointing out very strong from South Florida's finest. As Sean showered there despite having the worst, the best of it rather. Eighth place finish collects $85,500 and leaves. Seven players behind. It'll be a less animated affair in his absence without question, but perhaps an easier road to victory with those talents leaving the building. Yeah, GG Sean Winter, you know. It's oh, yeah. great to see him play. Didn't, uh, haven't got to watch him play too much, but I'm a fan of his antics and his deck reading skills, apparently. Yeah, man, that was... Painful. What's it like to be able to see the future when it's not bright? <laughs> he knows every time, right? It's like, oh, this is not going to end well for me. The profit, though, in this tournament. 116K locked up by the remainder of the field. Almost a 40K bump from 7th to 6th. There we go. American Airlines. Just a casual pair of aces pre here for Barsagan as if he needs that much kit to go to work. Sigh. Good old blinds and antes. Oh, yeah, he was ready for someone to get after him there. He's all business, Randy Barsegian. Yeah. Just, you know, quietly cobbling away. And far from cobbling, it is precision engineering that the Folks over at Jacob & Co., the official timekeepers of the Triton Poker Series, are up to. Feast your eyes on the screen and find incredible timepieces if you're into poker and gambling-themed gear. They are the perfect brand to check out, embedding playful spirit into their functions, including a functioning roulette wheel 
inside the Astronomia Casino piece. Of course, we'll be awarding the special collaboration timepieces to our Nolan and Holdeman Short Deck Main Event winners. Henrik Eklund sporting his. Didn't see Stephen Chidwick sporting his. He was planning on winning another one and just wearing that new one, I suppose. That'd be awesome if he just wore like two, three, two, two four watches. <laughs> Same hand or opposite? It's one on each. I think you go one on each, then when you pick up the third. Chain. Choker. Yeah. <laughs> Choker. <laughs> Add some links. Extended strap. All right, let's get back to the action. Ace, deuce, ace, eight. Big stacks. Blind versus blind. You know, it's they're not great aces. Definitely hands you can just take free flops with. But let's see how Barsagian approaches. No, he's going to go for a raise. Different, different approach. Ace, deuce. What to do? 3x. Ace X does fare to be best often in this situation, as we know, we've seen it. The big blind's just raising these limps of some 2X type holdings, just garbage, polarized. Here's the call. Shooting a glance over is Kuhn, who flops a wheel draw here on the Queen High Rainbow texture. Yeah, Ace Deuce with more playability here, but with both players having Ace High, unlikely they will need to turn his hand into a bluff. We'll see if a C-Bet comes in, though. Ace 8. Maintaining control, hoping to take it down. Two twenty-five. A little follow-through. As Barsegian... Would love to take it down here. Not sure he's going to be able to. And no. See what Kuhn wants to do. He's got him covered. You know, I think check calls the standard, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit of check raising here. To, there we go. He's got the chip advantage. Mm -hmm. Apply pressure. Yeah, Barsegian fourth, Kuhn third, and with three shorter stacks than his own out there, and those big pay jumps lurking, Barsegian's not going to want to play. A gratuitously big pot. Yeah, really nice play from Jason. All oh, time card in. Barsegian is suspicious. This would be a heroic call, although correct. He must be thinking that Jason won't be raising Queen X that much on the flop. You well, know, he kind of kinda needs to be thinking about what happens on the turn if he decides I know. to make this call. And is it the kind of texture he expects that Kuhn is going to be checking a large frequency on the turn with? Two and time if he cards isn't in. unimproved with no added equity, where does the ace-8 go from here? Exactly, and that's why you like you tend to see players continue when they got at least like some backdoor flush draws, some playability on certain card drops, but... Um, kudos to him for even thinking about this because he's got the best hand. Feels that Jason Kuhn's range is fairly narrow. No flush draw on flop. Set of four, set of fives, of course, makes sense for Jason Kuhn. Five, four. Even then, those hands might not even check-raise the flaw. I tend to agree with you. I, I feel as though they would be so content to just check-call and hope that Barsegian would go multi-barrel. And Edward better serve to be torching off time extensions than added chips against the likes of Jason Kuhn, despite the fact that he did have the best hand. I think we see Jason barrel that turn, Randy, don't you? Possibly. Um, one of the main things is how many time banks someone uses before making the call might be perceived as a weaker holding than top pair. So maybe he does come in with a turn bet a little bit more often than normal. But those time extensions do get leveraged in order to look like they're weak of by course. good hands on a fairly regular basis. So there's some balance. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. Um, we, we know Jason's capable of it and could have been a very fun turn if he had happened to make that call. 
Well, instead, Kuhn moves into second in chips as Barsegian slips to sixth of seven. Jason already showing signs of playing for the win with that play. Yeah, you're right. So fearless and so confident. Just puts the time in to be really comfortable with all of his decisions and just almost the full range of situations that he might find himself in at any given stage of a tournament. Bubble, end game, FT. Yeah, quite possibly the perfect poker player out there. Ace-9 suited. We haven't heard much from the Spaniard, have we? Well, we do see the min raise up front. Chidwick deliberating, pipped with the offsuit ace-8. Feeling naughty? He, he's looking at those chips, isn't he? Let's bump it up. Looks like a few blacks coupled with some whites. And that will be a three bet to six and a quarter. King Queen offsuit finds the bin. Hands not over yet. Could be. Fold is probably standard given the chip distribution right now, but I can see Mateo's making a call here and also putting a four bet. We'll fold. Nice work there from Stevie. Good stuff. Easier to make that play when you're doing it against somebody that you've got covered, of course, but <coughs> plenty of respect. Going to be shown to Mateos with an under-the-gun raise there. Yeah, sure. Of course. Like, if it's about making those plays. Sure, you got the chip play, but you need to, to take advantage. Understand your opponent. He's sitting on that middling stack. They can't really continue unless they don't really care about ICM, and we know that all the top pros study that stuff extremely at extreme rate, right? So, good stuff, Ch Chidwick. Martirosian, queen nine, five million in chips. He's getting active. Once he sees Chidwick fold, he's like, my time to activate. Wanna make sure your path is clear. See a little, a little tank here. King yeah, the Jack six suited. seven had already found the muck, Randy, and Parsegian trying to figure out what to do from the button here comes with the call. And yeah, my first time watching him in a, uh, in a Triton series, and I've been impressed so far with his decisions. King Jack suited going to come along. You can tell he's no slouch as he's willing to take it post flop. And you know that ace nine, that ace eight thought was a quite interesting one. Inside straight draw. Monotone ace high board where Martirosian can certainly do some representing. But there are ace X's contained in Barsegian's flatting range from the button here as it stands. Yes. Um, with more than 20 blinds, definitely going to have some flatting, like suited aces, like uh, ace 10, ace jack would make sense. Small bet here. Tough, though, without a heart. Follow through barrel, earning Artur the pot. Just queen high. It's a tough FT. <laughs> you think, Ollie? Right? I mean, it's just <laughs> as I'm staring at the chip counts right now on the Triton Poker Plus app, I'm realizing that it's just. Top three is like the toughest player, MTD players of like all time, mm -hmm. right? Chidwick, Martiros, and Jason Kuhn. And you look at some short stacks, there's Adrian Mateos in there, you know, like Total he's no slouch. Insanity. And we got some people just slinging cards in, right? Ian Bradley with that ace four bluff, you know, Barsagan's been playing really well. Mm -hmm. Anyone's game, but tough road to the championship here. Well, you name a Triton event that featured something other than the tough road. True, true. To a championship. Not going to find one. Yes. Artur finds king nine suited. Goes back to work. Now Mateo, small blind, ace 10. 
very tricky spot actually. He's sitting on uh, just above 20 blinds. Early position open, right? Plus one. Big stack. Bradley's short. Some kind of mixed strategy likely to happen. Ace tenfold. Understandable. Final table is one of those places where if it's close, just go to low variance route and just fold it. Adrian tends to agree with a couple of shorter stacks than his own. Still out there. Pay jumps. I see him not lost on the Spaniard. Martirosian been able to cobble. Narrow the gap between he and Chidwick. The only larger stack than his own at present. Here at this final table of event number two, the 20k7 max with the 30K mystery bounty taking place elsewhere in the room. Presumably going to be the destination for all those who fail to take the title here. Mm -hmm. Again, Arter opening. Legitimate kit, but starts to look speedier and speedier. The more opens you string together, yeah, and that tends to put alarm bells for other players where, hmm, maybe we'll find an opportunity to put in a 3-bet bluff on him for now. Looks like some garbage. King-9 in the big blind. Very playable. Big stack. No threat to, your st to you. Might we see a flop here? Only Stevie knows. I'm guessing yes. But no. no, big laydown. That is a big, big laydown. King nine. I'm surprised. But uh, it's the second biggest note. stack, and it's not that much shallower than yours. And you know, Stevie would rather. I'm not one to question Stevie Chitwick, but you know, it's cool to see us like uh, these big players making some adjustments you don't expect, and definitely some learning things things to take note of. So it must be something to do, like you said, with that second place stack, right? In theory, March Rosen probably should be opening tighter given who's in the big blind, right? The guy sure. who got you covered. Yeah, it's very interesting to note. Bradley's been looking for a spot. Dealer button. Queen Jack. Ten blinds. Go time. Almost. Effectively. One million into the middle. Leaves himself 175k back. Just in case. It goes three bet jam. And both blinds have got playable hands here. Chitwick Gets out of the way, leaves it to Martirosian's uh, fives. 1 .2, 1 point, 1 .175. Which ask for a count. And ask for the rest of it as well. Off to the races we go. Certainly could have been worse spots for Ian Bradley to find himself in here. But two overs will have basically a coin flip mm -hmm. against these two fives in a two and a half million chip pot. Queen, 10, 4. Top pair for Bradley as he leaps out in front. Just needs to fade a black 5. Martirosian slips the prepay out there. Deuce is clean on the turn. And the river. Oh! Nailed it. Where do they come from? Dirty. Yeah, Coon would agree. Bradley issues the GGs, and Martirosian helps himself to bangers and mash. The remainder of the Brits chips hauled in as Ian Bradley delivered so much excitement here at his first Triton Super High Roller Series. And we're certainly going to look forward to seeing more of him as this festival rolls on.
In the meantime, he will collect his 115,900 and deliver a pay jump of nearly 40,000 to the remainder of the field with another 43, the gap between sixth and fifth. Two black kings for Chidwick. Uh, that's a real holding. A little bigger opening size, mainly because of the big stacks he's playing against. He's out. I think those bigger sizes also kind of help to inform us in terms of opposition range. You're not going to retain quite as much yeah. as the min raise open. Super modest, the increase on that occasion. But when you get into like the 375, 400 stuff, which you typically don't see except for small blind versus big blind. Mm -hmm. That's where it counts. Of our remaining six, we have Barsegian and Taharkani as first timers. A third of the remaining field. Mateo's far from a first timer. Seventy-five, one fifty blinds. Min race. Take it down, sir. You think that smiley face is like dynamic? <laughs> where if he takes a beat, it just kind of like goes to a flat smile. And then if somebody does him dirty, it just goes to a frown, uh, grimace, that steam nice. start. That would be amazing. <laughs> but, I mean, I've always seen Mateos with this look on his face. It's just so, it's just business, right? Straight face smiley. Let's go ace jack. Raise again. I think there's real value into having that kind of perpetually intense affect at the table, by the way, because it's kind of like, you know, everybody wants to at least share some moments of levity, you know, where we lighten the mood a little bit. And if you've got a guy that's just not really looking to kind of share in that, you start to get uncomfortable a little bit. Now, maybe not the customers he's got on his hands here who really are unflappable for the most part. Yeah, I would say that probably doesn't apply to these players yeah. here, but I definitely understand where you're coming from. And like, think about, like, a, a rec-heavy World Series MTT, of course. right? We, you know, we call it the Ivy effect, right? Well, just like, right. Uh, he, he, they just do things to you. Anyways, let's get back to this hand. King, queen. We're going upstairs. Indeed we are. Third floor. Seven and a quarter. Drawn up from Coon's button. Do you think maybe we go to the fourth floor here, Ace Jack? You know. 20 blinds? <sighs> He's got it in him. We know that. 100%. Stack depth allows for it. But situationally, Barsegian shorter than Mateos at present. Not by a ton, but enough. And instead of a four bet, Mateos elects to fight clean and puts it into the muck. And I'm completely okay with it. No. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's just one of those, like, do I really want to go there with this man? Let him in position, barrel off at me, not really have a sense of whether or not I'm good when an ace I flop shows up. That would be the product of calling. Or do I really want to four bet and then get stuffed on? Uh, I mean... Exactly. And... The thing is, when you're opening off a 20 big blind stack, when someone three bets you, their calling range, you know, obviously goes up a lot since the price is quite good. So he might be thinking, if I get in with ace jack, definitely in big trouble, right? If I call, I might just bleed down if I absolutely with it. It's very understandable there. Well done, Jason Kuhn, 5.6 million.
Now Chidwick's Jack-10 suited. Pretty kit. Little click. Ten five of clubs in the muck. Yeah. Nine five, barely connected, but it is and suited. I think that date with ten five went on a little bit longer than it needed to. <laughs> perhaps. For Kanan. No black tips, right? Don't mind him. Spade on spade violence here as Mateos defends. And both players flop the flush draw. Advantage Chidwick in more ways than one. Best hand with Jack High. Open ender to boot. Better of the two spade draws. And an eight and a quarter chip pot where Mateos has checked to him. Yeah, bad, bad news for Mateos is clearly he's going to be losing at least a little bit more chips on the flop. Chidwick with that type of hand, too, where he can just put in so much chips in by the, you know, on the turn, whether he hits it or not, and you're just going to have to fold so much. Really just don't really see a way Mateos wins this pot. 9%. Grim. We often see check calls here with nine high flush draw. Six wow, check raise. You know, it's funny. It at saves them in this instance, but go ahead. At this festival, I feel like we've seen quite a bit more of the flush draw check raise out of position, obviously, than yeah. in the past. Now, I don't know if it's some sort of new trend emerging. Sure. Maybe it's just random. But here, Mateos is trying it on for size, and... He is in an awful way with just 9% equity. Let's see what Chidwick wants to do, though, because obviously there is some King X, Queen X that could be in the range for Mateos, but one would expect that those hands would seek to play quite a bit more passively against the chip leader in particular. 100%, especially against the undergun open. King X probably not check-raising, right? Would it have to be two-pair plus, you feel like? I would, I, would feel, I would think so, yeah. King, Queen, and, and King, Six. Set of sixes, of course. Going to make a call. He's a bit like, oh, maybe he's a bit suspicious. Might be thinking he's up against a big hand. I'm, I'm not too sure. Regardless, Mateo's in a really tricky spot now. I'm rooting for a blank on this turn. On that one. Oh, yeah. Ask and received. I'm trying to think if this merit to just pushing all these chips in here with nine high flush draw. I suppose it depends on what what you think Chidwick would do with top pair. Would he maybe just push in the gyps on the flop? Yeah, you've got to be able to identify some one pair hands that you think Chidwick will muck in the face of the almost full pot turn jam. Maybe uh, another bet here. I was going to say that maybe Chidwick, when he j calls a check raise, can easily have like two Broadways, like Jack 10, Ace Jack, sure. Ace 10, call small, some kind of check raise with back door. And note the sizing, by the way, from Mateos does set him up to be able to barrel 1.3 at 2.8 if called. You know, as played right now, Mateos might have found a way to potentially win the pot if it breaks off. Imagine it breaks, he jams, jack high folds, or some pair of fives or nine. Well, obviously, if not a pair of nines, but this has actually come to be quite an interesting hand. Should wake a lot of peace, but unpaired. Correct. I think he's just thinking through what he's going to want to do on the river. Well, Certainly getting laid 6-1 to one right here with the Jack-10 suited. Folding. He's not folding, but is he ever raising, Randy? Th Would that, that just be insane? That's crossing his mind, for sure. Okay. Of course he's got so much equity, and he's wondering, is there merit to jamming? Did, what did he say? I think it's call. No. Oh, no, jam! What a play. Mateos always knew what he was going to do in the face of that decision there. Wow. That was a cool pot. Very, very cool. Tough for Mateo says he's prob his line actually probably lost him the most chips in that sense. But, uh, you know, you make your stance. Big, ch big chip leader, 55 blinds, 30% of the chips in play, six remaining. He is looking in form here. 
Feels bad for Mateos because he's probably thinking, man, I didn't even get to see that river card. Might have hit my flush to take the lead, but mm. it would have been bad news. We've seen Mateos make some deep runs in these Triton events, but haven't been able to convert to one of those top three finishes yet. Fourth being his best. Two and a half million plus in career Triton earnings, courtesy of seven caches. This will be his eighth, and he did cash in the GG Super Millions, 23rd for 45.8. Nice. Good start to the festival for him. Barsegan did not cash the GG Super Millions. Barsegan has been bleeding a little bit, getting involved. Got some paint. Broadway one gapper, opens the pot, and now Kanan with an Ace King suited and 2.9 million. Yeah, timing's just off for him right now. Good for. Tahir Khani, ace king. Let us slide a lot of chips in there. Off of 2.9 million on the button here, fourth in chips out of six players. The play really here is to push most of your chips in there. So kind of a, a committing sizing with the three bet. Actually kind of a induction size a little bit here. With yeah, 750. Flexibility. Chidwick two sixes in the big blind. Yeah, see how he responds. Hmm. I think that's the perfect caption for what we were <laughs> staring at there, but puts it into the muck, as does Barsagian. Little pick up there for Kanan. Been impressive thus far in his first ever Triton event. He's been solid. Local man. I mean, there's two local players here, huh? It's final six. Right. And four star-studded superstars. Yeah, Barsegian, despite playing under the Russian banner, is very much hometown man here. Home casino, at least, if not hometown. Yeah. See if he wants to get involved here. He does. Jack 10. Three and a quarter. Extra sprinkle. As Chitwick's Jack 10 finds the muck, and a Jack Deuce, of course, even less attractive. Tell you what, you're raising the two chip leaders blinds there. <laughs> it's terrifying. Didn't look too scared to me, though. Uh, he's actually been playing very comfortably, confident in his plays. What he's been, Randy, is in the weight room. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't want to mess with him. It's like, all right, you know what? You can have my big blind. Sure, I'm the chip leader, but I don't want to get messed up. Do you think he could bench press both of us at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Could we add Henry? <laughs> bench press the whole booth? Uh, yeah, <laughs> the whole booth. Add in some Lara, too. That'd be wild. We know we can't add in producer James. The, there's no way. That's it's too much. No matter how impressive Kanan is, that's just that's a big ask. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if we're working our way toward the latter part of these two weeks, and the buffet <laughs> is really starting to stick to you. I mean, I walk by the ice cream station every time. It seems to be drained. Oh, well, that's, that's producer James and, yeah. and Laura that are putting the dent in the ice The buffet. Come see us. It's a secret. If you're here and you want to know where it's at. 
Raise and take it is where it's at for Chidwick. Rocking the Neuro Freak Pro patch. No idea what that is, but okay. Google is our friend. Freaky. Stand by. Should I go incognito for this one? <laughs> Hoodie up, please. Chidwick. Mountain of chips, 8.1. Shorty Bell has eight blinds. Spaniard, 1.25 million. Tough lineup. I'm deep in the Google streets right now, Te Randy. Teach Thanks me. for what holding did, it down. What, what did you did you learn anything yet? Uh, You've not. Do you know how to read? I do, but I would have thought I was just going to come upon like a website. <laughs> or the product. What else do you find? Just like a Wikipedia that doesn't look like it, and then a Twitter page. It, don't don't click any links. Sorry, not, did you learn about I'm that? Not, yeah. I'm just going to let Stevie tell us what it is next time we're at breakfast. Cool. King 3 suited on the button. Is that a Louis Vuitton patch, or is it like just sold in because it's a bit crooked. A Louis Vuitton patch, <laughs> Randy? You think the folks at LVMH are giving out poker sponsorships? You got to buy <laughs> your way into that stuff. Okay, okay. Thought I'd ask. It was just a bit crooked. You never know. By design, Randy. Surely someone with those Christian Dior sneakers <laughs> that you've been rocking would know this. Shall we talk about the Solver Streets real quick? Ace-5 yep. suited. Big blind. Varsagian knows the power of that particular combination and flexes his might. Picking off some Arter Bucks in the process. He did it so fast, the graphics couldn't keep up. Nice. Nice. Enzo Vito was the man that was playing so fast yeah, that we was. couldn't keep up the other day. <laughs> Another first-timer. Going to have to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. Walked around to Chidwick. Not interested. A little suit of connector up front for Mateos. Yeah. Kind of a tempter. Can't get tempted when you got eight blinds. Discipline is good. Arter, eight seven. A little. O O L. <laughs> o O L. That's a good one. Acronym. Out of line. Yes. Well, he knows he's got Barsegian in the small. Presumably, Edwards' range is going to be pretty narrow, and Kanan. Also, not really looking to tussle. You're going to see the ranges increase from the big stacks when there's that sub-10 big blind stack out there. Good stuff, Arter. What's it going to take to shake the tree a little bit here and whittle? for Adrian Mateos. That's the man that everybody's got their eye on. Let's see, is Ace-3 potentially a play? It's going to be out. All right, the three big stacks are out. Let them play it out. Button jam from Barsegian. Tahir Khani asking for a count with deuce four off? 
He might have some uh, bias to some trashy hands here and there. Who knows? You know, remember he jammed at King Deuce earlier. Stop so. it. Giving him the benefit of the doubt, okay? Balance the times when he needs time, you know? You know what I just thought? Let's say you're in the small. Mm -hmm. You're looking over at the man in the big. Mm -hmm. You're not asking for the count for yourself. You ask for the count knowing that you're going to muck just to make sure the big blind has all the information it needs, potentially. That could be kind of a sneaky little play there. You feel me on that? Uh, I like where your mind's going. You know, I'm trying to think of these new ways to find some kind of... Slime? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning to your commentary, <laughs> Ali. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I think all the people in the chat are loving it. Don't be so sure. Give me some more slime. Well, we're not on Nickelodeon, Randy, <laughs> Nickelodeon. or I would indulge. The green stuff. St. Double Dare. It's Triton. Yeah, let's keep it classy. A little walk here for Chidwick. Respect being shown. He'll take it. 30% of all tokens sit in front of that man. His Triton resume is an illustrious one. 15.3 million plus in earnings. This will be his 20th cash, and might it be his second title with his first coming all the way back in Madrid a couple of festivals ago. Don't mean to interrupt you, but I don't know if you noticed that needle there. It was Adrian Mateo's 3% of chips in play. 10x for Chidwick. Good graphic. I'm telling you, those guys are quietly <laughs> rubbing it in in the graphics department. Fun one here. King Queen suited in the, the big line as he could technically apply pressure against a cutoff open if he wants to. We'll take a flop. Suited paint. Tahirkani in the cutoff with the A7. Found himself a customer in Marta Rosian who was out of position and. How about that for a flop? Top pair and the heart draw. Snap check with the flow of play. And kind of a dusty combo for Tahir Khani, but It's dry, though. You're going to see that a lot. Get a lot of folds. Not dry for a king, queen of hearts, no. that's for sure. As the C-bet <laughs> of 200,000. I've never seen a better flop for king, queen suited. Call. Just need to dodge that ace. He's a hard style. Jack of clubs as Martirosian has a vice grip on this one. Just flats, checks again. That's played a7, usually a one and done. Check through. Ten on the river card. Let's see if Archer decides to value bet himself or maybe try to check induce. Got the big snack, so he's expected to check off some flush draws that have to fire away here that missed. Could get looked up by some kind of holding. Seems like a small bet incoming. There it is. Look for the crying call. And I, I do like the sizing because you're going to expect King X to bet the turn a lot, so it's more likely you're up against some kind of Ace Jack, Ace 10, hoping they, they find a call. No business here for Ace 7, though. Hasn't relinquished yet. Price oh, I think is it's good. only a matter of time. I would think. Oh, well, how about a matter of time card? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He doesn't have the heart in his oh hand. Oh, my God. No, wow. Pushing chips. This guy's going for it. Repping 
It feels like some ace queen here. Yes, uh, ace queen is a big part of his range. Jack ten, king ten, possible. Wow, is he going to lay it down? Oh my! Tatarkani. Yeah. Three four hearts. You good? <laughs> Rising up there and sending king queen of hearts into the bin without much fanfare. Artur didn't really think it over, not giving that man any credit. He's got the wrong read on him, quite frankly, uh, because he Four. snapped forward thinking, no one's going to bluff this spot. Like, yeah. I haven't played you that much. Come on. You don't got that in you, do you? I think a lot of times our tendency as regs is to make the presumption that the more recreational VIP type players don't have that sort of stuff in their range. Think about it situationally. Mm-hmm. Final table here for a man who's never played a Triton series, doesn't present himself as a professional poker player, and suddenly, as played, he comes bombing away at me on this river. Plays like queen, a pro right there. Super plausible. Yeah. And it, it doesn't even have to be just ace-queen. When you're up against a 350k bet and it's such a big pot, you can easily raise some two pairs like jack-10 that go back in. It's very credible. Even like pocket-10s that you happen to river, it makes sense. See bet, flop, check, turn. Indeed. He, he's good. I, I really am pretty impressed with that play. Yeah, circle that pot right Hold there on. as whoa, whoa, the whoa, one whoa. that made an announcement and circle this one as the one that is the collision of Artur Martirosian and Jason Kuhn. Blind versus blind, queens versus kings. Cooler on our hands here. Let's see how many of these chips are going to find their way into the middle pre-flop, Randy. Um, let me tell you that answer. That answer is five million chips from Jason Kuhn. Not right now. He's going to put him in the re-raise, but there's no way they don't get all the chips in there. Yes, Adrian Mateos has got six big blinds, but you know these two. They're going to kind of attack each other, try to put pressure on when they're short stack out there. Blind versus blind, they can get in with worse than this. Comes to raising chips. Nice. It's absolutely sick how many chips they've got to. Number two and number three currently in the standings. Upstairs. Third floor. Fuse is lit for an explosive altercation. And I tell you, this three bet is not just premium only. Jason Kuhn more than capable of just taking some ace king x type hands. All in, snap, yep. call incoming. Cold deck, cold war, as the American and the Russian square off here. For over 10 million. I think I'm all in. Hmm? I think I'm all in. Yeah, game's all in. Yeah, the only good news from Artorosian in this spot here is that he's got Kuhn covered, but what a deflating development this is. We got a chance, though. Let's see. Ace high, rainbow board. Queen hunting is Martirosian. Board pairing ace on the turn, and now Kuhn just needs to fade a lady to double into the chip lead. He's done it. Marta Rosian, by the way, Randy, not the only person sick right now. Everyone else at this final table looking up at an eight-figure stack for Jason Kuhn. Good for the chip lead, five-time Triton title holder. Poised for number six as it stands. This thing's just got real tough for the rest of the field. I really don't have anything else to say besides disgusting. That's just brutal. Yeah. You play so good and you just get the ultimate setup. No road really to kind of save your chips there for Martirosian. You can't just call it a three bet. Hand is too good. Stack after stack after stack. Push 
toward the middle and then delivered to Jason Kuhn. Look at Edward Barsegi and almost an eye roll there as he looks to his right. This guy. 69 bigs and some distance between himself and Steven Chidwick. As Martirosian joins Adrian Mateos down at the bottom of a six-man leaderboard. As we glimpse upon the chip counts on the back end of that explosive pre-flop cooler between Jason and Artur. Yeah, two bad back-to-back -back spots for Artur Mosian. Two micro stacks. Who's first? Well, it's Tahir Khan. He can wake up with two eights. Sitting on more than 30 blinds. We know he's not shy after making that big play of A7 offsuit. Pocket eights here. Yeah, yes. no, the 3x. Deuces. Find the muck, and yeah, 450. Threes for the newly minted chip leader. Now, Tahar Khani is third in chips, and with three shorter stacks than his own out there, Kuhn does have the opportunity to apply some pressure, but keeps it clean with the muck. It's that 3x, right? And you're like, mm, don't we've got the odds call anymore. And, but him making the 3x might be a some strong hand. Do I really want to push more chips in there just to lose more? Uh, stay out of the way. Nice stuff. martirosian has been beaten up in this orbit here. First it was <laughs> the bluff from Taharkani, and then the kings over the queens. Just a one-two punch. And now to make things worse for his short stack, the blinds have gone up 100, 200,000 now. Half a million in orbit. Silver lining is that he's got position on Mateos, who's going to have to eat the big blind first. So maybe he gets a little pay jump opportunity. We'll see. Tails. Under gun. No, thank you. I think. No gracias. <laughs> or gracias, as it were. <laughs> Is it no gracias? Is that it's how you do it in Well, in no, Spain? but you got to give it the TH, the accent. Gracias. Ah, okay. I should know Spanish, given I've lived a lot of my life in America. That's like someone saying I should know English, <laughs> given I've lived a lot of my life in Mexico. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to just save myself and end this conversation now. <laughs> JK. A6 going to work from the button as threes work their way in front of Barsegian. He just politely mucks it. Yeah, it sucks because actually a reasonable hand to put pressure on, but definitely not the worth the risk with two players with micro stacks, one hitting the big line right now. What a gift-wrapped setup that was for Jason Kuhn. Couldn't have dreamed it up any better. I can tell you he's the guy who knows how to use those chips. Mm -hmm. Shidwick's not happy about it either. We got that little Ivan Lau Player of the Year award race on the back end, too. You wouldn't want Jason Kuhn winning it. He's queen. Under the gun, second in chips. It's a Chidwick hand. It's been very fortunate for him so far, day two. A little north of 2x. You will see bigger raises, a little bit more also against macro stacks. You're trying to dissuade them from seeing a flop. 4-3 suited. Oh, he's got most of his stack in there, right? Big blind ante, big blind out there. 475 back. Right to be a couple of clean cards, too. But it feels like one of those spots where you put one big blind in, and then you commit if, you know, some kind of equity. Yeah, I agree with this. Absolutely sucks when it comes ace, king, queen, though, but... 
So if he flops air, you're saying he'll just check fold? Yes, 100%. Okay. 1.2 million in the middle. 225 back for Adrian. Club in the window was good, and then a three behind it is decent as well, as he has outflopped the ace queen. He's contemplating whether he should push the chips in now. Look at it. They always love to leave a little bit of preserves, don't they? Chidwick like says, just go on and put the rest of it out there. Yeah. And let's see what's what as the pot becomes 1.65 million and holds the fate of Adrian Mateos in its hand. Turn card is clean for Mateos, who needs to avoid an ace or a queen to avoid a sixth place finish. And he's done it. So a double through second place, Stephen Chidwick, which will now leave Arthur Martirosian all alone on the short stack duties. Yeah, um, very healthy, breathable spot for Adrian Mateos. Um, I feel like he hasn't won a single pot at this foul table as of late. Now his turn to kind of wait out his opponent, Arthur Martirosian. Big line real soon. Even worse for Arthur, right? He's like, I lost all my stack. This guy got it in 4-3 suited. No pay jump. Listen, you got to shake it off, Randy. Of Sometimes you're going to be on the right side of that. Sometimes you're going to cooler Jason in that spot and send him out the door. Mm -hmm. On this occasion, not the beneficiary was Arthur. And work to be done here off of five bigs. Tall task and five deuce. Not the one. I was going to say, I expect uh, Jason Kuhn to open here. Very right. much able to take advantage of that five big blend stack of Martirosian in the ICM, as Barsakian's got a couple of sevens. Interesting. Um, I think the two sevens should be going to the muck here a lot because of how short Arthur is, unless he wants to kind of just make a stance against the chip leader, who is supposed to raise a lot. He has a lot of fold equity here, too. Just sucks when you kind of commit and he does wake up with a hand and we're also final six so pay jumps are a little bit bigger than normal right well let's talk about it sixth is worth 154.4 fifth is worth 197.3 so we're talking about 43k roughly and he does have three hands behind him left to act so all of that coming together to place the sevens into the muck yeah and you can see reluctance but professionalism he said it perfectly And for kind of the casual player out there streaming, watching right now, asking them themselves, like, what was that? You've got pocket sevens. Mm -hmm. Take note. Recognize that it isn't always just about the holding and the straight-up equity of it, but rather in tournament situations, what's the right thing to do in this moment? 100% tournaments if you're not making those adjustments you're leaking a lot uh, in tournament play ace rag opening up archer's in the big blind look barsagian having to fold ace 10 now continuing to yeah like Feel the pain of... <laughs> yeah, like, why not just give me garbage? <laughs> so right. I think about this. Jack-5 offsuit for Arthur Martiros, and he's out. That's painful because he just put in two blinds, big blind and big blind ante. Not fun that Jason Kuhn's the man taking it off your hands either. It's Hasn't really he done <laughs> enough? <laughs> yeah. You can feel Arthur's pain here. Well, the number one app for poker players is GTO Wizard, and you can enjoy it entirely free 
for 24 hours. Simply go to gtowizard.com slash Triton and get free access for the next 24 hours. And how about a 10% discount on your first purchase? It's GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Well, I can tell you these guys right now, they're playing pretty darn GTO. And if you want to verify yourself, go there and input some numbers, see if it plays out. It's a bit of Pandora's box, Randy, once you start getting into that <laughs> side of poker. You can't unsee it, True. can't unknow it. Going down the rabbit hole with GTO Wizard. Ace-5 and King-6, they start to look like premiums, you know, once you take a look at that site. Is this the extended remix? I mean, we, <laughs> I've run into a few of these. I'm, I'm jamming. Already. I'm vibing. Feeling good. Okay. I'm going to start some sort of snake oil app. Block a raw wizard. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Snake oil. They say you need multiple income streams, Randy, to build wealth. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that they had to be legitimate ones, though. Just keep me out of this. Hold on. <laughs> Three oh, this, fours. No, this come is on. This is not fair, is it? Pipped again? Got a huge one. This <laughs> it can't <laughs> be, can it? <laughs> this guy fair again? Fair every fucking hit, every hand DVD. I think we're going to chop this one. 8877 seven, queen. Nice guy, Jason. I don't know about that. Just 17% is Martirosian. There we go. All right, we're going to chop. We can chop this one, can't yeah. we? Paired board with a five dangler and a decent amount of the time. 16% to be exact from here forward. These guys will carve it up. Ace on the turn. Now it's 13% of the time. Ace or a five for the chop, a three for the win, and instead a 10 to put the nail in Artur Martirosian's coffin. Jason Kuhn polishing his man off. You got, you just, what can you say to make Artur Martirosian feel any better there? Obviously, he didn't do anything wrong. No. It's not like he needs to beat himself up and go, I made mistakes. Pocket queens, pocket threes. See ya. GG. Well, the Russian courtesy of the sixth place finish, will be adding to his 965,000 in career Triton earnings, his fifth cash. And it's a decent one, Randy, here in event number two, picking up $154,400. As 1973 secured by the remaining five, 245,000 and change awaits fourth place. Nine suited from a tails in the cutoff. You got eight BBs. Five handed now. Blinds come around a lot more often. A little bit of grease left behind, by the way, with the departure of Martirosi and Randy. Obviously, everyone was kind of keeping an eye on that ICM. Mateos with eight bigs inherits the short stack. Would be a big pickup if he can pick up these blinds and antis, but Jason Kuhn is eyeballing that almost jam. Not a good sign. And not good when he's reaching for those chips, is it? No. Just called, though, okay? So it's a little bit back. I'm not sure how much Adrian left back. Three hundo. Kings. Oh, come on. White hot is Jason Kuhn. Could this be a preordained affair? Maybe not, as the 10-8-3 board with a couple of hearts certainly giving Mateos plenty of paths to victory. Gutter and the flush draw with almost 3 million in the middle. That 300K back not being delivered to the middle just yet, as Queen High is really all he's got. And he can expect that there's no combo that Kuhn is really going to put in the muck. So why not wait, Randy, and this make is, something? This is actually really good for Mateos that he gets to 
see the turn in river and he bricked he could save that last 300k jason didn't bet the turn or the flop water river wow and he checks a third time here trying to bait mateos into a barrel and does he think that he can fire 300 and maybe represent some ace high that might be good this is kind of nasty out of jason Yes. In in a respectful way, I say this. Of course. I'm, I'm trying to think. So Mateos must be just thinking, is there a merit to betting? We'll give up. Yeah, and he's going to feel pretty good about that check back as Jason shows him the two kings. And I know you might be wondering why did he leave Mateos that last 300? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm listening, Randy. There's a lot of value for... With, for Jason to leave Mateos in there with one big blind. Exactly. Because of how many more chips he has versus the rest of the field. Of course, if Jason's got shorter, close to second place, it's quite different. But here, Hammerlock. Look at the chip stacks. 13.8 million. Second place has got 6.9. Of course, a big drop off. You can say that again. Courtesy of Merit Poker, we get a look at the stacks you were just alluding to. In the middle of the pack are Chidwick and Tahar Khani as Prince Kuhn and the Poppers, Barsegian and Mateos. Lovely little setup for Kuhn to cobble away and continue to amass even more chips here. And he's set the stage for himself to do that courtesy of retaining Mateos. Exactly. Now obviously, he would have given him a visit to the locker room readily had Adrian decided to slide his last 300 in there with that queen high but yeah it's great news for mateos though right second life he shouldn't be here right now if um you know if someone happens to play it differently so a second suited queen will draw the all in from adrian and barsegian small blind a7 suited this if he's not the customer <laughs> kanan behind him is it's actually um not quite clear what you're supposed to do here of Ace Seven Clubs, given you're shorter than the guy in the big blind. Do you mean in terms of fold, flat, or raise all three yeah, options? I, I think so. It's definitely not something that you visit on a regular basis. You can see that he just calls here because what he goes all in. Big blind wakes up a hand. You actually might bust out before Mateos, who's sitting on just two blinds, uh, depending on how who wins the hand. We're going to take it three ways. Tahir Khani accepts the invitation as the main pot is complete. So a dry side between the blinds and an ace in the window. Nine and a three behind it. So got those backdoor hearts. For Mateos, of course, but... As it stands, Barsagian's kicker does play. He's going to try to bet out. Wants to build this side pot. And when a man is willing to bet into a dry side here, in a situation where you might expect him to want to keep you in there as you guys work together to shower Mateos and enjoy a pay jump, you begin to wonder, what am I up against? But Tahir Khani, undeterred, pops it to 600K, and now the concerns are Barsegians. This is a little bit of a disgusting spot for him, actually. Yeah, really unexpected line for Kanan to be taking. Yeah, uh, so he flat called the big blind. I mean, his kicker is not that good, right? A7. I'll say this, though. Because he has top pair, it's likely to be beating Adrian Mateos' two big blind jam, uh, jam range. So... If he happens to be able to commit here, as long as he beats Mateos, even if he loses to Kanan here, he can s he'll still get that pay jump. So some considerations here, and she a great spot now for him. Yeah, Barsegian is going to jam. Decides the hand is too good. Kanan asking for a count. Don't think that there's a world in which he's not going to be depositing the extra 70, 775. Yeah, there shouldn't be. But, if, you know, Barsegian really shouldn't be bluffing here either. But it is what it is. 
And what it is is a bad spot for Adrian Mateos for the time being as he has just 4% equity with his tournament life at risk. Also at risk is Barsegian here. A lot of chops between them, as you can see, 40%. Might get some big cards. Well, Barsegian rooting against those big cards here. But That's the one. King of Spades will reduce the likelihood that he is going to scoop this one as Mateos draws dead and the board pairs. Why you didn't go Olive uh, that time, King? May I know? Huh? Why you didn't go Olive? I would tell you at the end of the tournament. Sorry? I can tell you at the end of the tournament if you would like. But I'd prefer to not disclose that information right now. It's a, strategy, it's a strategy reason. No friendship? No friendship. No, I have 0% of him. No. Really? 0%. No, no. It's a strategy. No. I got killed, actually, for you said. No. Well, that's, good. that's yeah, one reason for me to not easily do Easily can you eliminate the king with that cold? I don't want to eliminate him. Why would I want to eliminate him? Bravo. Well, an interesting exchange there between Jason Kuhn and Kanan Taharkani, but obviously the moment was Adrian Mateos's his departure in fifth place, adding to his career Triton totals of two and a half million plus, his eighth cash. As he will collect a cool no. one ninety seven. Now, that's very different. There's a huge amount of money in the pot. Okay. The chop chop last time, yes? Okay. Presumably, Jason just getting a look at the Triton Poker Plus app there mm -hmm. on his phone just to figure out exactly how the stacks are shaking out on the heels of the departure of Adrian Mateos as four-handed action continues here with Barsaki in the shorty, Taharkani in third, Chidwick in second, and a big gap up to the chip leader, Jason Kuhn. Barsaki in with two fives on the button, jams and takes it. This spot here is the one that really is most detrimental to Stephen Chidwick, is it not, in terms of having opportunities to pick up more chips, Randy? Yeah. Um, I assume you're talking about having Jason Kuhn to big stack right after him. Yeah, and then also just the way that the stacks are right. distributed. You know, 13 bigs for Barsagian, a big pay jump as everybody's locked up to 245000 298 going to go to third. Yeah, a lot of incentive for him to kind of wait around, and unfortunately he will have to bleed down, especially as the blinds go up. But pay jumps are super important, you know. They're big, final four. What do you, what do you expect, right? So it is set up for Jason Kuhn to win chips, and you heard that little altercation earlier where Jason Kuhn doesn't mind these tiny stacks out there because it gives him so many opportunities to gain more chips. Maybe not an altercation per se, but just... Okay. A little bit of a discussion. Sure. Thought it was handled very well by mm -hmm. Jason. We just respectfully said he didn't want to divulge why it is that he chose to retain Mateos in the spot where he had two kings. Taharkani didn't pass the eyeball test for him, understandably. Of course. If And if, you know, maybe tournament poker is not your primary game. You don't study it all the time. It may look a little sus to you, but there's definitely lots of strategy to it. And we've seen it multiple times in previous Triton events. When I remember Chidwick checking back a full house once, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. I do. It's a very similar situation for and now. It, it'll be a learning moment for Taharkani, by the way, yeah. once he has the opportunity to discuss it with Jason and begin to understand strategically exactly what Kuhn was doing. Of As course. we see Chidwick popping the button. Queen nine suited, Barsegi in the shorty. Eleven bigs, three four suited, unintrusive kit. Into the muck it goes. Yeah, little suited cards. Well, 
Tell you what, Edward's going to nurse this stack. And when it comes time to get the chips into the middle, he's going to do so correctly. Well, the more you maintain your stack, the more fold echo you got when you got the uh, some kind of hand to jam with. Let's just say he calls there. He ca flops a pair, check call one, check full turn. He's down like eight blinds. That doesn't have as much fold equity. Now he's still got 11 blinds. Uh, very different uh, calling ranges for your opponents based on your stack size. Jason Kuhn with an open. Deuce force suited for Kanan. Pitches it. I like your watch. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Now I'll tell you if you'd like. I just don't want to say on the broadcast. Okay. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yep. So Kuhn. Paying Kanan a compliment. Big fan of timepieces and a big fan of the blinds rolling over to him, of course, as well. And as you get a look at the way things Shape up. Players heading to a dinner break here with Barsegi and the Shorty and Kuhn. The mayor of this town. Those counts brought to you by GG Poker as we bring you back to the break desk. Ali Najad alongside Randy Liu just moments away from stepping aside. And the dinner break is going to be tightened up through the magic of television here. When we come back, Henry Kilbane will be taking over for yours truly. And you guys are going to have a little bit of bonus coverage of the mystery bounty event that's going on as you await the return of the last four in event number two, Randy. But uh, interesting and very technical things that we bore witness to there. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, Jason Kuhn, one that knows technical play to the, to the T, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Stephen Chidwick, too. Um, but for now, you know, like, there's been a lot of big plays. I think the main thing to really talk about is that Archer Marcher Rosen just losing his stack, right? Queens versus Kings and then losing the rest, threes versus fours. It's just been a brutal day for him. Absolutely great player. We'll have to settle for sixth place, and we are down to a final four of a big chip lead of Jason Kuhn. We are indeed, and I'm going to leave you and Henry to it as I step aside, as does the broadcast very briefly, though, so don't go anywhere. Continuing coverage of this event two with some bonus coverage of event three coming your way in just a few minutes. It's the best poker the site. Biggest poker site. This is a crazy. No way! Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from preflop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
A warm welcome back to the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino here in Northern Cyprus. Up until now, we've been covering event number two, the 20K7 Max. The players have gone on a dinner break. So for the time being, we're going to commence our coverage of the 30K Mystery Bounty, Randy. Some big stacks and big names in the field. In this 30k buy-in, it's Diddle Lind. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I say the chip straight to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna see some hands here, and then after we finish like, wow, event number two, way tired than I thought it was. <laughs> come back to some coverage of this. <clears throat> yeah, we'll be back on the final table of that 20k where Jason Kuhn is going and for title Bull, number six. Because it could have gone either way today. <laughs> mystery bounty action. I see Phil Nagy got some alcohol there, it seems. He said it was Red Bull, Randy. Oh, you did know? he? I, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. It well, was, pay attention, Randy. It was brown. It's Red Bull. How many drinks are that color besides apple juice? Brown Bull in Vietnam. Something <laughs> we're all too familiar really with. really brown. <laughs> so... For the time being, we'll see 88 entries in this one. Only 10 eliminations so far. Ike Haxton leading the field with 199 big blinds. Very early doors here in this. And once again, to reiterate, we're only jumping into this for a few minutes whilst the players enjoy their dinner break. But rather than just rolling adverts and making you all wait at home, I thought, well, there's some 30k mystery bounty action going on. There's David Yan. Ops to three bet, and it looks like a small three bet, Randy. You know, what's different here is that we're playing a mystery bounty, so there's a lot of value in eliminating players. So I wouldn't be surprised if Nagy just pushes chips in, having his opponent covered here. I don't believe the bounties in Oh, play. they don't come in play. They don't come in play yet. Okay. It's, they wait until the prize pool in terms of entries and late reg is over and done with, and okay. then they crunch the numbers, dish out the bounties, and then okay. that's when you can start collecting. But for now, just Thank some you. straight up poker. No worries, yeah, man. Yeah. That would make sense to why he's taking for a call now. Out flopped, but got a heart. He has the biggest heart in the game, this man. True. Phil Nagy, always involved in the Triton Super High Roller Series tournaments, the cash games. I know you've commentated on Nagy on several occasions in the mix. Some of the nosebleeds. 
He loves it. Check through. As the Ace of Clubs pairs on the turn, maybe a bit more confidence for Jan that he has the best holding now. See, the strongest Ace X that Nagy would hold would likely go in the middle pre. And Jan blocking a hand like Ace Jack, pretty relevant. Small little bet here. Hopefully, hoping to take it down, but also setting the price, given he's got a heart draw. <coughs> Maintaining control. As played right now, David Dan really doesn't have anything else to do but call, I imagine. Oh, he tends to agree with you. Heart needed, and there it is. Three pair. Jack of hearts on the river. SPR less than one. See what Nagy wants to do here. I mean, Yan can still have all the traps. It's all the full houses, quads. Can have kings, tens with the heart. Yan with a hand that may want to bluff at this. You can see he's thinking about it. He's wondering, can he win at showdown as played? He doesn't think so, so he's going to push it in. And effectively jamming 46 of his 47,500 chip stack. Blocking hands like Ace Queen O, Ace Jack O. Unblocking hearts. Nagy. With nothing but a bluff catcher in this three bet pot. Yeah, it's a tough spot because you would expect Ace X to just auto check back this river. Queen X, even. Right, like they would have solid showdown value. He can easily be up against a bigger heart, you know, pocket kings, uh, pocket jacks, pocket tens, right? Not pocket jacks, but you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Um, we have even those are like offsuit Broadway hands, right, with one heart. It does a lot of it, king, queen. He would need to beat something that wants to turn into a bluff. So is his opponent turning queen x into a bluff often enough? It really feels just like Queen Jack, right? It, it King has to Queen be a Queen Jack showdown. that doesn't want to show it down. Because sometimes they take those hands to show down. I wouldn't say Davian will auto-fire as played. There, there we go. There is. The one chip flick in. Nagy gets shown the three pair. And scoops a sizable one. With that, Yan down to half a big blind. Nagy up to 352,000. Good stuff. That's how a big old sigh. Pained by that river decision. Rewarded with some good play. Guys don't make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be any fun. Yeah. It. No, it would be way fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Would it be fun if poker was easy, Randy? <laughs> According to Nagy, yes. I, I think so, too. I don't want to be... You see these plays that the Sorry. pros put on each other? It, they always look they absolutely annoyed about it, right? It's because you said you're tired. <clears throat> I am. It's, it's just like... I'm going to run out of time banks for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> first world problems, Randy. Mm -hmm. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy some off of your neighbor there, although not allowed. Here we go. Pocket nines. Upgrade. I'm on pip. Comes with min, David Yan. <coughs> going to flick it in, understandably so. Going to click the re-enter button, unless he can somehow convert this Jack Deuce into a win. <laughs> Big hand here for Samuel, ace king. Three bets to 26-5. How much do you have? I think I have exactly 100 behind. He's got 100 behind. Do keep in mind that Nagy open under gun is getting three bet from the small blind. These are some pretty strong positions. 
yeah. <laughs> Telling the dealer, yeah, yeah. For you, the clock is <clears throat> Nagi with a spot here yeah, with the nines. Not easy. Bounties yeah. not in play as of yet. There's some weird, yeah, dude, we're side dynamic. pot situation stuff going on. There's some dead money, but forget all that, chat. The main event, event number two, twenty thousand dollar buy-in, seven max. We are down to the final four players. If you're looking to see how that hand played out from the 30k, you can head on over to the Triton Poker Plus app and get the red feature table up for now. All eyes on this battle between Jason Kuhn and Stephen Chidwick. Jason going for his sixth title and looking to close the gap on Stephen Chidwick, who finds himself at the top of the Triton Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard. Jason did say he needs a couple of victories here in Cyprus if he's to narrow that gap between himself and Chidwick. And I believe there's a little bit more than 200,000 on the line for Jason. Paul Pua offered Jason a watch of his choice from Paul's timepiece collection should he win the leaderboard. That is a nice added bonus. And I know, I mean, you know <laughs> that Uncle Paul has quite the collection. So yeah, I think Jason's already decided which piece it's going to be. There's a Patek that he's got his eyes on. But for now, Stephen Chidwick has other plans. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Like, sure, he's got the big chip lead, but he's got some a big crusher at the table. And these other two guys have been making some big plays, uh, mainly naming Tahir Khani. He's making that big play against Artem Arthuros and get him a full top pair post-flop. This is a really sick one. Ace, queen. 550. Edward, the shortest stack in the big blind. He's had to put in 25% of his chips. Big blind, 250k. 1.6 million behind. Shades go on. A suited one paint here. I think it is reasonable for him to, to try and take a flop here. All eyes on him, so no room for waiting right now. Yeah, 100%. Feels like a mandatory defend. Got to try and spin the wheel, connect in some way, whether it be clubs, jack, or a five. Canan with the ace, queen, and 64% of the equity going to the flop. Oh, well, there Battle. you go. Pot size bet. And I do think it's reasonable to find a stop and go here. Yeah, li nice play. You can get better hands to fold. Ace-Queen. I don't think Ace-Queen with the clubs folding, but 100%, Randy. Some Ace-Fives, maybe some Ace-7, Ace-8 type holdings. Of course, and you know, some pocket pairs lower than 10 is possible. There's the call. So Edward with the flush draw. Verified. Edward the fifth, one of the merit regulars. This all-in brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Four million in the middle. Canan looking to hold as the six of diamonds on the turn. Changes nothing. 25% equity for Edward going to the river. Deuce of spades completes the run out as Edward adds another deep run to his already impressive merit poker resume. $245,500. For his fourth place finish and get some GGs in the chat for the Merits regular. Someone that we're hoping to see more of at Triton Super High Roller Series. Going home with a sizable six figure payout. Couldn't convert that 40% on the flop. But has to be thrilled with this deep run here. Nice little 12x on the 20k buy in. And with that, Randy. Everyone now guaranteed $298,000 for their efforts. Jason Kuhn out in front with more than half the chips in play. 60 big blinds for JK. Stephen Chidwick just a pip ahead of Canan with 26 bigs. Canan sat on 25 and all to play for here. 663,000 up top as well as the coveted 
Triton Trophy. And for Stephen Chidwick and Jason Kuhn, some Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard points. So here we go, three-handed play. Two of the Triton OGs and one of our newcomers. Yeah. Tahir Khani plays at the Merit quite a bit too. Pocket deuces for him against the chip leader. Let's see how he approaches this. I definitely think there's merit to pushing chips in there, try to use the forward equity of the pocket pair. Calling is fine as well. We are three-handed. And he's neck to neck with Chidwick, so maybe he doesn't want to risk his stack as often. May find just call. We'll see. Yeah, dead small. I'm going to use a time card into this hand. Calls the play. Jason really leaning into that ICM dynamic as well as just pushing his chip lead around leveraging position he finds himself in and Cannon has flopped a set. Monotone board though does give Jason the nine high club draw. A really good spot for Tahir Khani as he's actually probably not holding that many ace X's given that a lot of those will want to rejam pre-flop. So there's a chance that Jason Kuhn puts in two barrels but for now he will start with check. Yeah, it would be a disaster to get check raised off his equity here. Well, given he's got no backup with this set, he's going to reach for chips. Doesn't want to let some random club get a shot at him. Comes with two-thirds pot. 800 into 1.25 million. Yeah, you'd imagine this nine of clubs usually going into the mock, but let's see if Jason can find some other creative play. Jason was down to six big blinds with 14 left. Ran ace-queen into Punat Puntsri's ace-king, was crippled. Now here, finds himself an overwhelming chip leader with three left. And I mean, you talk about legacy. You talk about maybe some of the conversations behind closed doors. Makita v. Jason in terms of the amount of titles. A win here. Maybe silence that conversation. Kanan hitting him with the good for you, pal. <laughs> Jason said he had a big hand. Come on. He had the nine of clubs. I mean, he was drawing to With a seven kicker. Nuts. Kicker doesn't play. <laughs> good stuff, Jason. Keep it balanced. Little quick eyeball at Chidwick stack, opening ace deuce now on the dealer button. Stevie suited ten in the big. Yeah, barely connected, but enough connection with that flush potential. Currently the shortest stack. Not actually gonna lay it down. Okay, so basically trying to just maintain that stack. Hopefully let Tahir Khani kind of put himself in a situation to dwindle down. Who knows? I guess it's always tough to play out of position against uh, Jason Kuhn with a big stack because Jason Kuhn's got a lot of incentive to leverage that big stack and get you to lay down some, some big hands post-flop. Yeah, I'd expect to see some caginess from Stevie. Yeah, One of the most studied final table players in the world. Going to be really familiar with these ICM situations. And if he thinks that Cannon's going to be playing a little bit too loose, then obviously he gets to just profit off of playing a bit tighter, especially out of position against the chip leader. Interesting spot here, actually, with two tens. Um, I think there's a lot of merit to actually limp jamming this type of hand because Jason Kuhn has got the big stack in well want to push pressure on you. Yeah, you can see this call here. It, it makes a lot of sense. Jason's got like dust. He's just going to apply pressure. Let's see if Jack-6 is 
Maybe leaning towards a checking camp, but definitely considering the raise. Going to put pressure on him. Nicely played for Chidwick, right? Like, got what he expected. High frequency raise when he limps. Yeah, Jason with the three and a half X with Rags. Going to be incredibly balanced in this spot. As is Stevie. Now waiting to pounce with his 23 bigs and pocket tens. Should be looking to pounce all these chips in there. I suppose he's finding, seeing if there's merit to a smaller raise. Tens is still a vulnerable hand though. Let's see. Is it a limp call? This is very interesting to me, Henry. I really love this. And the reason is, is because Jason's three and a half Xing from the big is going to be incre incredibly polar, right? So Jason's going to have top of range and then rags that Chidwick just has absolutely crushed with the tens. You know, two undercards, eight, three, nine, four, those types of holdings. Yeah. So letting Jason kind of get in the mix with he, bottom of range. Yeah, I totally understand where you come from. I'm going to also think that Chidwick might also doesn't think that uh, Paint Little will raise all the time. They'll take free flops, so more often it is those two undercard hands he's up against. For now, though, he's given Jason Kuhn a lot of equity. Right? Yeah, Pair I mean, of sixes, Jason. check, high flush draw. A favorite here on this board, would you believe? Don't expect Chidwick to go anywhere just yet. Nope. Still got a pair of 10s against the... Uh, I mean, for you to limp call here, you've got to think that Jason Coons just got so much garbage too, right? Like like you said, 8th deuce offsuit, these type of hands. Hits it. Chidwick now reduced to just 5% as Jason looks to climb... The leaderboard with an additional 2.7 million in the middle. Also going to look to get some additional value out of Stevie's stack and two tens. Yeah, such a grim card for him. Let's see. So, of course, Jason's going to be trying to extract value from King X. And, you know, Stephen Chidwick's got a lot of hands. That doesn't necessarily mean he's got King X. Could be some heart combos. Jason's setting up a very natural river SPR of around 0.6. might be a little bit peculiar for Chidwick that Jason is still firing away on a six. You might expect King X to check turn at some frequency. P board pairing, you check call. You do have a pair yourself a lot. You probably call off one more, I guess, because you could have some naked heart hands. Hmm. Check call that little bet on the flop that he might be trying to muscle you out with. Yeah, 100%, right? We were talking about bottom of range. Hands like 9-4, 8-3 with a heart, maybe. The maybe thing is, push him around. your tournament chips are so valuable, so is it worth kind of pressing these, you know, little fringe spots? That's the question for Chidwick. If he calls here and is wrong, he'll be down to, what, 3 million chips, potentially. He is going to call in awful shape. Hoping it goes check through. Four hearts. Well, Jason with the second not flush. See, losing to boats, but not many of those. I mean, not the best card for Jason, actually, as a. Uh, he could be up against Queen of Hearts, but also because it kills the action against the King X type hands a lot, right? The ace coming out for a flush. But Chidwick, first to act, is actually thinking about turning his hand to a bluff, I believe. Would be sick. Expect to see Jason snap it off as well. Although, 
Would be a grim spot. Hard for two tens to be the best hand on this river card. Chidwick could have the queen X. Queen of hearts, he could have the jack of hearts himself, but of course Jason holding it, um, impossible. But he's gonna be perceived to be holding these middling hearts. Might go for it, actually. You know who's enjoying this? Canan, just watching on the sidelines as these two play a sizable pot, potential ladder situation for him. 153,000 difference between second and third. And Stevie comes out firing, leaving just 800k behind. 2.5 million into 5.3. So Jason saying never folding in a million years. Didn't really want to knit roll Steve Ears. Chidwick's tens. Hit the mark and with that, Jason Kuhn now holds 20 million of the 27 million chips in play, Randy, and has one hand on his sixth Triton title. What a spot for Jason Kuhn. Looking to distance himself from Mikita Banziakowski, of course. Yeah, Stevie just Wrong timing, Jason Kuhn did happen to have that heart flush. 73% of the chips in play. Well, there we go. Looking good. Remember what he said? I think I'm going to win two titles this trip. I'm starting to believe it. Speaking it into existence. Yeah, but you can't count out these two players. Of course, Chidwick in dire straits, but Tahir Khani been making some moves on 27 blinds. Game's not over. Well, Stevie is going to be in the big blind in the next hand and would have to put in two-thirds of his stack. Does he want to take it with this jack five? It's a bit dusty. All in. And Jason obviously just gets to pile into Canaan. Yeah, don't got it. Quick one. <laughs> he knows it. Smiles and laughs shared between the two. Oh, now God. Stephen. <laughs> In the big. Did Jason jam without even looking? I guess he did, right? Just jammed without even looking. Of course he looked, because what if he had like pocket aces or like pocket kings? I don't think he'd be open jamming. But I think he's meant to open jam, right? Because he's meant to be opening ja open jamming with range, so you have you can't sure but just like min with aces. But I'm saying that doesn't mean you can de you can't deviate on what you think might be potentially a more plus EV situation for yourself. I gotta put a little feel in there sometimes. Anyway, seven deuce out. I guess we're just gonna run it, most likely. No, that hand must be really bad for him to fold. Wow, Stephen Chidwick getting a walk. Tell you who also enjoys that, Jason Kuhn. The longer Chidwick sticks around, the more he gets to chip away yeah. at Tahakani. Two people happy with that fold, I suppose. Currently at 555 likes over on our Triton Poker YouTube channel and almost at 160,000 subscribers. Would love it if you guys could take a couple of seconds out of your day to click that like button, click the subscribe button, help us on our mission to bring high stakes poker to the world free of charge. Payouts brought to you by Poker Stake. 298,000 guaranteed for these final three. For those of you watching over on Twitch, how you doing, chat? Twitch forward slash 
Triton Poker, a thousand away from 80,000 followers over there. And as always, appreciate you all getting involved in the conversation, keeping us company. Would love to get this video up to a thousand likes by the end of the stream today. Randy, the fun doesn't stop today. We still have 13 days of super high rollers, including that highly anticipated $200,000 Luxon Pay event, which is invite only. 10-4 out. Painful for Steven Chidwick. Randy, you got any teases for the, the viewers over on YouTube and Twitch about some potential cash game series coming up? I know you've been uh, working tirelessly, can, as you know. Yeah, I can tell you that I just, uh, before I came over, finished recording a five-part series. A five-part series? A five-part cash game. Hold them? No, no, hold them. There we go. And... Come on, give us the stakes. Go on. little tease. Little 500 you know, 1k? Yeah, basically. There we go. But not 100k buy-in. 200k buy-in minimum. 200k min, 500 1k. That going to be released, I believe, on our YouTube in the upcoming weeks and months. If you haven't already got the notifications switched on. And, and I'll tell you this. I barely had anything to say because they were just chatting away the whole time. It was just good, great, good fun. You guys will see that. Anyway. Hey, so you, got, you, you got paid to not talk. Yeah, it was great. Love that. Here we go. BVB. And you can see here that Tahir Khani is still willing to put defense here. BVB, despite Chidwick stack. Postlop could get pretty interesting for Jason Kuhn. Probably didn't expect to see that many big blind defenses, especially from 8 7 off, so against a large race. But I like that he's putting resistance against the chip leader. Players in the mystery bounty going on a quick this? dinner break. Kanan. He's not scared. Undeterred. Uh, he made <laughs> he made a sick play on Artur Martirosi when you weren't here. Just raising 8-7 high on the river card. Nicely done. Giving himself the opportunity to, you know, close the gap against the chip leader. Plays for him, playing for the win, as you can see. Yeah, okay. Three-handed here in event number two. Jason Kuhn, Kanan Tahakani, and Stephen Chidwick all battling it out. As Stevie is given another walk, still in the hunt. You'll take it. And Randy, of course, three-handed here. Could take a while, but if it does finish sooner rather than later, don't you worry. We don't just end it. We just give you more coverage. Is that what you're telling me? Well, you get to go to bed, mate. You've been a bit jet-lagged. <laughs> we'll send you home. But it'll be the night shift for Ali and myself. A bit of 30K mystery bounty action. 30K bounty. Isn't that just... That's ridiculous, man. Absurd. Ace five. Good spot for Chidwick. Jason Kuhn with just some dusty cards. Yeah, and Jason obviously incentivized to kind of keep Chidwick around for a little bit. Kind of working as an aide 
to the trip leader as it allows him to lean on Kanan. Blind v blind. Although Kanan has resistance against the trip lead. Kanan can. He can. He can defend. And he has. Not a bad one. I think a lot of the chips will go in, not all of it. Leave a little bit just in case. Well, Chidwick has done a fantastic job at surviving. So he was down to 825K after losing that pot against Jason Kuhn. It's been a few orbits. He's still around and finds a seven of diamonds on the button. Two deuces. Gonna make the call here. And we're still 25k back. I'm expecting a check down, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Chidwick would be in the big blind the next time. It is anti first. Yeah, this is one of those technical plays that Jason Kuhn leave, probably gonna leave that last chip back. Regardless, here comes a flop. Important. Let's check through on the King King Jacks. Ten of diamonds giving Chid Chidwick so many outs now. But no dice as it runs out clean and the ace high gets to showdown but comes up short against the deuces of Jason Kuhn and now Stephen Chidwick down to a tenth of an ante. going to be tough to fight back in this one. It's going to need to win, what, five or six hands in a row? One uh, I chip. Gonna, I didn't think I was going to win. Uh, no, he can win only his money, right? Yeah, 25. He can triple up. Sorry? Can, he can triple up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Zero BBs. There we go. Great shape for Stephen Chidwick, though. Good luck, gentlemen. Stevie in good shape here to stay alive. Canon with the suit connectors. Well, how about that for a flop? Ace, three, deuce. Canon flops the nut straight with the steel will redraw Chidwick looking for a four for a chop. Four. <laughs> Cannon wants Chidwick to stick around. Yeah. The deck had other plans as it comes running fives and we lose Stephen Chidwick in third place for $298,000 in event number two, the 20K seven max. One of the best to have ever played the game is Stephen Chidwick. Love to see the sportsmanship there being displayed. The bluff, and maybe one of the most talked about hands with the viewers at home. The tens not going Chidwick's way, and ultimately bowing out in third. And with that, Randy, the stage has been set. That man on your screen's right there. I've got a funny feeling. We'll be seeing plenty more of Mr. Chidwick in the upcoming events here in Northern Cyprus as we welcome you back to the break desk. Randy, an ill-timed bluff and maybe 
some opportunity for the limp jam, but Chidwick just correctly realizing that Jason's three and a half X in range, got to contain a lot of raggy hands and 10's going to be in great shape. Yeah, you know that Steven Chidwick had a game plan there by um, just limp calling two 10's there, like you mentioned earlier um, during the hand, that there's a lot of those raggedy two cards are under the 10, expected to raise, given he's got the big chip lead against that, uh, you know, middling stack, and he made his stance, he made his play, made the check call, and, you know, something clicked on his head in the river when the ace of hearts dropped off that maybe I need to turn these two hands into a bluff. Took that opportunity, but uh, did get called down by jack six for the jack high flush. Well, you don't reach the top of the Ivan Liao player of the year leaderboard if, you know, you don't have a few moves up your sleeves. And every now and then, some of those moves don't work out in your favor, but a lot easier for us here in the booth when we can see the whole cards Obviously, a lot different when you're out there playing the highest stakes in the world. Obviously, Stephen Chidwick, what, fourth in the world on the all-time money list, adding an additional almost 300K score to his already impressive resume. But for now, we'll take our attention back to this heads up, Randy. Jason Kuhn in the hunt for title number six. Kanan Tehekani, the merit regular Triton first-timer with around 25 big blinds and you know, looking to upset some of the Triton OGs by beating Jason Kuhn, who's in the hunt for his sixth title, Canan, his first ever event, finds himself heads up against one of the Triton OGs. Yeah, of course, it's an uphill battle, um, not only for the chip distribution, but just the sheer amount of experience that Jason Kuhn has in the, you know, no limit <laughs> hold'em tournament format. Um, but Tahir Khani has been playing relentless, uh, in this uh, final table, he hasn't been shy of making plays. You know, the notable bluff that I mentioned a few times already against Artur Marturo's in, in a spot where you expect them to mandatory lose, but just made it happen. And, you know, he's been making some defenses in spots where maybe you don't think he should be uh, splashed in chips, like defending and winning that pot against Jason Kuhn BVB. I think he's got a real shot here. And I'll tell you, Jason Kuhn probably has no idea how this guy's played. It's probably the first time he's played with him. He's a Triton newcomer. He's got a shot if he can spin it up just once. Well, listen, with arms like that, I'm not <laughs> surprised to hear that Canon has been pushing people around while I was away, kind of like a bull in a china shop, if you will. Uh, you mentioned that he got Artur to fold the top pair. Heads up, different, of course, than full ring. Nowhere to hide, having to get involved in every pot. And yeah, has a very tough competitor looking to send him home in second. A 214, sorry, 212 thousand dollar heads up match everyone guaranteed four hundred and fifty one thousand two hundred dollars for their efforts as the stage has been set for this heads up battle here as we throw it down to jason kuhn and kanan tehakani as they battle it out for the title and the six hundred and sixty three thousand dollars that comes for first jason coming in with a three and a half to one chip lead but Cannon still plenty deep. 25 big blinds, more than enough to put a dent in Jason's stack. So we see the coveted Triton trophy in the middle of the table. So here we go. Jason Kuhn looking for title number six. Tahakani looking for title number one in his very first Triton event. So sub-20 big blinds to start this hand. 7-6 offsuit. Two overs, inside straight draw. Is a hand worthy of a bet? Let's see if this hand is over just yet yet because he's got two overs queen 10 sometimes the best hand let's see yeah limb to pot no club though unfortunate he's out first blood tahar khani so the merit poker regular Opting to limp button. See if that's the strategy he continues with.
Jason opting to limp as well. Big blind 300k, Cannon on 20 bigs. Makes sense. 20 big blind stacks, you tend to see a lot more limping pre-flop. And if you think you've got more experience with the stack depth, heads up. Definitely want to increase that stack to pot ratio. Ooh, Cannon out flopping JK. Had the best of it pre. Flops middle pair. Jason going to stab that one over. Some backdoors. Some natural turn card barrels as well. That not one of them. Hasn't stopped Jason before though. It really isn't the ideal card to multi-barrel though. It looks like Ty Hercani is going to just lead out himself. Trying to extract some value. Should be a den of it. That's a nice pass over. You guys can cheer for your friend when he wins. It's okay. I won't be offended. You can you can clap when he wins the pot. There we go. Taikani with a bit of a rail. Jason imploring them to celebrate when he scoops in a pot. Is he anti-rooting himself? No, just making them feel more comfortable, <laughs> I guess. I, I get it. Got some limp. Both players connecting in the form of bottom pair on the Queen 10 trait. Looks like Tahir Khani tried to bet less than 300k, but 300k is the min bet. Start of a call. Deuce of Diamonds undercard to the board. The obvious draws on the flop, bricking. Jason may get sticky here. It's tough to make a pair. It's also Not hard to value bet three. just a pair of threes. So check three makes sense on the river. So Tahakani up to eight million now. There we go. Better. <laughs> it's better. See, I'm always alone when I play these heads up, and, and I think, oh, no one's ever cheering for me. But if I had a cheering crowd, it'd be cool. Then clap for both. Yeah, clap for both. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, are we going to get a clap for the next pot that Jason wins? We'll find out soon, TBD. Okay. Tahar Khani's been winning the last few pots in great shape in this spot. And it's a raise now from Jason Kuhn. Yeah, well now, more stack Canon to play at for. 25 bigs. Strategy adjustment on Jason's part. Let's see what Tanakani comes with. Two eights is a type of hand, 25 BBs, that you can push all the chips in Did there, yeah. Can I? Did you say all of it? <laughs> <laughs> can I? <laughs> you can indeed. All in announced, and great start to this heads up match for Tanakani. Came in a three and a half to one dog. Now chipped up to almost nine million. Reduced the gap. Yeah, close to two to one soon. Big smile on his face. Yeah, they've been uh, feeling good getting to his heads up so far. Definitely helps when you've locked up $451,000. In a 20k, no less. Sure. Big heads up match. Ace four clubs. Looks like raising chips, right? It is indeed. It's come with men. One more pot. Jason with bottom of range and... Well. Has Jason won a pot yet? I can't quite, can't quite recall. If he did, it was like one at most. It's been all Tahakani so far. He's reduced the gap. From three and a half to one to two to one now. Still a long old ways to go. 30 big blinds effective. Average stack of around 45 bigs. G 
Jason getting some pretty bad holdings, it seems. 3x. Well, the Turk whiffing on the A6 do sports. See if Jason wants to stab here with the mystery card. You're going to see the button actually bet a lot in these limp pots. The big blind has got a very wide range in heads up, of course, so they just whip so much more often. There was no clap. There say. wasn't. He had it, so implying... No, no Jason fans in the audience. Oh, there's plenty of Jason they're fans. All, they're all playing at uh, event number three. Plenty of Jason fans in the chat. Uh, maybe the biggest Jason fans back home in Vegas, Chunkster and Jason's wife, Bianca Kuhn, expecting baby number two I heard. in just a few weeks' time, if I'm not mistaken. So Jason looking to add not only a title to his resume, but another, you know, family member on the way. A trophy for each. I guess he can already do, already do that. Yeah, give him two <laughs> each. Two for Bianca, two for Chunkster, and two for the baby. That's expected. Shout out to Kuhn family back home, sending their love nice Jason's one. way. Now he just punished their 8-6. Don't know if he caught that. Five of clubs for Jason on the button. Got a limp. Looks like Canaan's reaching for isoing chips with the suited queen. Well, it's like, well, you raised me last part. My turn to raise you when you limp. Coming with the two and a half X. Obviously, Jason going nowhere in position. The price is being laid. 1.8 million in the middle. And how about that for a flop? Canaan with bottom pair. Jason with a gut shot on backdoor clubs with 1.8 million in the middle. Potentially see some fireworks here. Yeah, a lot of connection for both of these hands, actually. Not the strongest, but definitely enough for heads up. It is bloated a little bit due to the raise pre-flop. Tahirkani first to act, and a little bit of a tank here, contemplating how to approach this one. Start for check. That from him since you didn't say five seconds, don't take the time back. Okay, okay Jason, nice guy. So, Canan with a bit of a check does check through, and the seven of spades, Randy, giving Jason the nut straight, but maybe more importantly, giving Canan a queen high flush draw. And chips are certainly going to find their way into the middle here 1.8 million. The SPR around four, so room for Cannon to get away from it. But with that pot size bet, close to pot, with the delayed C bet. Yeah, disaster incoming here now for Jason holding the nut straight. It's got to try to interpret what this big bet means on this card. There's also that backdoor spades. Might he try to. Looks like he's going to make a call here. So his hand obviously clearly under repped here. Well, 4.7 million in the middle and the two pair. GG's Kanan to Hakani. Check, check, flop. Barreled close to pot on the turn with the pair and the flush draw on his rivered two pair. Jason Kuhn with the stone nuts with 4.7 million in the middle and surely going to claim victory on his sixth Triton title here, unless Tehakani can somehow get away from two pair. It's over. It G -G. is indeed. Canan with the river jam, rivering two pair, and Jason Kuhn just gets to click the call button, taking down 
event number two, the 20K 7 Max for his sixth Triton title and the $663,000 that comes with it. GG's to Merit Regular coming second place in his maiden Triton Super High Roller Series event for 451000 Kanan Tahakani just cold deck there at the end after getting off to a pretty good start in that heads-up match. But rivering two pair, jamming for value, and running into the turn. Not straight of Jason Kuhn. So we see some hang hugs and handshakes. Nothing you can do there, pal. Absolutely nothing you can do, heads up. There he is, six-time Triton champion, said on yesterday's stream, he needs to win two trophies here if he's to catch up with Stephen Chidwick on that Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard. One down, one to go with 14 events left for Jason to fire. Title number six and 663,000 as we welcome you back to the break desk. Things were looking good there for Cannon. First five, six hands going his way, but Randy, let's be honest, that run out with what, 21, 22 bigs effective, unavoidable spot there for the Turk. Yeah, it was a pretty big cooler there. He had um, two pairs on a pretty dry board, right? Um, only really lost to five, six mainly in that spot. Um, you know, he played great. He's a merit reg, like you mentioned, and, you know, he was willing to fight for pots, and, you know, easily, he could have run away with it had he had won that hand, you know. Um, he had chances to even win on the turn, given that there was a spades out there. But regardless, it is all Jason Kuhn. I can't believe he actually won one title out of the first two events so far. Said he was going to win two this stop. I mean, probably unlikely. Now very possible. Well, it seemed unlikely before today, but with this victory here in event number two and 14 events still coming, who knows? Jason Kuhn narrowing the gap on the Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard. So Stephen Chidwick going to be looking over his shoulder in the next 14 events. We'll obviously update you guys once the official points have been updated. But for now, got to throw it down, but before we do, we're not going anywhere. Event number three, the 30K Mystery Bounty is up and running. We're going to throw it down to Ali to have a word with our six-time champion. Then after that, we're going to be jumping straight in the mix. Mystery Bounty, event number three. But for now, a word with our six-time Triton champion, Jason Kuhn. Well, this gentleman to my left needs no introduction when we're at a Triton. Already the most decorated player on tour, he has just picked up his sixth title here in the 20K 7 Max event number two in North Cyprus. Jason Kuhn, first and foremost, congratulations. $688,000 for the win, approaching $20 million in earnings, third all time on the Triton Tour. You called your shot coming into this festival. You've told us you're not going to win six, you're going to win seven by the time we draw the curtain on this one. Player of the Year implications, obviously. The hunt for that 200K. Is this an example of the power of intention? I mean, I ran really well, man. But it's nice to put it out there. And I, I feel great this trip. The last couple of Tritons have gone really well for me, but I was in bad health for both of them. I just happened to get sick traveling and had to grind through them all. And in this, uh, this Triton in particular, I'm in the best shape I've been in in multiple years. And I feel great. Um, so... I, I know I'm going to play really well this trip. Listen, physical fitness has always been something that you're a big part of. If I told you we want to know what's the secret sauce, what is it that you attribute your ability to have such consistent results here on the Triton Tour to? Um, I think I've run, obviously run cert very well, but I have a lot of experience, you know. I think one of the biggest things is just I've been doing it for a really, really long time. I've been playing with the same player pool for a very, very long time, so... There's some new faces in a smaller uh, buy-in like this, larger field tournament that, you know, I was kind of left in the dark. But I say that I've played with a lot of my competition for years after years, and, you know, you, you start to download good information on people, and you can make really good decisions sometimes. You know, I personally remember being there at pretty much the infancy of your poker career so many years ago. Now looking at all that you've accomplished, I'm curious as to what it is that keeps you motivated. What is there left to play for? Um, I love it, man. I absolutely love the game. You know, I have an office. It's like three quarters of a mile from my house, and I walk down there most mornings, and I just find myself looking at stuff. And 
you know, I, I don't think that I would be doing that. No one's paying me to do that. You know, I'm just sitting there spending mornings having coffee and nerding out on spots. And I just really, really love poker. And I love the atmosphere here. I don't travel for poker anymore unless it's a Triton, really. So I just, these are all my friends, you know, the staff's my friends, the players are my friends. So it's fun to come compete. And yeah, I, I just, I just love it here. Well, listen, you love poker, and we love having you as such a wonderful ambassador to the Triton Super High Rollers Series. It's time to bring in Luca Vivaldi, our tournament director. This is starting to get old, my friend. A Triton trophy and, of course, the Shambhala Jewels bracelet, both yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Kuhn, a six-time Triton champion. There we have it. Jason Kuhn taking down event number two, the 20K7 Max for his sixth Triton title. Really silencing some of the people, Randy, that were maybe talking about that rivalry between him and Makita now with a two title lead. Final thoughts on that heads up match? I mean, no, I mean, Jason won it. He's been putting in the homework, like you heard him uh, said in the interview, and he deserves it. He played well. Expecting number seven soon. Well, there we go. Sick title going back home to Bianca Chunkster and his expected second child in just a few weeks' time. For now, he still has business to do. 14 events, as do we. Event number three, the 30K Mystery Mountain, one of our favorite events, given the kind of fun... Maybe you don't cash, but you pull out the biggest <laughs> bounty. Kind of like Open in Vietnam, pulling out that 250k bounty. We're going to be diving into that with Dan Smith, Adrian Mateos. We've got Filatov, Watson, Vogelsang at our feature table that we're going to be throwing down to. So without further ado, well, hold your horses. Mateos hitting the shower. So no Mateos as Dan Smith flopped to flush with... Five four of hearts and well, for the app. When you bang your knee, it's like I'm the cutoff. Right? The Adrian Mateos fans out there. <laughs> Adrian Mateos. No more. Seat open, table eleven. Now this one. Blood. Randy. A six max. Blood. Yeah, we're playing a six max tournament and we're playing a bounty tournament. That's just the recipe for players Danny, to just splash some. around. Take it. I don't. I usually have like a lot. Six is still a lot. Ah, oh, there's six here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, perhaps the five high flush need a protection. Okay, it did need protection. It did. We play four. So a quick post-mortem there from Dan Smith. Holler, Cowboy Dan, playing a very comfortable 110 big blinds. We're going to play four-handed for the time being as we wait for a player to be brought over to the main stage. Mike Watson here. Less than 20 blinds is in. In go the eights, four-handed. Look at this. Whoa. Okay, so Vogelsang added, acted out of turn. But because Watson pushed the chips in, he can take back his action. Can you count the bet, please? Well, Dan Smith with a legit decision here. Four-handed, ace-ten suited, a lot of kit. This, of course, a 18 big blind jam from Sir Watts. Yeah, of course, Dan Smith is thinking about call. Call. how potentially that call from, call fold from Vogel say might affect no things. Ace no queen, ace queen. Ace 10, actually. Ooh. He what? didn't even know if there was a small blind at the table. Very loose player. 
<laughs> he tried to take his bed back after I moved all in. That might have given something away. Hello. 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 <laughs> You're in a 30k, you're all in. Still laughing. Jack 7 Trey, so far so good for mm. Sir Watts. Two cards yeah, to come. Ooh. King on the turn does give Dan an additional couple of outs, but the Eight of Hearts on the river. An unnecessary set for Sir Watts, but happy with the result as we <laughs> see the double fist bump. Do you know when we start getting these bounties, Henry? I don't, Randy. No? Okay. Cool. Just not yet. Four. I assume, Chai. as with every live mystery that bounty, bounty that at the end of the late reg, they okay. will look at the total number of entries, the prize pool, they will crunch some numbers, do Excuse the math, me. and... Do I have a... Uh, then we'll decide when the mystery bounties will be coming into play. But for now, late ridge still open. Mystery bounty will begin at the start of level 15. Day two. Start of day two. There we go. Easy. Shout out Ryan DePaulo. I understand. I thought you could buy in until tomorrow. That's why you called a sense to I thought I had the best hand. No respect to open under the gun. No respect for him, <laughs> no respect for you. He's calling at a turn. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been filled with the, uh, the runners. I love that new Triton hoodie, by the way. Need to get me one of those. It's the only color that I don't have. New piece, shout out Janice. Working tirelessly between series to putting out new merch if you haven't already checked out the triton poker merch store you can in the description it's one of my most asked questions when people dm me henry can you pick me up a hoodie what do i look like 4, a delivery man <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can just order yourself and have it delivered i'm pretty sure got some pair on pair action bvb so far so standard Modern-day cooler for a clubs on a turn, giving Filatov an additional four ounces. A three would make him a six high straight. <laughs> what is going on at this Phil table, man? It's just cracking up mid-hand. Dan Smith comes in with a check on the turn. By no means a standard play there. Noteworthy. 30% on the turn from Filatov, just shy of third pot. Bit of protection, bit of vanity to be had. From yeah, he's going to think overs. he's got the best hand, right? He checks two on the turn, BBB, wide ranges, vulnerable hand. You see Dan Smith thinking about raising, actually, right? Because against a small bet, he's a bit vulnerable, too. Looking to eke out an additional 21k in value with the turn check raise. And now Filatov with the decision. Incredibly deep, these two. Yeah, intriguing check raise here. And now Filatov has got a little bit of regret with that bet now on the turn. Somehow has bloated this pot by opening up the action. We'll make the call in trouble. 74,000 going to the river in this limped pot as the six of hearts improves. Anatoly's holding to two pair, and now Dan Smith in trouble after flopping top pair. Yeah, quite annoying card there as the open in the straight draw does get there in the form of a three. Two diamonds still miss. King 10 could be best. Hard to say. You can see some kind of mixed strategy. Maybe he puts in a little block bet. Maybe puts in the check in the side. Yeah, block bet and incoming. It's about like 15% nice or so. <laughs> Venatov saying nice bet, gets shown the king 10, and for that, Dan Smith 
Unfortunate there after check raising turn. Couldn't shake the 6 5. Understandable. Philadelphia <laughs> looks pleased with himself. Lot 707 saying, you can't deliver with only one arm. That is true, my man. I do appreciate all the kind words and well wishes, chat. I'll be fine. <laughs> Surgery <laughs> in a couple of weeks. I, I can like, get back to delivery duty. I was like, delivering what? After okay. some physiotherapy. Knavi, Knavi saying, no, Ali is the delivery man, not you, Henry. There we go. We'll get Ali to start delivering hoodies. I do appreciate all of the well wishes, chat. I'm not sure how much more merchandise he can fit in the Ramah suitcases. So for those of you that missed it, Jason Kuhn emerged victorious in event number two for his sixth Triton title. And now we're diving in to event number three, one of my favorite tournaments of the series, the Six Max 30K Mystery Bounty. Bounties will come into play at the start of day two. So for now, no bounties up for grabs. Currently has 692 likes over on our Triton Poker YouTube channel. Would love to get it up to 1,000 if you could take a couple of seconds to click that like button if you haven't already as Triton Poker continue on their mission to bring super high roller series and cash game stakes to the poker world free of charge. All we're charging are likes. Be much appreciated. And as promised, 16 events here in Northern Cyprus. Randy just finished a five part cash game series which will be released later on this year. Plenty of reasons to follow us on all socials and, of course, to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified as and when Mike. those nosebleed cash games yeah. get released as we dive back into Dan Smith defending, or flatting rather, with the King Eight of Hearts. Patanov with the open from under the gun, Ace King, Vogelsang. So it's less tango. Oh, yeah. Usually people put it like from this like pocket, you know? Dan had it yesterday or something. Dan had it every day. Monotone. Seems like no one's got any connection here. One bet from any player would win it, but it's quite hard to bet this three ways. Okay. Expecting someone to have some kind of peace. Thousand. Okay, Dan Smith firing a 8K here. Nice, gonna work. It's indeed the power of position. Maybe he thought, you know, two red cards are flopped to flush. Watson's got Broadways. Blind's got to get out of the way, although Platonov still to act, but Queen 3 does hit the mark. Six handed poker yeah. makes 
Some highly entertaining viewing experiences we see players get involved more often than they would eight-handed and nine-handed. As Filatov flops best yet again. Yeah, Watson doesn't have the backdoor hearts in his hand, so maybe letting this one go, but we'll see. Still two overs. If he expects Philatov to be C betting on wide range, might expect him to check full turns to him, so we'll see. It's questionable, but we'll see. Not very clear what to do, Queen Jack. He's out. What a stacked field this is, as to be expected at the Triton Super High Roller Series. A couple of el early eliminations. Bossman Paul Poit, Robert Hydon, Targo Tam, all hitting the showers early. Dylan, Dylan Lind on just four bigs, currently last in chips. Got Linus Love in the mix. Tun Mulder. Got me an ace king for Filatov. Ace king. Also over there in the small blind. With these stacked FDL, 22 big blinds should be mandatory get in. Rowan. Play all in. Snappy. Slight oh. equity favorite. It's Filatov with the two live flush draws. More often than not, 97% of the time, they're going to chop this one up. <laughs> Any okay. free rolls? I'll take a draw. <laughs> I want whatever Filatov's drinking. Seems in high spirits. As the Royal Flush Draw rolls Whatever. off on the turn <laughs> Whatever. for Platinov. Ooh, close, but no dice. Chop it up, gentlemen. Appreciate the sweat. Ah, black card, okay. Wrong color. If you roll, you screw it. Orpen, how are you? I'm moving. Good luck, Danny. I want to get my chips back. <laughs> <laughs> we make him no. tilt, and now he goes to the other table. But they, really? don't, they, they don't even know that. I think everyone knows that I'm tilt. Okay. Sorry for bad bit. That's just... You, get <laughs> you can't give people time banks, okay? really do appreciate the relaxed vibe, given that we are playing some of the highest stakes tournaments available in the world. Yeah, especially in these day ones. Orpin joins the fray. A final table bubble in that 25k for Orpin. Managed to cash for 77,000. Long old ways to go before we can start talking about payouts in this one. 35 minute clock. Day one will complete at the end of level 14. Still four hours of poker. A good spot here for Orpin, picking up middle pair, backdoor straight draws, low cards. That's a big bet there, 18k. 
It does change things a bit, right? It does. I think this big bet on this disconnected ball texture is to kind of deter some of the gut shots and maybe some backdoor flush draw opportunities because Ace Queen just plays, you know, really unwell against those, has to check back on a lot of turns and opens the door for Orpen to take it away on the river. Two overs. Orpen going now with his middle pair and won't be going anywhere on this turn. Deuce of Diamonds giving him the six high straight draw. Yeah, still uncomfortable for him though. Curious to see what Vogel Saints game plan is on the turn. With the big bet, of course, it uh, mostly defines your opponent to having some kind of peace, like you said. Probably not those backdoor two over type hands against the big sizing. So open with the check mark. Off the turn goes check check. 60k in the middle. See what he wants to come with. Does he want to check the side, maybe block, maybe turn his hand into a bluff? Very key six of clubs in hand. Would feel pretty unnecessary to turn this hand into a bluff. He's got a lot of showdown value. His opponent's shown weakness on the turn. Does seem like you're best a lot. The question is, do you maybe block bet or, or check, I believe, would be the best play? Five is good. He's queen coming up short. Nice little pick up there for Orpin. Shambhala Jewels, Randy. A piece that was just gifted to none other than our six time champion, Jason Kuhn, after taking down the 20K. Shout out to Champala Jewels, the official partner of the Triton Poker Series, crowning our poker champions with exquisite men's jewelry. Champala Jewels creates high-end designs with diamonds, precious stones, and 18 karat gold that are braided and polished by hand in Copenhagen, Denmark. I want a Shambhala Jewels bracelet. What's a man got to do out here, you know? I mean, anyone from the team listening? I Is there like a spare one going around? Jason's got a lot. Maybe you can ask him. I would, but I would rather JK gives that to either his wife, Bianca, or. He, you know, he probably the already has. He still has the spare number six. Just saying. There's oh, opportunity oh, Jason, if you want to chase it. Jason, if you can hear me. Where is he? Probably Jason. in vet number three. Jason, where are you? I'll ask him. If you see me rocking that on tomorrow's stream, you'll know what's up. Ian Sheriff's asking, isn't Orpin Turkey's number one player? He is indeed. Number one on Turkey's all-time money list. Lauren Holland saying, is that the right picture from Tom Vogelsang? The guy with the sunglasses doesn't look like the guy in the picture. It's him. Glasses throwing you off. Ike Haxton. Leading the field, by the way, closing in on the million chip mark. Still a long ways to go as Orpin turns the nut flush draw. With the best of it, blind v blind. By a little bit of checking, a little bit of betting here of King Deuce. Quick and easy. It's about to say maybe a sugar crash for Fella 12, but no, it's just texting. Maybe putting out some stories to his fans. 
What's he telling him that? I tilted Dan Smith and he had <laughs> he to did. leave? He did indeed. Tilt Got Dan there. Smith. Talking of Instagram, if you haven't already, check out Triton Poker over on Instagram. Some behind the scenes content, some interviews with your favorite poker players, some football, basketball, fun reels, all that on? stuff. Well, you got ace four clubs. Limpy. Hello, nut flush draw. Blind v blind. Not Michael too shabby. With the mystery hand. What a casual check there. Such a stranglehold of equity. There's two random cards. And it's reaching for chips. Wouldn't surprise me if Watson's got some kind of piece. Well, the half pot bet from Watson snapped off by Filatov as he turns the nut flush, but it does pair the board. And as Randy mentioned, that blind range. Certainly four houses that Watson can have. Yeah, but a really nice card for Philatov, not only making the nut flush, but this card, if his opponent was paired on the flop, is really nice as pair of tens still looking good in sixes, even trip threes. Check through, so I'm going to assume the check threes is out of the Mike Watson range. Let's see if Philatov tries to extract value. 6x, 10x. Small bet here. And I think the small bet here is designed to try to get crying calls out of those 6 and 9 X's. You might think 10 X will bet the turn at some frequency, so discount a little bit. So the size down. Yeah, I think when turn goes check, check. So Watts obviously capping himself quite a bit. 2 2 pair and wants to target precisely those. Manages to eke out 8K in value. And so Watts. With the mystery hand, we'll never know. What we know doesn't beat the nut flush of Anatoly Filatov, who's been on an absolute tear at this feature table. <coughs> enjoying himself out there. It depends on which. It used to be more like shadows, <laughs> the black. Getting old. Getting old. <laughs> Same hand, different suit. Players whiffing their flush opportunities. Filatov with the betting lead going to fire a C bet on the Jack 8 7. And Vogelsang looking incredibly tired and uninterested in the C bet. He did say he was a bit tired, a little bit out of it when he made that out of turn call. I believe they were playing football this morning. who tried running the bluff of the tournament yesterday. Those pocket fours. Yeah, it turned that into the hero call of the tournament for Yerbshevsky. That was a cool one. Yeah, 
Indigo Sam was the main event going to be. Well, we have the $200,000 Luxon Pay Invitational. Of course, we have the 100K mains. No Limit Hold'em and Short Deck. As Volsang just rips 45 big blinds from the small. Well, to be fair, we were playing about 26 big blinds effective. Also being asked if we've seen Fedor yet. We have indeed. He's here. Yeah, we had a month of features on day one, I believe, of our coverage. Not that I've seen, but maybe whilst you and Ali were in the booth. Okay, I've seen them. I mean, is there ever a Triton Super High Roller Series where we don't see Fedor in the mix? Not as of late, I will say. going to do it again, Randy. D depends on Kevin Paquet's stack in the big blind. 20, so I'm going to assume that he's got a bigger stack. We'll make a 3 bet here. Ace-5 offsuit. Applying pressure. Should work. The blinds going up, 2.5k, 5k. It's the three bet. Gets through for Vogelsang. Chipping away at Sir Watts' is 20 big blind stack now. With the blind level increase. As open. Short lived stint at this feature. Blinds brought to you by our title sponsor, GG Poker. Me? I want to know what Filatov had for breakfast because <laughs> whatever it was, I want some too. Yeah, seems to have a, a spurt of energy, doesn't he? Maybe it's the coffee. Maybe it's the Turkish tea. Platonov here, Queen 9. Gonna take his shot of Queen 9 off. How many chips? Ace 3 suited. Uh, Ask him how, for how much, how much stack you got left. Thinking What's about missing? making a playback. Hold Hold Jam. Hold Only trending upwards for Filatov lately. Yeah. 14. Jack suited here for Vogel saying. Yeah, a couple of short stacks out there now with that blind level increase. So, what's one of them? Sub 20 suited Jack in the big blind is dominated and is going to defend. Does not want to see a Jack high flop unless it contains a deuce with it. How about a royal flush draw for Vogelsang? Unfortunately for him. So what's with just Jack Height? Yeah, not too shabby here. Looks like it should be over right now. A min bet. 
There's some backdoor spades, I suppose, for Watson. Sixteen bl big blinds to start with. Still out. He thought about it. Yeah. Did he really show? Showed the royal flush draw. I wonder what was going through Sir Watts' mind there. Maybe a little bit deeper. Would have seen some funky check call, maybe a check raise with the backdoor spades, backdoor straight draw. Yeah, occasionally. At some frequency, I'm sure. Seems like there's a ton of uh, totally Philatov fans in the chat. Shout out to our Russian viewers. Current top five stacks here, Ike Haxon, the only player with north of a million. Axel Halle in second, Alexander Shalukin in third, Henrik Hecklin in fourth, and Danny Tang sat in fifth. Up to 111 <laughs> entries in this one. Late Reg until the start of level 11. Why it's so cold here? Super dick. Super dick. It's been cold today, Are we I will admit. Wrapped up the AC. Yeah. Fold, eh? We got an exposed card potentially. Watson well, been trending downwards. Pocket deuces now. Dealer button. Good spot to push the chips in there. 16 blinds. Yeah, six handed. More than happy to flick it in on the button. Seeing a lot more involvement from these players, even the shorter stacks. Kevin Pack, one of the players I'm looking forward to hopefully building a stack. Widely regarded as one of the best six max cash game players in the world. Tax here, eh? Hmm? Tax here. His name, you didn't know? Yeah, no, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Ace nine. Jack three offsuit coming along. I'm trying to exert his post flop expertise. It's a straight draw. Pair of nines, but not a not a comfortable pair of nines on this board texture. Potential check raise spot, especially with Jack three. Don't really want to be doing too much check calling, but against this size, just gonna let it go. Uninterested in chasing gut shots. Probably has more continues if there was some kind of backdoor flush draw for him. Yeah, or a hand like Jack Six that can back into a nine high straight. We've got Dukes asking why is it a six handed mystery bounty, and then we've got Indigo asking why is it not a six handed mystery bounty. I don't know, chat. We did it to throw you off. We knew that someone would be unhappy. It is confirmed a, a six max tournament, correct? It is indeed. Musa following up with, why are we watching? Randy, why are we commentating? <laughs> In fact, let's go one step further. Why are they out there playing? Yeah, why are they playing? Um, because we all share the theme of loving this great game. Indeed. Poker. Indeed. <laughs> Especially when there's some mystery bounties involved. I know. Best players involved. In one spot, it's a pretty good reason. Got a funny feeling we're going to see some monster part between Filatov and Vogelsang. 
Nestor Reed. Yeah, they've been bantering back and forth some pre-flop and post-flop shenanigans. Phil Top loves to get in those those pots. He's been very active so far. Platonov, pocket deuces. Hijack open. He's got 12. 12 BBs definitely has fold equity. Is it enough? Just going to lay down. Going to give Watson an opportunity to see a flop here. King 9 of diamonds dominating Jack 9. Got shallow stacks. No. Let's just take a step back. We got an all in play here. Nice. Yeah, no one's going to know jam. these re jam spots. Six handed. Any suited hand. Was suited though. Let register is still open. True that. For consideration. It is indeed. Gotta get some chips. Hunt those bounties tomorrow, you know. Fold is winner. No, hundred percent. Believe that was uh, to translate Vogel saying there. A hundred percent. In Dutch. Cool. Didn't know. Filatov looks interested on the bottom with Queen Jacko. Looks like he's reaching for three betting chips and does take it north to 30,000. King Queen, though, for Watson. 20 big blind. Depends on how loose he thinks Anatoly is three betting here. Sometimes you'll see him make a play. Thinking about level four. He's out. I could see Pocket maybe even shipping his hand, right? Like he's sitting on 30 big blinds. He's got an aggressive player who's been active. Yeah, button V cut off. There it goes. All of it. All you can eat, Filatov. Nice little pick up there. Pake increasing his stack by 25% uncontested. Can you translate that for me now? Yeah, he just said, Kevin, you're an absolute sicko. <laughs> You trolling me? No. Okay. It's a lot of words to say just those words, but okay. Well, it's Dutch, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Not the playable hand for Filatov. This time in the cutoff, Queen 10 suited. And Platonov in the big. Just 10 big blinds back. A seven. And he's want to approach this one. It is big blind versus cutoff, gonna ship it in. I like that he's trying to use his fold equity here with his stack. Hands tough to play post flop anyways. High equity spot. Queen 10 suited. I could see what he's up against. He'd be making the call. There's a good chance he's dominated too. Gamble. Gamble. Gamble indeed. You know the bullet. Platinov can obviously hit the re enter button if he loses with the A7 hit. In return, he'll be given 200,000 chips, but I know he'd much rather save the 30k and scoop this 120,000 chip pot. No gamble, no future. That is true. No gamble, no future. Five to come. I don't know if a slight equity favorite still is on the jack. 8-4, though Venatov has picked up a gut shot. Looking for a queen, 10 or a 9. No dice on the turn, still looking for the same outs. 
And the Three of Diamonds completes the board. So a clean run out for Platonov. What about Saves himself 30k and he's up to 120,000 chips now. How about gamble no future? That's the thing too, right? You, got, you, got, you, got, you could gamble poorly. And that's why it was okay. 50-50, too many outs. What's too many outs? That, that felt like the right amount of outs, but... Filatov, certainly one of the most entertaining players to do commentary on. He's been splashing, and once again, King-9 offsuits in. To 111 runners in this one. Vogel sang a little legit holding, especially five-handed. A couple of tens. Yeah, he's been kind of active lately, so he might be trying to go for a three-bet here for value. 45 blinds. With intention of getting all the chips in there if necessary. Ace queen. Well, Platonov looking to go back to back potentially. Ace queen. Just 23 bigs. Yeah, never nice to see a bet and a three bet in front of you, of course. At this point, though, these players have just been re raising a bit too much. Look what you started, Filatov. Car call has been made. So we're off to the races. Paul Sang with 57% of the equity. Platonov looking to go back to back to get up to more than starting. Sizable pot here if Vogelsan can hold up to 360-ish thousand. You want to build a stack on day one so you can go bounty hunting on day two. Clean flop for the Dutchman. Ace or a queen only for the Russian. Doesn't come. Double taps the table. No back-to-back -back double ups for Platonov. And with that, Vogelsang now playing a very healthy 360,000 chip stack as we are now four-handed. We'll be bringing a player over to the feature table, of course. Any picks in the chat? Who do you want? There's a lot of people to choose from, I'll tell you that. Any guesses on who's going to be brought over to the feature table? Obviously, it is completely random, but if you guess it right, I'll put in a good word for a giveaway. What about Randy, chat? Randy, re uh you can still enter. Late reg is still open. How do you feel? Um, not that good, to be honest. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough field. You Can I just now. save my 30k? Reg now, you get 40 bigs. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here with you. Safer in here. It's safe. I could get lucky, I suppose, but don't really want to leave it up to chance. Ace 10, Queen Jack, Filatov. In the big blind. No backdoor clubs. Tom with the continue. Filatov, two overs. Sticky customer. It is dealer button versus big blind, which means that dealer button's got a wider range, so Queen Jack actually could even be good. But gonna lay it down. Most definitely one club out there, he's not folding. The C saying, let's back Randy. Yeah, that's a uh, crowdfund. I, I don't have a good track record, okay, in these training events. Well, you can look at my history. Positive it's thinking. Download, speaking download into the existence. app, put my name in, just see a bunch of zeros, okay? Do what Jason Kuhn did, put it into the universe, and run well.
Pair of fives. Field Hall's been active. What's the play here from a small blind? Very deep stacks, right? Cut off open. 40. 40k. Squeeze it is. Watson going to get out of that. Doesn't slow down, does he? Uh, doesn't really know how to shift back down through the gears once he gets into sixth. Vogel saying pair of fives. It's an eight big blind squeeze. Plenty deep. Yeah, to go about eighty mine in. All in. This guy. Oh, I thought he said all in. Excuse me. He said he said he verbalized something. I was wrong. He verbalized the word cool. <laughs> I just assume that people throw in the chips when need to make the call. Regardless, two clubs. Not too bad. Felatov flopping nut flush draws for fun. It seems today. Going to be tough for Vogelsang to continue should he face a Seabear, but Filatov opting to check. Pretty tricky. I actually think there's a lot of check raises in Filatov's game plan here with the nut flush draw. I really like it. Allows them to have nut flushes on turns and rivers when clubs roll off rather than being capped. 25k. From Vogel Sang, see if Fertov does check raise. Comes to check call. He's having a diamonds on the turn. Vogel Sang still with the best of it. Yeah, and you know that bet on a flop, 25% pot, doesn't necessarily define whether you're ahead or not because, you know, you can see like an ace king, uh, ace queen checking flop and calling there. Really hard to say. Good. That is one way to win it. Okay, so Diamonds giving Filatov top pair. Bricks the nut flush draw. Checks it on over to Tom. Four over cards. Filatov with the flop check call. Check, check, turn. Now checking on over to Tom on the river. Is Tom going to turn this into a bluff? Ace. No. Ace is good. 151k pot. Four out of Tony. Back up to over 450,000. Almost 100 big blinds for the Russian. So with these stack sizes, you can easily see, expect these hands to go in there, and King Queen just going to snap them up. Whoa! Well, look at that. Have you ever seen that kind of splash? <laughs> it went six different ways. Those chips. Vogelsang really is kind of over it today. Did say that he's incredibly tired. Was up playing football this morning with some of the Triton regulars, flipping against some what's here. With the king queen as it comes, queen seven four.
bottom pair for Sir Watts. Running Hearts an option as well as the Ace. Paul Sang in great shape though with 76% of the equity as Watson is reduced to just five outs once. Not to be this time round, but something that we can guarantee is a re-entry from that man. Fresh stack of 200,000 in exchange for 30K. He'll be back in the mix looking to build a stack to put him in a great spot to claim some bounties tomorrow. Will you so bring more players? Yeah. Five, maybe. Joined by Paul Paul here. Maybe six, sometimes. Hello. No quads. Paul with no a fresh quads, stack. Okay. Jumping into seat four. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. Shout out to everyone that had a piece of Michael Soyser and Michael Zhang at our last series in Vietnam. Decent ROI on action ball from those two. Head over to pokersteak.com if you want to snag a little sweat to the Luxon Pay 200k. No Soyser has action in. Pretty much all the events that he's playing here. In fact, all of the events, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. KB saying, we need Uncle Paul shirts. We do. We need Uncle Paul with the custom Triton piece. Wow, Stephen Chidwick, after coming third in that 20k 7 max, is now chip leader of this 30k mystery bounty. Back to back hands, aces against Uwe Soon's king 9, followed by king 10 against Phil Nagy's 9 8 suited, where Nagy bluffed off across three streets. Should have up to 909,000 now. Yeah, very important to kind of build that stack right now on day one. Seven off. Half of the prize pool going to be in the bounties, which you can collect at the start of day two. Okay. <laughs> That could have been Randy, chat. You're right. Check for it. it could have been Randy. On to the next one. Could have been what? Could have been you at the top of the chip counts. <laughs> yeah. In that amount of time? Yeah, sure. I mean, Stevie went from three-handed in the 20k, late regging this, chip leader. So, could have been you, mate. So 113 entries in this one. Paul with the nines. Facing a limp. It did. So once again, to reiterate, Late Reg will close at the start of level 11. Day one will end at completion of level 14. And then the mystery bounties 
will be brought into play at the start of day two. So the math will be crunched depending on the total number of entries by the end of late reg. I'm going to go with, what was it? We had 170 runners in the 20K mystery bounty in Vietnam. Top bounty of 250,000. This one a 50% buy-in increase. I want a half a million bounty, man. <laughs> You're getting greedy there. But you never know. We don't know how they're going to distribute the the bounties, but it would be fun to watch. Top bounty prize of half a million would be sick. Couple of mystery hands as we wait for the graphics to catch up. It's like Filatov has opened from under the go. We have a new player in trap four. Gavrilovic playing a very healthy stack, 84 big blinds. So on 976. Say two ace jacks was involved so far. Check around, no connection to the king. So, a man, Gavrilovic, <laughs> with the best of it, a pair of sevens. Let's see if Fedotov wants to start. Bluffing on this King of Diamonds turn. Again, apologies for the lack of graphics. Checks round to Kevin on the bottom. He's going to check through. So, Jenya with the check mark. Going to the river, or on the river rather. A nice river card for him on the king as no, neither player betting the king makes it very likely his seven is good. Not sure if there's value in betting though. It's hard to get called by worse. It looks like he will come in with a bet though. Keep control. You could try to get paid off by some six X as possible. Kicker would play if he was up against a seven normally. Really nice value bet here from Jenya. Just ace jack here for Anatoly. Now in Pake. Jesus, Stephen Chidwick knocking out players for fun. Who's next? Elton Sang. Stevie with a not flush. Trip threes. The gap has been closed, of course, between Jason Kuhn and Stephen Chidwick, but 
Stevie at the top of the chip counts as we approach level 9. Almost end of late reg. Could have been Randy's nut flush. Rewarding Stephen Chidwick. <laughs> yeah. Raising a call here, Paul with the suited connectors. Piltov, Ace Jack, seems to, be, seems to be involved in every single pot. He's here. Gonna run it three ways with 40,000 in the middle. Looks like a Queen 10 type of hand. Looks like a little top pair situation for Vogelsang. It's been checked round to Paul. Backdoor clubs, backdoor straight opportunities. And just eight high on a board this disconnected and dry. There you go for a little tickle here. Yeah, you know, he saw the preflop razor check on his dry texture. Might be thinking he's looking to check fold. So a nice little trap there from Vogel Singh. Does get the ace jack out, but the queen 10. Going nowhere. For a turn card. The live flush draw for Paul. 63,000 in the middle now. 180k back. Does he want to knuckle and realize his equity? Does he want to try and shake off some of those ace highs? Yeah, this is a good bet here. Um, even though it's not going to work, Vogel saying does have a decent amount of hands that are just going to check both this turn as the jack overcards the, the middling hands. So, like, let's just say it's up against pocket nines. Tens, they would have a lot of trouble calling a two barrel. Ace kings, of course. What's well, a sizable double barrel at that? Should be some alarm bells now, as after Paul got called twice. And blocking eights and sevens isn't great as the five of diamonds completes the board. Paul with just eight high. Is he going to empty the clip? Really lean into those hands that Randy mentioned, nines, tens. Well, I feel like those hands are discounted a bit after getting called on the turn, so maybe he's up against some kind of queen X at a decent frequency. Pocket jacks comes to mind as well. Oh, oh wow, he's wow. going to rip it in. Paul just thinks his opponent can't be that strong to take that line on the flop. Vogel saying. What a sicko. Emptying the clip. Flop, turn, and river. Putting this queen 10 in a really grim spot. Did bet on the flop, so when we try and think of value. King, would king, queen go three streets? Maybe an ace, queen, o that just flattered pre. Falls, deuces. Gets the fold. And pull with the triple barrel. Uh, and eight sorry. high. Wow. Gets top pair to hit the mark. I mean, they said this guy was good. What? There you go. No cost. No cost. Sure, no cost. <laughs> Maybe set. Sets are very likely <laughs> given the line. <laughs> Story was told. Just How wasn't holding those cards. Like, <laughs> Just play for fun. Can win the game. Yeah. But it's, it's weird. They very hard to play. They make it hard. Perfect. The money, it's weird. Rolling and not rolling. Ah, rolling. Yeah. 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 I'm used to it. So. Yeah, used to it. Talking about the ball rolling around the wheel in roulette. I suppose. Little gamble. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Eventually the number comes in. <laughs> As long as you got betting units.
That was such a gangster triple bar barrel. He really was. I mean, he got caught in two spots. Lots of uh, queen X's now in Vogelstein's range and still went for it. Figures he's repping the, the stronger range. I play every hand now. Queen <laughs> 7 here. <laughs> Continuation, but inside straight draw for Tom Vogel saying. No backdoor spades, but try texture. Expecting him to continue. This is the type of board I get C bet a lot, so could go check check if you miss, still bet and win it. Drop me a five. Showdown value now. Just queen high, queen of clubs, a potential future bluff card. He's going to check behind and running fives for Vogelsang. Earns him the check mark. Yeah, what was once seeming like a spot where he's trying to just check it down for showdown now. It's turned into a value bet. And you could not expect a lot of ASEX actually to check back to turn, so to a lot of hands he can get value from. No club in hand is nice. Actually, no club doesn't matter, but excuse me. Here's the value bet. 75k is huge. Trying to rip that bluff. That's an insane bet. Really putting those top pairs in a world of pain, we can see obviously Jenny with just queen high, having a club isn't great of course. Blocking some of the hands you'd want Tom to have. Does fall, but it would have been interesting had he had an ace. It's already gone. Okay, okay, we'll see. <laughs> You'll see anyway. I don't look. Can look over there. Who cares, right? And you're saying he's not going to look at the stream. Who cares? We play for fame. It's uh, Phil Tov. I play for fame. I play for money. Money? Yeah. I don't know enough yet. No fame? No fame. Money first, then fame. Huh? Yes. <laughs> priorities. Someone's got their priorities straight. You need a lot of money to play these tournaments, so it does make sense. Unless you're using poker stake. There you go. Good timing, eh? You can't, dude. You can't compliment yourself <laughs> on your segue. <laughs> it was great. Well done. But then you say good timing, eh? And all of a sudden, Randy, come on. Okay, okay. Back. I'll stick to what I'm good at. Cards. Strategy. Let's go. Current top five chips. Steven Chidwick in first, Chris Brewer in second, Ike Haxton in third, Justin Bottomo in fourth, and Demir Zagrelin in fifth. Rounding out the top five. Late Reg will close at the start of level 11. A couple more levels for players to try and spin the r reel? The wheel, rather. We remain five-handed at this, is this feature table. Be close. Three, 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 three more levels. Oh, very boring game, eh? <laughs> Thanks, Anatoly. I pulled it three times in a row. Tilting now. Nothing like you. So sick. Unplayable hand. 
Paul, you play for money or for fame? I believe that. What about you, Randy? Me? Play for money or fame? I think I'd play for money a bit more. If I was playing for fame, I'd, I wouldn't be in his you'd commentary be booth. I'd be out there spending the rest of my bankroll. You'd be in the 30k mystery bounty. <laughs> Chat did offer to stake you. He did, but I'm, I'm a responsible man. don't want to let them down. I don't want my follower count to go down as I lose their, their stakes. Oh, we're saying with an interesting spot, cut off the hijack, potential three bet opportunity. Especially against Filatov, who just announced how bored he is after having to fold three hands in a row. It's gonna flat call, blinds likely to get out of the way. King do so. Jenya incredibly deep though. And yes, Chidwick did become chip leader in three consecutive hands. You can sweat along all of the outer table action over on the Triton Poker Plus app as Felatov flops a gut shot, still best on the King Jack Jack. A round of checks. Oh, some chop outs. Ace, king, or a jack. Or six now. For the top with ace ten. See if he goes for a delayed C bear or tries to get this one to showdown. Feels like a hand you want to try and get to showdown. Tell top Vert one of the very tricky players with lots of creative lines. Well, pretty clear he wants to try to get the showdown now with that turn check. No chop this time round. 100% check mark. For Anatoly. I thought he was going to go for a Ace naughty nine. value bet. Ace 10 is good. Vogelsang out pipped. Second answer. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Honestly, tomorrow I'm going to the restaurant and just going to follow him surprise, and surprise. see what he's going for. This is just as natural. I've commentated habitat. on him a few times. He's never been this chatty before. No, but he's normally a pretty active player, I believe, like just in terms of he presence. Is. Danny Tang has just eliminated Steve O'Dwyer. Tens against Jax. Danny with quads after sucking out on O'Dwyer's pocket Jax. Flopped it. Okay, king queen suited. Oh, totally with a defendable suited king of his own in the big blind.
Oh, he's been complaining that he had to fall three times earlier. He's been playing the last couple pots. Extremely high V-pip. Dominated king situation. Still behind. A few options on the table for Kevin. One diamond on board. Filatov certainly going to have more 4x in the big blind defending range. Pack eight undeterred. Going to continue in a snap fold from Anatoly with king six. So heading towards a 15 minute break. Level nine when we come back, there'll be two more levels of late reg. So maybe going to see some of the shorter stacks kind of get involved a little bit more. Maybe push four. Four. a bit of equity. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian Mateus four in for four bullets. 120k. I still have um, a good few minutes. A <laughs> good two hours. There you go. Mateus with the fresh stack. I mean, you're the record-breaking player, so... <laughs> work both ways. Don't feel too bad for Mateo as he, as he did just final table that last event we covered today. How much did he cash for? He got fifth, 197,000. Still in the profit so far. So 197. Minus 120. Minus Wait. 20 for his buy-in. Yep. He's still up 50 Gs, 57 yes. Gs. Good. But he has the fresh stack as well. 200k here. Sixes and sevens. Seven on a flop. On pace to lose more chips. He is indeed. That's what we're saying has flopped bottom set. Bullet number four going just as well as bullet number three for Mateo so far. They're just joining us with its fresh stack. Not expecting much blood here under the gun. Very ASEX heavy. Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when you say set it, you don't really have Nobody it. Nobody believes him, right? He did. So winding down the clock. Event number three, the mystery bounty. Tomorrow, start of day two. The bounties will be in play once the prize pool is complete. We'll run the numbers and talk of the numbers. Cash Game Festival. Merit Poker, home of some of the biggest festivals in Europe. You can see from the 7th until the 17th of August, they got a 6 million guaranteed prize pool. Got a couple of main events and mystery bounties of their own later on in June. That one, the main event with three mil guaranteed and a one mil guaranteed warm up. Shout out to Merit Poker, of course, very quickly becoming the home of poker in Europe, Northern Cyprus. And understandably so, with not only the poker that they have on offer year round. The facilities, the gyms, the spas, the beach, the restaurants, basketball, tennis, football, you name it. And of course, some gambling as well. Pretty out of line open here from Jenya. But six handed. It's, it's it is a little bit out of line, especially against this lineup, but uh, that's how he plays. And he's got 400k stack. Pake. Nicely done there if Jack-10 suited. That's a sick jam, that is. Gets hands that have him dominated to fold. King-Jack, Queen-Jack, King-10. Maybe even some ace tens actually. Ace yeah, ten out. I think so.
A3. Nice queen. Bullet number four. Spaniard raises. On the button. Kevin with the spot. King five suited in the small blind. Bear in mind, we are five handed. Yeah, I definitely could see him potentially putting some chips in here. Calls to start. Take it three ways, King six. What do you want to get? Like a King Queen X board for Max Entertainment. How about 6 5 deuce? Top pair for Paul, middle pair for Kevin, and two overs. The Queen of Diamonds for Mateos. Yeah, a lot of connection for those blinds. Paul's actually contemplating leading here, as this is actually the type of board that the preflop raiser three ways will not see bet too often. Six very vulnerable. I like this lead incoming. You know, good awareness of how the dealer button will proceed on these types of board textures, especially with this kind of 30 big blind stack. Still gets called, though, by Adrian Mateos. Pair of fives is out. Still with the best of it, and yeah, I have to agree. Big fan of the lead in general. It's going to be a few gut shots and straight draws as flush draws. You want to mix in some top pairs as well as the nine of spades rolls off on the turn. So, Paul, still with the best of it. One card to come. Yeah, it's kind of a tricky spot, of course, with an overcard there and some straights getting there, but um, you know, you still got to. Attack those hands. You got a strong kicker here. Dealer button could definitely open some more six X's. Little pocket pairs like threes and fours. Would be pretty worried now for Mateos though, right? The nine coming in, your opponent's still betting in. It could be like an eight seven. Queen of Diamonds in hand. Wow, still going to call here. Because Queen of Diamonds also blocking some of those flush draws you're trying to pick off. But I assume he thinks that Paul is just kind of blasting away. King. Two pair. I would love to see a check here from Paul on a river card that is supposedly meant to favor Adrian. It is definitely uh, supposed to favor Mateos here, but... When your opponent like calls your flop lead and turn lead, it kind of seems like they've got some showdown value, That's right? True. Like it could be like some over pair to the nine tens jacks queens. I could see it. Could be like a nine x with two di holding two diamonds. Well, both flush draws do brick. Some of the obvious gut shots bricking as well. Three x four x that stab on the flop. Hands like seven four. Paul improving to two pair, 158k in the middle. Does jam, and well, Mateus keeping him honest on flop and turn. The king of clubs really doesn't change much other than Paul improving, but in terms of the obvious draws, and Mateus potentially putting Paul on. I think he's going to hear him off here, Randy. He's kept him honest on flop and turn. It's really bad that he's holding his queen of diamonds, though, right now. Like, he, he blocks the queen eye flush draw, you know. Uh, he, he just doesn't believe it. Something about this turn, this flop lead that's got Mateos very suspicious. If it's a one pair type hand, though, should slow down on the king, right? It must be crossing his mind. Yeah, quite a perplexing spot here for Mateos. Yeah, it does make the call with ace high, and he's going to get shown the two pair. So Mateos, well. no dice on bullet number four, hearing off with ace high. Paul Pua, who ran that massive bluff, 
with eight high earlier on. Now up to 483k after getting top pair to fold in that one and now rivering two pair and getting heroed by ace high. See if bullet number five goes any better for Mateos. I understand the call down in theory. Actually against Paul who's more than capable. Any hand. <laughs> oh, so tight. <laughs> you are too tight, so go yeah, the book. Every, every hand, every hand. But how can I play ball every time? Oh, bet, bet, Alin. What can I do? Check bet, check bet. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> You know, technically, our Spaniard, Mateos, just needs to collect 13. one bounty. Get all those binds back. That one big true. pull. That is true. And he's going to be in this tournament for 150k. That much we know. There is obviously a chance that it's more. So he does have a few more levels. Genia outkicked pre. Still the case on the 10 7 deuce. The unexpected pair to be outkicked on, too, especially from the cutoff raise. Calling. Well, an undercard to the 10 7. Maybe still value for Filatov to extract here. Yeah, maintain control. His hand's also vulnerable to those straight draw type hands. Plan is to bet this turn. Check River unimproved. Up to 128 runners, by the way, in this 30k. Still plenty of hands that Genya will be able to beat here. Clubs, 8-9, all the straight draws. Understandably so, Genya going nowhere. Yeah, four-handed for the time being, and he knows Filatov's been very active. Unblocking clubs, unblocking some of the straight draws that Randy mentioned. Only eight minutes, then we move down. <laughs> <laughs> eight minutes until they move to the outer table, and we'll be coming back with two new feature tables. Switching it up, let us know in the chat who you'd love to see on the main stage. These guys have been putting on a show, of course. Did we get a new player? We did indeed. Looks like someone Filatov is familiar with. Is that Jonathan Jaffe jumping in the mix. Could be you, Randy. It could be me. You guys trying to get me? <laughs> Put the rest of my bankroll in on one ornament. You got a 30k bankroll, is that what we're to believe? Bankroll. Dude, one here, 10 years ago you were playing 100, 200, no I limit heads up. This one. What yeah. have you been doing? The markets are up, crypto's <laughs> up. I'm going to look into his card. <laughs> Unless you were yeah. blasting. I tried, I mean like... Blasting in private games. Yeah, I don't oh, believe yeah. for a fact, for a second, that's your entire bankroll. If it was me... And I could see that. People <laughs> were like, yeah, Henry, go on. All your bankroll on the line in one tournament. I'm still crushed from my previous experiences. How long ago was it? Let it go, Randy. It was. Where was it? London? Jeju? I think it was Montenegro. I don't know. I can't remember. I try not to remember. I just know it was Justin Bonimo doing the deed. <laughs> The J-Dog currently sat fifth in chips with 135 bigs. 
Belotov again. Open-ended this time. Oh, King Dewey for Paul. Note the big stacks we're playing for. Going upstairs for Filatov. Quick takedown. So how are your dolphins? <laughs> They're living, you know. Doing their thing. Do on this board. <laughs> Pays the bills. Can't complain. How are your what was that, Henry? Do you say dolphins? I heard dolphins. But dolphins, Randy. Keep up. Wait. Keep up with the times. Really? He's, he said dolphins. He did say dolphins. Jonathan Jaffe has dolphins. The Literally? question asked was, how are your dolphins? Yeah. I'll let you figure that one out. American football, Randy. Come on, you're meant to be oh, American. Okay, okay. <laughs> Miami. There we go. He got that there eventually. For two of us, he used, like, he needed Vaseline. He was having some troubles, and this was the best I could find him. Hang on, hang on. What was that? I heard Vaseline. Who needed Vaseline? Oh. I don't think you know what we're talking about. No. Not for the lips, my friend. <laughs> It was <laughs> being polite on stream. Every time Jaffe comes to the feature table, he's up to no good. Yeah, he's always saying some non standard, nonsensical. Yeah. Nonsense. Better by asking, how did the Brit know, but not the American? You know, I'm asking these questions <laughs> out here as well. <laughs> I am um, uncultured. Appreciate it. Some blankets being passed around by the sounds of things. I'll take one. So king on king action, one over card to the board. Genya able to extract some value so far on the flop, I imagine. King three shouldn't be looking to fold. Dead on the turn, in terms of winning the pot outright, can still chop, but this one may be unlikely to get to the river. Really nice spot here, two pairs, as he can easily get some value from Ace-X, not holding Ace himself. Looks like it's over. Now, Randy, apparently there's a running joke Jonathan Jaffe made Luke, for a final Luke table bio name? back in the day. Luke when asked what his Brian? profession was, he put uh, dolphin training. Brian? Yeah, yeah. Brian yeah. Um, or something, right? Okay. Yeah. You want that from chat? I did. So you do know a thing or two that's useful. Oh, chat are incredibly useful. Yeah. He, uh, he if you're looking for advice on yeah. how to play every spot perfectly, well, they're using GTO Wizard, obviously. One would hope. Where do you guys live nowadays? Uh, Holland? Rotterdam, yeah. Holland, yeah. Call.
blind v blind confrontation. Little stab, paired board, queens. Paul is not relinquished yet. There we go. Danny Tang is continuing his climb on the Alpha tables. Up to 1.3 million now. Tournament chip leader Stephen Chidwick in second, Chris Brewer in third, Ike Haxton in fourth, and Justin Bonomo Last in fifth. Last for fame, guys. Come on. <laughs> Last hand for uh, rebound? That's early Filatov no, saying. For TV table. Last fame. hand for fame, <laughs> to go for glory, to run the bluff of a lifetime, or make the hero call of a lifetime. No. <laughs> Come on. You can't make that speech He's in gutted. fold. 6 3 0. Oh. Is that that? Shafi's top say everything is terrible and it's got stars and a rainbow on it. <laughs> this guy, born Mima. Jaffe's world, and we're all living in it. And capable of fireworks here, Paul, ace king. Big stacks, 56k. Most likely will end it unless Jonathan Jaffe really does want to entertain Filatov's need for fame. Well, he's a dolphin trainer, so he's used yes. to entertaining people. <laughs> Done. It does make the fold, and Paul. Takes it down with the pre-flop three bet. Looks like the players are standing up. See if we got a couple more seconds. So you move back, right? Doesn't sound like it. Break it is, Randy. Two more levels until the end of late reg. Going to be going on a scheduled 15-minute break. Kalantoli Filatov going to be returning with 88 big blinds and the chip lead at this future table. But we're going to be switching things up. Two fresh feature tables with 12 fresh faces and two levels left of late rush. So we're going to be expecting potentially some middling, some short stacks with a little bit more gamble given that they do have that option to rebuy. But after the start of level 11, that's it. If you're out, you're out. No bounties. Obviously, the bounties being brought in tomorrow. Yeah, and the main thing here is, to, um, you know, of course, playing your hand accordingly. But if you can build that stack, it's quite important. Half of the prize pool is starting in day two, being able to be collected in the form of having a bounty, right? So you need to cover your opponents that are the short stacks and try to take advantage of that prize pool. We'll talk of taking advantage. How about taking advantage of one of our sponsors, GTO Wizard? You can head over to gtowizard.com forward slash Triton for a free 24 hour trial as well as a 10% discount. And for the time being, they've been giving us, you know, the Chat Pro Friday in the YouTube and Twitch chat. How about getting involved in this quiz to test your GTO knowledge? We'll see you on the flip side of this break. The following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. A common trick in poker is to multiply your outs by this number to approximate your equity on the turn. A, four, B, three, or C, two. Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash Triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
Sometimes it gets checked down through. Let's see. I've been raised. Yeah. And it's, it's actually very technical, this min raise, to be honest, because it doesn't put them all in. Leaves that 75k. Sometimes it checked through, he gets another life. And, and I know it seems weird, but... Uh, it really does. I, I didn't expect that he would simply... Min re-raise three bet in an effort. It's a tough game out there. They found all these little edges they can make. Right. But of course, Chidwick says, let's play for all of it, sir. And he's doing so with 46% equity, which is a large amount. Sean showing off some pessimism, but then being given a nine high board. Top pair. Still looking to fade a king or a jack. Oh, wow. Your deck reads are too strong. Tell me just the exact river. Another king or jack. Yeah. Jack Burger on the turn. Chidwick. Oh, deck reads are too <laughs> Hits, and then Sean calls for a king or jack on did. the end. Deck reads, as Kuhn pointing out, very strong from South Florida's finest. As Sean showered there despite having the worst they can play stack right in theory march rosen probably should be opening tighter given who's in the big blind right the guy sure. who got you covered yeah it's very interesting to note Bradley's been looking for a spot. Dealer button. Queen Jack. Ten blinds. 
kill time. Almost. Effectively. One million into the middle. Leaves himself 175k back. Just in case it goes three bet jam. And both blinds have got playable hands here. Chitwick gets out of the way, leaves it to Martirosian's uh, fives. 1. 2, 1. 1. 1. Which ask for a count. And ask for the rest of it as well. Off to the races we go. Certainly could have been worse spots for Ian Bradley to find himself in here. But two overs will have basically a coin flip mm -hmm. against these two fives in a two and a half million chip pot. Queen 10 4. Top pair for Bradley as he leaps out in front. Just needs to fade a black five. Martirosian slips the prepay out there. Deuce is clean on the turn. And the river. Oh! Nailed it. Where do they come from? Dirty. Yeah, Kuhn would agree. It's Bradley. I'm going to start... Some sort of snake oil app. Block a raw wizard. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Snake oil. They say you need multiple income streams, Randy, to build wealth. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that they had to be legitimate ones, though. Big Just keep me out of this. Hold on. <laughs> Three oh, this, fours. No, this come is on. This is not fair, is it? Pipped again? Got a huge one. Oh, this <laughs> it can't <laughs> be, can it? <laughs> This guy fair again. Fair every fucking ha every hand DVD. I think we're gonna chop this one. Eight eight seven seven queen. Nice guy, Jason. I don't know about that. Just seventeen percent is Martirosian. There we go. All right, we're gonna chop. We can chop this one, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Paired board with a five dangler and a decent amount of the time. Sixteen percent to be exact from here forward. These guys will carve it up. Ace on the turn. Now it's 13% of the time. Ace or a five for the chop, a three for the win, and instead a 10 to put the nail in Artur Martirosian's coffin. Jason Kuhn polishing his man off. You got, you just, what can you say to make Artur Martirosian feel any better there? Obviously, he didn't do anything wrong. No. It's not like he needs to beat himself up and go, I made mistakes. Pocket queens, pocket threes. Retaining Mateos. Exactly. Now, obviously, he would have given him a visit to the locker room readily had Adrian decided to slide his last 300 in there with that queen high. But Yeah. It's great news for Mateos, though, right? Second life. He shouldn't be here right now if, um, you know, if someone happens to play it differently. So a second suited queen will... Draw the all-in from Adrian. And Barsegian, small blind, A7 suited. This if he's not the customer, <laughs> Kanan behind him is. It's actually um, not quite clear what you're supposed to do here at A7 clubs, given you're shorter than the guy in the big blind. Do you mean in terms of fold, flat, or raise, all three yeah, options? I, I think so. It's definitely not something that you visit on a regular basis. You can see that he just calls here. Because what? He goes all in, big blind wakes up a hand. You actually might bust out before Mateos, who's sitting on just two blinds, uh, depending on how, who wins the hand. And welcome back as evening is upon us here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel Resort, Casino, Spa, you name it, they got it. Ali Najad alongside Henry Kilbane here for the home stretch. Randy Lou, out of here. Going to take the rest of the Jet night lag, off. You know? Go no, I don't know. I think he's earned it. He put in some good hours before. But the players, those that are putting the good hours now as the mystery bounty, event number three, a 30K, 15,000 goes toward the prize pool, and then 15K goes toward those lovely envelopes, which will await the players. None of them available, though, 
uh, to be claimed until the start of play tomorrow. Is that right, Henry? Start of play tomorrow, indeed. 2.2 yep. million in the prize pool in terms of the non-bounty side of the prize pool, and then 2.2 million as things stand in the bounty side. So, look, man, I'm hoping for a half a million bounty. I'm not going to lie. Like, I just want a big 500k pulled out by someone. And that some people need it. There are people out there in for four, five, six bullets at the moment. Well, so Listen, this event in particular, and bounty events in particular, do tend to attract multi-bullet efforts mm. because you know that if you manage to get yourself deep enough, the EV of just envelopes alone right. after you start to bust players out makes it so that you can really get right, even with multiple kind of min-cash envelopes. Yeah, and I think that's the reason why day one is just played so aggressively, because people are aware that, you know, the bounties come in on day two, you want to build a stack on day one so that you cover, you know, as many people as you can, and you can go bounty hunting, so, yeah. As it stands right now, it is the U.S.'s Chris Brewer, who is the overall chip leader with 1.3 plus, 220 big blinds with the blinds at 3K, 6K, 6K big blind ante, 72 runners currently out there, 133 entries. From a strategy standpoint, Henry, how do we approach this one differently as we're just moments away from resuming play? I think we're just getting involved as much as we can, given that there's still two levels left until the end of late reg. So let's throw it down and see who wants to maybe gamble it up a little bit oh. with that re-entry in mind. Certainly hoping that some of the gambleros are spread out amongst our two featured tables. As the blinds do click forward to 4,000, 8,000, 8,000. There is Brewer. Boss stack. Big wide margin between he and his three fellow table mates. As yeah. it stands right now, the gaps will be filled in shortly. This is pretty uncommon. Brewer, the overwhelming chip leader. Obviously, no bounties up for grabs as things stand, but... I Let's thought get to just bulldoze the table. You were referring to Brewer being the overall overall chip leader as being yes. the uncommon thing for a second there. Wow. Henry, what is that about? Oh, Jesus. Huh? I know it's coming towards the night shift, but... Yeah, he ran bad for a while, but uh, actually spent a good bit with uh, Brewer thus far on this trip, and seems like he's on form. Here he is with a gut shot straight draw on the eight high board, one that is shared by Maher Nueda. And, of course, if the seven rolls off... Mod will have the nine high straight, so that poses a problem to Brewer as Noida comes out swinging. Does indeed. This board texture certainly going to favor the big blind defending range as Brewer comes with the call. Pawn up to 82k. King on the turn. Certainly a card that's going to favor Brewer. See if Nuro wants to continue trying to sell the story. He started telling on the flop. Nine high, no showdown. Can fold out some ace high floats. Maybe some queen jack, jack ten of clubs type holdings. And wow. How about that kit? 75,000. Mashing into the chip leader. Awkward spot for Brewer having one of the cards that he'd want Nura to have, the Six of Spades. Hands like 9-6, 10-6. Maybe some Jack-6 suited. Brewer mulling one, this one over. And well. Wow. Gonna make the call here, Henry, and maybe see if he can't take it away, regardless of what happens on the river in the event that Nuida were to knuckle He's got nine high, no showdown at value. When you get called on not one but two streets by the opener on the button, you start to wonder whether or not the third barrel gets through. Busted diamonds, which he unblocks, obviously, may be coming to mind. Two overcards to the flop. Has to be concerned that Brewer has some of this. And has paired, potentially. Yeah, I mean, all the overpairs. The one pair. Ace-8, eight, 8-7. Eight, As you mentioned, he does unblock diamonds, which is nice. Well, I've got to tip my hat to him for emptying the clip and a snap fold from Brewer. 
Sizable pickup there. Sizable jam. Maharnoida. A three barrel semi bluff, which turned into a full on bluff on the river. Make note of that one there as Brewer Bucks were obtained. And Chris would have enjoyed having had the opportunity to be the man making that move. Even though it's just him versus us. <laughs> All right, we win. I mean, he has more ships than us. <laughs> I know. Combined. It's wild. That's true. <laughs> Good luck, King. Dylan Lindy identifying the awkwardness of Brewer being alone on an island on one side of the table as he attacks the blind successfully with the Queen Nine offsuit. Uh, Dylan with starting stack. A couple of levels to try and get busy, build a stack before the end of Late Ridge. Yeah, was fun. You'll come back. Yeah. Nuida, by the way, one of the local talents who pop into the field when we come to town. He went 0 for 2 at our Cypress warm-up last year. And he is 0 for 1 thus far, not cashing the 20K7 max, playing under the Tunisian banner. Lindy, a first-timer, as is the young lady on your screen there, Natalia Nikitina. Well, she's all in at risk against Brewer's King Jack. He's got her in a bad way. Both flush draws dominated. Jack dominated. It's about as rough as it gets. Indeed. 232,000 chip pot and the King high board. Leaves Brewer with top pair against middle pair. So Nicotina is 10 hunting. For the time being, still the story as of the turn. Two outs one time. Is it there? No, it isn't. As King Jack holds and showers that bullet. G G is Nicotina. Another merits regular. I believe also a bit of a PLO player, if I'm not mistaken. In the cash game streets. Typically playing higher stakes than myself, might I add. Known entity to you, yeah. Kilbane? Yeah, I've seen her playing the 50, 100, 100, 200 game. No, it's both of us again. Bit too rich yeah, for my bad. blood. <laughs> no, it's fair. Roland Rakita, one of Fedor's crew, jumping in in trap four, on the left of Chris Brewer. If I'm not mistaken. Looks like him. We'll know momentarily as the Triton Poker Plus app updates. And you are indeed correct. Under the Austrian banner plays Roland Rakita, who has 26,800 in career Triton earnings. Just a single cash, which came back in Vietnam, his very first festival, 15th in the 20K mystery bounty. So perhaps this is the event that will find him notching his second cash. Meanwhile, Noida on the button, goes to work. Chris Brewer, pocket threes in the small. Rags for Rakita, but he is short. Gonna want to defend a lot more often at this stack depth, closing the action. Two fives and a nine as the threes are still in front. Mahra does not want to follow through in a three-way affair as the four on the turn gives Rakita the best hand. See if Brewer wants to probe here. A few options on the table. Does have to be concerned about the big blind defending range. 
where I could certainly have a bunch of 5x, 9x that trap on the flop. This one I'm going to check back round to the pre-flop aggressor. We're just queen high. Second round of knuckles, and what has the river brought? A 10. Well, now I'm curious to see if it checks to Maha. Is he really going to just try and show down this queen high? Feels like a mandatory bluff, but he's going to give up and wave the white flag. Trade's no good for Brewer. Roland with a crucial pickup there. Back up to 177k, good for north of 20 bigs and a bit of breathing room, although four-handed. That big blind and big blind ante coming around at lightning pace as we head on over to the red feature table. Find Mario Mosbach, former professional footballer. Opening with King for offsuit from the butt. Sosia Jang under the New Zealand banner with 10-8 offsuit. Into the muck it goes. 7-4 off for Hong Kong's Danny Tang. Yeah, Mosbach with a quick pit stop in Milano before heading to Cyprus. Milan Fashion Week. Picked up a few items, it seems. Always looking fresh at the feature table. Yeah, mossbox has got flavor, no question. Danny's never far from a Balenciaga boutique himself. As he defends, somehow he shares a four with Mosbach, but neither player coming up with a pair. Mosbach with the range advantage, presumably, on the ace-jack-10 flop, where he's got the Broadway gutty. Yeah, Danny's T-shirt resembling my T-shirt after <laughs> my head-on collision <laughs> and, you know, and scraped up on some Thai tarmac. I still got it. I'm going to frame it. Well, Hell it's well. Uh, obviously Exhibit A in the event that there's any sort of civil proceedings Has Mosbach repurposed one of our Triton hoodies yes. here? Is that a cape? He's turned it into a scarf. It's like the white Batman. You mean ethnically? No, I'm talking in terms of color. Okay. I'll allow it. Color of his clothes. <laughs> Hang on, Batman was white anyway, or is white, so... Don't even go there. Yeah, I forgot that. Ace 10 now for Mosbach. Cut off min raise. King Queen suited for Sosia Jang. Sosia ran that incredible three bet triple barrel against her fellow countryman the other day, David Yan. With ace nine oh. She had a ride with her and Jason Kuhn the other day and she said it only gets worse after breaking bones, apparently, with age. Meaning? I don't know, but apparently I'm gonna find out. Wow, that wasn't a good omen. No. Both of them are like, you know, Henry, you're lucky you're twenty eight, but you're going to feel it over the years as we dive back into this. Who needs top, enemies top. when you got friends like those two, go. huh? <laughs> Only teasing. 10-5-4, rainbow here as ace-10 turns into, as you mentioned, Henry, top pair, top kicker. Alexander Shalukhin in the big, defended, has flopped bottom pair. And look at Mosbach electing to knuckle rather than follow through. Yeah, on a board texture like this, dry and disconnected, a lot of good things can happen when you deceptively check top pair, top kicker. 
Nice for balance as well. Want to have okay. over pairs and strong top pairs in your checking range. Jang seizing an opportunity to pick up what she senses could be a pot for sale. Two overs in the backdoor hearts, 18K. Yeah, this might go three ways to a turn, although if Alexander calls, it does open the door for the Mario check raise. So he would want to deny some equity. Hand like ace 10, somewhat vulnerable going three ways to a turn. First piece of the puzzle in <coughs> place as the Russian is involved, but it isn't via a flat call, but rather a check raise himself to 45,000. Not what you and I would have expected. No, not at all. I think Alexander just correctly picking up that Jiang's going to kind of be at it, take a stab once check to, and given that Mario checked after opening pre. Alexander kind of just seeing maybe a potential green light to win this pot right here, right now. About to play a really interesting one. I mean, Mario should not be going anywhere with top top. Maybe even a flop three bet incoming. That looks like a clickish sizing. I saw two white chips. And look what Socia's <laughs> done. She Why is it always like this? <laughs> puts it in the mug, looks over to Danny. As if to say, where's the respect? Yeah, Jan would have loved to have seen a turn. Two overs, backdoor hearts, backdoor Broadway. Alex now with... You know, there's a bit of a leveling war going on here. You stare down the young Mosbrook, but it does make the fold. Mosbrook kind of yeah. picking up max value there now by checking his top top. Now you know how it feels top. when he gets check raised, huh? <laughs> Off from the button as well. <laughs> Sorry. And know what Mosbrook was oh, able to accomplish by not taking that conventional follow-through line that one would have expected. Gets Jang to bite, gets the small blind to check raise, and gives himself an opportunity to pick up both of those chips without I mean, seeing a turn. Yeah, denying a ton of equity oh, there. No set, no bet. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have a pair first. <laughs> here. <laughs> but no royal flush draw, no bet. That would have been a hedge, in case you were wondering. I stand corrected, post-mortem from a previous hand. Danny, third in chips. Gonna behave. Thought about it, didn't he? Yeah, the button is... So tempting. Now it's a 9-6 suited for Shelokin. In it goes. Ian Bradley going to spin the wheel for sub-15, one would assume. A couple of levels left before the, the end of here. Late Reg. The oh. champ is here. Oh. Hey. Hi. Hello. The champ is here. As Ian Bradley does call it off. We're flipping, Ali. Get out of here. Could be worse. There's 250. Some magic cards. Yeah. Works that. its way. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thanks very much. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the middle. Nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Good, good. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Six in the window on this monotone board. Downs the fours for Bradley. Now he picks up the gut shot straight draw on the turn to add four outs to the equation for this bullet. To the river we go and Ian Bradley gets that bullet polished off. 
Thank you. I love it. Deep face. Oh my god. Talking about the tens v. Jack Sand played between Steve O'Dwyer and Danny Tang earlier on. Where Danny that. just flopped quads with the tens as we dive back into this one, Ali. Yeah, on the topic of tens, Dylan Lindy raising with them from the button to 38,000. Kiat Lee jamming with bottom pair and the open ender, going to get a call, and the equities fairly close. Advantage Lindy's tens. <laughs> oh, flip, flip that one first. <laughs> 13 ounce twice. That's true. Yeah, the five has a lot. <laughs> and that's one of them. <laughs> I really fucked you with that one. Now Trip <laughs> fours on the turn for Kiat Lee. Lindy chuckling, but in need of help. And the ace of diamonds is not the card that's going to do it. So on his feet. Goes Dylan Lindy, who really had lovely things to say about his first Triton experience at breakfast this morning. Yeah, you also win? Says he's going to be coming to a lot more of these. Yeah, it's pretty vocal on social media before the event. Buzzing to play some high stakes. Did cash his first ever Triton 25k GG Super Millions for 45,800. <laughs> Bricked the 20k, and we know he's down at least one bullet in this 30k mystery bounty, courtesy of that four of diamonds on the turn for Triton regular. Can't leave. Ali just said no to dessert chat. Well, I already had. Dessert how, how many are Henry? How many? Just half, actually, which is significantly less than the volume of dessert that you appear to have foraged for during the break. A truly gluttonous amount of flour and sugar being thrown down. Certainly somehow going to be rationalized by virtue of this post-accident weight loss you speak exactly. of. There we go. Looking to bulk up, re-bulk up. <coughs> yes. Seven, eight kilos to catch up on, which is about 50 pounds. Is it, though? I mean, it's, a, it's the best guess. I, I don't sit on the Ways and Means Commission, but... Seven or eight kilos, 50 pounds. <laughs> are you Henry, really going to Google How are it? you with pot odds? Are you really going to Google it? It's 2.2 pounds. It's 2.2, exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I, right. I just, well done. but you know. And how am I with pot odds? I was going to bring up the calculator and show it to you. Better than most, I'd say. So it's just specifically weight conversions that you struggle with. There's Which that. is better than struggling with weight, by the way. There's definitely that. I also think, you know, as a Brit or American, you have to, even if you know the equation, Celsius to Fahrenheit, pounds to kilos, you're not really allowed to admit it. Why? We just the Celsius to Fahrenheit we just like by the way, is, is an abomination. <laughs> but 2.2, that's easy. How many gallons or how many liters in a gallon? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.4, 2.5? Double no? that and you're closer. Double? It's four liters? Four something. Like really? 4.4, 4.3, I'd say. Producer James kind of. Bottom pair against top pair here. Champion. Hey. Noida with the advantage. Cutoff opener. Dial up a number. It does like these big bets, especially on this board texture where the big blind is going to have 
ton of weaker pairs, gut shots, open enders. 30k into 44k picks up a customer as we head to the Jack of Hearts turn. Nura still with the best of it. You can understand the peel there from Rakita, just keeping an eye on some of that obligatory follow through kit. But on this occasion, it's the real deal. Will it stay interested in barreling off despite the arrival of this Jack of Hearts? Looks like we've got our answer. No, he does not bashful. So a fold from Rakita on the turn. Some talks of an Omaha game last night. King four finds the muck after Mahar barrels. Bookmaker.eu, Ali, one of our sponsors here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Right now, Bookmaker.eu has reduced juice, low vic, minus 108 sides and totals on all NBA postseason games. You can open a new account at Bookmaker.eu now. Get up to a $500 cash bonus with your first deposit. Professional and recreational bettors welcome. High betting limits, high payout limits, and live betting on all NBA postseason games at bookmaker.eu, where the line originates. If you like to dabble some NBA gambling, I know friends with Harola Boss, Mr. Bob, who... I'll tell you what I like to dabble in, Henry. <laughs> Bonus churning. <laughs> there we go. That doesn't surprise me <laughs> at all. <laughs> See you grinding that. I'm being facetious. Are you though? I am. I, I get a projection, remember. I feel. Can't remember the last time I... I mean, I haven't played a hand of online poker since Black Friday as a resident of the U.S. No, I'm not a rule follower either. I mean, it's just so, just so happens that... Hasn't happened. You'd rather see the person that you're giving it away to. <laughs> that well, well, I yeah. just want the option to follow them to the parking lot there we go. at the end of the session. And ask for a ride home because I'm busted. Saves getting pulled over by the police. That lovely Merc of yours. I'll never get over that selfie chat. We were doing some post-production in Vegas. That's right. Call time was 10 a.m., 10.30. Where's Arlene Najad? Get a selfie in the group chat with a police officer from the Las Vegas Police Department pulling Mr. Najad over. And well. I don't know how he <coughs> caught me, <laughs> but he did. Another cooler situation for yeah. Rikita. Round two between the, Australia, uh, sorry, the Austrian and the Tunisian. This time it is second pair for Rikita and top pair once more for Noida. Blind versus blind on this occasion. Yeah, a pair of fives is often going to be the best hand. Finds himself in rough shape. At this SPR as well, unblocking all of the draws, all of the back doors. K, the barrel from Nuida in position. Of course, Rakita with the obligatory call. Up to 92,000, and again a jack on the turn as the overcard that Mahar will be faced with navigating. Yeah, not really a card that interacts with the flop. You see backdoor spades rolling off. Rakita gonna struggle. Should he face more heat from Mahar as it checks through to the Dusa Club's river? And now a few options on the table for Roland. Could block, check the side. It 
is a card that doesn't rate to be a problem for Queen-5. If it was good prior, it should be good now. A little 25K bet is called by Nuita, who will get the best of Rakita once more. This time at Showdown. Yeah, unavoidable spot there for the Austrian. I like to call a modern day cooler. Blind v blind. You're leaning in, Ali. That man might look familiar to those of you who have been soaking up our streams thus far. Henry, tell them why. Well, he's our GG Super Millions Live Edition champion, Santos Savannah. Taking down event number one for 700k, India's first ever Triton champion. And I want to say our first ever player from India coming to a Triton series. Agreed. I'll go with that. Had a sizable rail out here supporting him. It's good to roll with a crew. I think he travels heavy, you know, not as heavy as Paul, you know, but still heavy. Paul meaning Uncle, Uncle Paul? Paul? Yeah, Uncle Paul, always traveling heavy. I'm actually always traveling heavy as the check-in agent at the airport is always quick to advise me, trying to shake a few extra euros due to the weight limitations. Really? For baggage. 50 they, they kilos got me for first like, class last time I checked. Got, what are you bringing? Well, first off, you welcome aboard, EasyJet. <laughs> all right? Man books one Emirates first class flight. Now all of a no, sudden he's I'm trying to tell me about it. No, I'm talking about the way you fly. Yeah. Yeah, 50 kilos. Right. So what are you bringing? It, Turkish Airlines doesn't have a first class. They've got a business class. Right, so I, we're still looking at 40 kilos. I exceeded kilos. whatever their limit was, and they shook me down for like 10 bucks. And I looked at the guy, and I was like, we're really going to do this? His answer was a resolute yes. We are going to do this. Would you like to pay with cash or credit? I'm glad they got you. Anyone traveling with more than 40 kilos is uh, asking for it. And we got another person in there? Well, not yet. But if it comes to that, I'd be happy to check you in, Henry. It's a 38-day trip, man. 38-day trip. Good chunk of the closet came with. Jack tin suited. Sounds like you threw a couple of dumbbells in there as well. Definitely not that. Working on them biceps. Definitely not doing that. Kat Lee, working on the big blind of Santos Savarna, but coming with a limp. This Jack tin suited, a function perhaps of that Willingness to let Suvarna commit extra chips. Not going to happen with King Deuce, but on a King 7 3 board, Santosh will be far more ready to send troops to the front lines. Yeah, I think this limp, a byproduct that Savannah has a jamming stack behind, would be a disaster to say 3x and then face the 23, 24 big blind jam. Much prefers check calling or maybe even check jamming. The stab on the flop quickly looked up by the flop top pair. Overcut to the board. Got shot for Kia. Potential double barrel here. We do see, Henry, a lot of times a hand that might have been able to raise pre limp and then just stab at the flop with chips that could have otherwise been a part of a pre-flop raise sizing. There's that. It does happen. Second but barrel, 32K with the Broadway Gutty and Suvarna given that Lee limped pre, unconvinced he's up against a sex and for that matter, unconvinced that he's up against King X. As he calls once more and now Kiat has made a pair of tens. Will he think that they're good enough? 
attempted to turn them into a bluff. His backdoor spades have arrived. Very relevant king of spades for Suvarna. Kiat shuts down. That's a lot of showdown now. Some 7x that were maybe keeping him honest. Savannah. Jamming. The overbet jam. I feel like. We, are we value jamming there? Are we, are we turning our hand into a bluff? I want to say space? it's a little bit more of the ladder just in case kind of thing. Are we trying to get like. I don't know. Don't attempt to explain the decisions of Santos Suvarna as they are uniquely his and his alone. All those decisions took him to glory in event number one. How happy was he, by the way, and his crew for that matter? Yeah. After that, no, I'd love to see it. Obviously, been supporting the Triton Super High Roller Series for a few events now. A couple of close calls. How about this? Six max. Queen 10, Ace Jack, King Queen. All of the offsuit variety. Hello. But it sounds like in just a couple of minutes, Late Reg will be closing. Could see some of the smaller stacks look to just rip it in there and maybe yeah. get another bullet's worth of ammo in front of them. <coughs> and Suvarna, after using a time extension, decides to three-bet this cutoff open from Maharanueda. Chris Burrer. King Queen offsuit. Pitched. Why use the time bank, Santosh? Keep it. I'm thinking if I bust, I can re enter the rewards. <laughs> 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 huh? Last hand. Last hand again. Huh? Yes. Uh, this was the last hand? To re enter, yeah. 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 Oh. Last way. <laughs> I'm thinking last we hand to re enter. Or not. <laughs> got knocked out that handy. Yeah. You can re enter. How about this one? No. No. Okay. Nah, Welcome, Christoph Vogelsang. Okay. <laughs> if you food, you, don't, you gamble everything. <laughs> Take back to 100k. Skipped the football this morning. Hello. Bumped Hello. into him. He said, Henry, I'm still on UK time. I'm a couple of hours back, an 11 a.m. kickoff. It's a bit oh. too early for his liking. Yeah, you think UK time is an issue? Mm -hmm. I came from 10 hours earlier in time when granted five days ago <laughs> vogel's transit could have been a little more recent than my own as it's mucked around to the blinds and chris brewer looks down at an ace and blind v blind is going in yeah going to work on roland rakita no rebuy option, Actually, no reinterruption, I should say, okay. for Akita as that last hand was the last chance to fire a reentry. Timing could not be worse for him to have to draw a line in the sand with this Queen 10 in terms of it needing to work out with 44% equity. And it looked like it might have when the 10 <coughs> rolled off, but. With an ace behind it, Rakita is queen and ten hunting. Now add jacks to the equation. He's well aware that was a good card for him, but the river, seven of spades, and a light wrap of the rail as the Austrian will be unable find his way into day two here in the mystery bounty with Reg closing just a hand to go. Chris Brewer picking up the tokens. Yeah. Regaining the chip lead. 
taking it away from Stephen Chidwick. I can confirm the number of entries in this one, Ali, 155, generating a total prize pool of 4,650,000, half of that going into the bounty side, which will be announced tomorrow. The other half going into the payouts part. 540,000 going to the eventual champion. 23 places paid. In cash of 27,000. Good luck, gentlemen. I cashed a satellite because of that. Someone got knocked out in the big and, and do a skip the big line. Yeah. The first 25k, we should just play it with like the skip big line thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the goofiest way I've ever made the money. So, how do you just skip it? So, for example, they never play. do one. They never do one big, so like the stop would just be the small line. And they would I think the it's easier line. to program or something, probably. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but like in satellites, it ends up being like an insane thing when it happens. <laughs> Ace King here for Kiat Lee. Someone is. Yo, I'm just gonna be big blind. Dude, literally, it was like four of us were all gonna be like all in the same order. Upstairs. He left. Huh. New strategy, I like it. Yeah. No, like just points. limping. Misclick. Was that a misclick? Was that a facetious claim? As Brewer says, new strategy, I like it. Sort of teasing. Kiat, now Jack-5 offsuit for Vogel saying Up goes the hoodie. You could make it 15 like Nick. Huh? I think the limp due to the fact that we have a dead small. So big blind only. Lee mixing it up. Meaning we're less incentivized to put the raise in there. As yeah, I'm not too the sure. Jack high board, giving Kristoff top pair. Both players with the flush draw clearly advantage Kiat Lee with the nut flush draw. As the Vogel saying check draws what almost looks like a really, I could have any two sort of 10K barrel there just aesthetically. Yeah, the limping part of the range is going to contain you know, some offsuit nine tens. Broadway type holdings. We're in a very weird part of the game tree here. Dead small blind. Limp from the hijack off of 60 plus big blinds. Safe turn for Vogelsang. Up to 70% of the equity. Needs to fade an ace, king, or a diamond. SPR of around 3.5. 50k in the middle, board pairing on the turn. Can't want to build this one in the interests of potentially taking it down here, and obviously with outs. If he doesn't, we've got our answer. I like the bet. Feels it's, nice. Yeah, I mean, he can still have the best hand here. He can get king x, queen x of diamonds to continue. Drawing dead to pair outs. It's also nice to build a pot when it does roll off. Oh, Chris. With the check call. 82,000 in the middle. Fogel sang the effective stack as the Queen of Spades completes the board. Can't Lee. Going to need to either bluff Vogelsang off this hand or rethink his limping strategy. Maybe kicking himself. This one always feels somewhat self-inflicted. You give the Jack 5 a free flop. Is an overcard to the Jack and the 9. Two X pot jam would be sexy, although... 
I don't think we get to polarize with flushes on a pad board against the 100% range. It's going to go 75% pot. Well, not quite the sex appeal you sought, but certainly meaningful enough sizing to leave Kristoff a bit concerned. The queen actually a decent card for him insofar as he's going to be playing it as a kicker. Well, there's that, but it's also a pretty bad card in terms of some of the natural double barrel bluffs, like king, queen, queen, 10. With a diamond. Yep. Even without a diamond, those hands have equity against pairs. <laughs> <laughs> Lee gives him a bit of a nod. Vogel saying, folding the best hand there. Well aware that with some frequency, he put a winner in the bin. I think that shake of the head. Yeah. For himself. Knowing that he kind of got away with one there. After misclicking pre. It does happen to the best of us. Gatley is certainly in the conversation. Suvarna, min raise open. Levels are just 35 minutes long. If it seems like they're coming around at a brisk pace, it's with good reason. And good reason is Vogel saying, shipping it from the button as he's looked down at Ace Jack. One big piece. See if Savannah wants to spin the wheel here. Feels a little bit too much. Does make the fold. Yeah, he would agree with you. So Christoph back up to starting stack. Only 20 big blinds. Back over to our other featured table where Jason Kuhn is fresh off that victory in event number two, picking up his sixth title in the 20K 7 Max and threatening to pick up a seventh before it's all said and done as he has set his sights on Stephen Chidwick at the top of the Ivan Liao Player of the Year Award leaderboard. Twenty to go, it would appear, from Mario Mosbach. Yeah, Mosbach feeling it. And King Six suited. Almost first time today I've played six handed. Yeah. Yeah, right. I really like that actually. Oh, All right. Yeah. yeah. Very engaging. No takers. I don't, usually I make the sauna time, you see, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's, it's a touch yeah. too hot in that one. Come on. You don't think so? Oh, hotter the better, bro. I have to agree with Jason. I don't want to go in there with you when you're like all like eight packs. Sauna packs, talk? Like, like sitting next to you, like, like, yeah, yeah. It was so funny. That guy. When we were in Japan uh, with Soisa, it was so funny. I came out of the, what are they called, onsens or whatever. Yeah. And uh, his buddies. His buddies, I'd never met them before, and I, I came out of the onsen, and they came outside, and they started poking me. <laughs> they were like, whoa! This is, I was like, come on, guys, we haven't even met yet. You're just poking me? Very funny. 
I don't know what onsen etiquette is, but I would imagine that poking strangers doesn't fall within the realm of acceptability <laughs> as we see the ace 10 deuce board, a very spicy one for Mosbach, the defender from the beat blind against this suited wheel ace for Sosha, which is top pair, but up against the steel wheel draw. It does not want to improve to aces and fives. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Ali. Poking people in the onsen area. Strictly prohibited in my onsen. Little down bet, 25% pots. A few options on the table here for Mosbog, but likely a defend under the gun v big blind. Ex-football professional turned poker pro. Does go for the check raise. And all of a sudden, potential 90 big blind pots on the horizon between Cecilia Jiang and Mosbok. Jiang, I believe, has Mosbok covered ever so slightly. Roughly level stacks here. She's going to call the extra 40K, see what's what on the turn with the benefit of position. A whiff in the form of an eight of diamonds for Mosbach. And how does he want to proceed? One, six, nine in the middle. Bit of an awkward SPR. Check raise flop. SPR still north of two. Having to bet forward is obviously an, an absolute disaster this deep. If he came out firing. But he's not going to slow down. Maybe just thinking that Jang doesn't really have many jams, even with hands like ace-10, ace-king, aces. Would opt to just flat in position. What a strange game we all choose to play for a living. They're just exchanging words. Engaging in a friendly conversation. Now they're going to war yep. in the 30K buy-in tournament with one card to come. And no rebuys available. And that card pairs the board with the deuce as Jang invested a quarter of a remaining stack in the form of the 100K call. And now with 369 in the middle, sub-1 SPR. And the nut low. What will Mosbach do? Pretty bad card in terms of trying to get hands exactly like this to fold now, given that the pair, sorry, the board has paired on the river. See it chopping with hands like a6, a7, a9. Having a five for Jiang, pretty bad. Blocking hands like 5-4, five, 5-3. Five, Still a ton of value hands for Mosbok to have ace-deuce, ace-ten, deuces, as he does follow through and triple off. He's emptied the clip, Arlie. Willing to risk it all here. And certainly that is not the response you want. Out of the opposition, a lean in, a verification of the sizing. You'd rather just get the snap fold. Yeah. When you don't get the snap fold, you're like, okay. Strap in. Heart rate up through the roof. Forget saunas and onsens. How about triple barreling with just four high? Yeah, that'll make you sweat. Maybe not Mosbok. Stoic as ever. Looking pretty steely here as Jiang deliberates. So much miss. It does. All that inside Broadway stuff, all those spade draws, she unblocks all of it. Doesn't feel like she's up against an ace. Take a decent amount of the deuce X out of the equation as well, and then where do we put Mosbach in terms of hands that beat us. Well, there's only what one combo of ace deuce suited left. Does he check raise with ace deuce? Seems likely, but there are going to be some check calls in there. Ace ten. 
All of those available, of course. Deuces, tens, and then as you mentioned, all of the broadways, the flush draws. I think broadways are more likely to check call. As her cards hit the mark. Sweet relief for Mosbach as Jiang can't click call and take down the pot. Not to mention send Mario packing, so. Mosbach getting away with one there after bricking the steel wheel. Living life on the edge, taking that high variance line. To a very playable 65 big blinds now. So like, you might win this and then still have to wait a day or two before you do the draw. Draw for what? Right? For the mystery bounty? Yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's good. It's much oh, better than last isn't time. Isn't it delayed? Oh, yeah. yeah, much yeah. Better um, they should have like a player's party and do it. Like just only yeah. do a player's party. That's a great oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's how they should do it. Everybody has a fun squat. Is this... Carry over run good from the event he just took down is Jason Kuhn. The sim feels skewed very much in his favor for the time being as he looks down at these pocket aces. Yeah, New arrival to the table. We were just kind of waiting around and then you joined us for flips. Oh yeah, we cracked. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it cost you. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. $800. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Huh? So, so it sounds like... Okay. Decision has been made to wait a couple of days for the bounties to be pulled due to some feedback from the players. It's a lot of disturbance in Vietnam, having to pause one of the other tournaments in order to draw the bounties. So we'll see. I know, Ali. I know. I'm with you. You mean they weren't happy? The highlight of my whole trip must be deferred. Sounds like it. Double gutter here for Socia Jang. On the heels of having put a winner into the muck, defender from the big blind, certainly things could have been worse for her against the aces of Jason Kuhn. Checks with the flow, 55K in the middle, and Jason with just 90 back. Sprinkles, 25 of it out there. Uh, JK going to make this a two-street hand. Wants to get value, but also some protection needed. Double gut shot, but could very easily be up against a hand like Ace King. What's she thinking about here, Henry? Flat call for the time being. I think the deliberation is check jam. You know, it gets difficult on brick turns to then realize her full equity, as we can see here. So check jamming, maybe getting some folds. Putting a hand like 10x in a tough spot. Obviously still has plenty of equity should she get called. Fold out some ace fours, ace fives. Definitely never folding out ace ace, but also not drawing dead against it either. Deuce of diamonds turn over a hundred in the middle. And the last 65 is submitted by Kuhn. And so she's going to take her chances and Hunt the queen or the eight. Gut shot, right? yeah. Coon. Hoping to hold here. Yeah, getting three to one on a call almost. We can see that she's only got 18% equity, but sometimes her king's going to be live as well as the ace mm. on the river, just a formality. JK improving to a set of aces. Unnecessarily. He doubles just and aces. the... Just aces. 
downward trajectory continues for Sasha Jang. I never know mine. Hold up. Uh, Let me see. I think I do know mine. One, four, seven. Thank you. Close. Hello. Do, do you know your birthday, Harley? Do I know my birthday? I mean, it's something that sometimes forget. What? No, it isn't. Okay. Do you know your birthday, Henry? I do, but, you know. But some people don't? Apparently. Outside of, like, hospice? For what? <laughs> For what? what about it's poker not, hospice? Oh yeah, we are. But not, Quick peek no, at the chip counts not, there. It's never us. It's always them. Yeah, it's always them. They're, they're, the, they're the star to the table, so... That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently on you, Danny. Time. <laughs> 1.3 million plus for Tang. Boss stack here at our red featured table. Third overall in the field, which no. currently shows none other than Stephen Chidwick no. No. in the lead. <laughs> well, because yesterday you told me, um, you know, Kelly was your bestie, so, yeah. Kelly was what? Is your bestie. Did I? Yeah, because I want to hand this to him. You were like, you call my best friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kings against Jacks, huh? Yeah. True. Mosbach 3 betting the button with Queen 10 off suit. Seeking privacy against Alexander Shalukin. Who's your best friend, Ali? Hmm. Would it disappoint you to learn it isn't you? <laughs> why, I mean, you why you, you are my to, friend. To mute the mic. I was going to sneeze. Oh, ah, okay. Thank you. Oh, three bet part, button be cut off. Have a think about it. I know who it is. King six tray. As dry and disconnected as it can get. Betting lead, Mosbok. Range advantage, Mosbok. 141 in the middle. The product of. Can you add up to some shenanigans? No. Mosbok's inflation. Pre. Questionable bet with King High. He's like the nicest guy alive. He's such a nice guy. Dude, Kiet's so nice. I know he's your best buddy, but. Bro, he is such a nice guy. I don't think I've ever seen him be a dick once, ever. So you can find all of us here have been dicks before? I'm mean, definitely fine. <laughs> I've been. If you compare someone to yourself, I mean, he's he's pretty solid. Like, it can be going pretty bad for him, and he's pretty classy. You know Mossbox I mean? pretty solid, too, but 14,000 doesn't feel like the kind of figure that's going to shed anything. And, in fact, it is such a sheepish figure that it has left the Russian emboldened like enough to again. check Rays. I know, but it's going to get better, right? It seems like there's a lot of people playing. They're just... Is it? Know? I mean, there's a ton of people playing in Manila, I think. Right? And this is part of the problem with being this bashful in terms of sizing post pre-flop 3-bet. Yeah, it feels self-inflicted. Yeah, I know. I love it. I mean, I get three x to forty two. I get it though. Like, like I love short deck, obviously. Oh my, Ali! Strap it's yourselves in, game, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's this one is not taking money. shape in the manner that you and I would have expected, and certainly I would get the sense that the viewing public feels the same. As we've got two and a quarter in the middle here. But you, it's like Omaha. You can't play no Omaha. Was seeking some equity on the turn. The eight of diamonds doesn't give him any, but it certainly does give. The Russian, plenty in the form of the nut flush draw. He's got the best hand already, doesn't know it. I haven't played it a ton, but I just don't know when is my hand good. That's the, that's the, that's the thing. I, I, bet, I had to bet for Quad. one bottom yesterday. If you flop quads, that's a pretty good hand. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, but, that, but then I don't know how to get value. Like yesterday, oh, I thought I had the guy. 
I, I play cash game, right? I fire the guy. It was like, it comes like eight. I if Mario goes back, for the double eight, float, eight, eight, eight. I'll tell you what. Wait, what was it? Three, three, eight. Goes check, check. Turn, Go out there and give him a hug. A ten and nine jack. Okay. I'm like, yeah. Suspicions were right on the flop, unfortunately. Yeah, Backdoor diamonds the have given Alexander enough kit to double barrel. And he checked, and I just snap check. I'm like, okay, I have King 10. I'm like, yeah, that's no king good. Ten high. Yeah, I have King 10 high. I'm like, shit, oh yeah. 110k, <laughs> ultimately. And he just rolls over King Queen, like, King Queen. Being seven, too rich. Like, two, you know, and so. he scoops. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Sounds like I want to be playing in this game. Yeah, Getting a look at a an interesting line oh there God. from Shalukin. Remember the first PLO uh, tournament we had was in Montenegro, and everyone played, and no one knew how to play. It was <laughs> fucking hilarious. The biggest pot that I saw was like a 200 big blind pot where a guy like kept raising with one spade in his hand, but he like didn't realize you need to play two, two cards. <laughs> oh, so he wasn't bluffing. He yeah, thought that he thought he was like raising like. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to have been around for those games. I mean, come on. How many years ago was this? People how much would I have lost? 25k <laughs> and not knowing that. Come on, dude. It happens. It happens today. How does a World Cup sound to you? I mean, it's got obviously going to be great for Pocket America. nines for... Shalukin. The Triton World Cup. I'm always down. I mean, yeah, obviously, you're down for anything, but I'm just saying, like, what, what does the idea sound like? It sounds fun. I've talked to you about this before. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like the idea of it. Obviously, it's great for America, and America probably need, like, I don't know, three to four teams. Maybe. 22K <laughs> open gets flatted by the lovely suited connector in the cutoff from Mosbach, who is looking for round two, and now Socia Jang on the button. Pocket eights and 178k back. We could never get the format right. Jams it, Henry. Oh, she is in dire straits here. As it falls back round to Alexander. You can see one of her eights already hit the mark. Yep. I don't think I would make the UK cut, for real. Yeah, but wouldn't it be fun to be Stevie's teammate? Yeah, for sure, but I just legit don't think they would select me. But, but it's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, Alex with the rejam. Mosbok forced to get out of the way. That was the idea, of oh, course. No, man. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Eight. Maybe you get the live suits. Oh, oh. yeah. Too much excitement. Raging. Suit. She's breaking stuff already. <laughs> yeah. And they will select the. Get two yeah, live suits. You're yeah. already there, basically. But I, mean, then I, I think really a five, six, yeah. seven. A lot of people I watch that. That's what I mean. Yeah. That, that's exactly you know what, what I mean. mean. Like, so she has eight. There's 17, 17 different conversations way. going on. Yeah, unapproved on the 10 6 tray board. That's why. Yep. Jang looking for a club yeah, or an eight. Courtesy of that ace yes. in a 403k pot, which holds her tournament life in the balance. Oh. And the oh. eight. Rolling no right problem. off. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Eight ball pocket. corner pocket for Jiang to get out of jail and back up. Yeah. Boy, 40 big blinds. That was a swift kick in the Piroshki. Uh, you can't have 9A clubs, liar. So I don't mind talking about it, like, even okay, on TV, like, yeah. giving away ideas. <laughs> Yeah, but Bluffing like, out of the hand. The one thing we can like, 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 do is like, let's, let's say let's say there's a team of, of I don't know five ten or ten oh, five or six. Okay, sorry, I thought it was nine eight clubs. For one per, one player yeah. can play one event. Nine eight clubs they would have. I don't know one play heads up, no limit. One play six max. One play short deck. One play yellow. One play. I mean, it wasn't even possible. Full ring or whatever. I don't know. Oh, Alexander taking one on the chin there as we swing it back over to the other featured table where it's looking considerably less chatty. Oh man, I love this job. How are you feeling, Ali? You ready for another 13 days? Your 38 day trip? We've got no choice, my friend. When they play, we call it. Where are you off to afterwards? This one only being a 16 day trip. 
going to go to Paris, Mexico City. That's oh, back home. Yeah. There we go. Enjoy Paris. Strictly Paris? shopping, 24 hours, in and out. Paris end of May. It's a nice time. You can hear a lot of English on the Champs-Élysées. I hope you can't. Unfortunately, you can. Reminds me of Rome in the summer. Don't go to hear Italian. Sprechen Sie Anglais? Oh, no. Yeah. Jog on. The Brits are so arrogant, man, when it comes to languages, honestly. I know you Americans are as well, but... Here we go to France, Spain, Italy. Excuse me. Excuse me, mate. Do you speak English? Come on. <laughs> Ollie's face right now, I mean. Listen, how many people are in Ireland? Is it more or less than the city of Los Angeles? Well, that's a great question. It's I'm going to say less. LA, what, 12 mil? Feels right. Brewer, 20K. His spades have Vogel saying smothered, but the suited connector for the German obviously piquing his interest. Makes the call. Bought up to 55,000. No connections in either seat as 61 runners left here in event three. Check bet fold as that one wraps up quickly. What were you on about there, Henry? T language arrogance of Brits and Americans whilst traveling? Yeah, Is that right? Know. Do you speak English? A reasonable yeah, question if you don't speak whatever the native language well, is as a tourist. You go to France, Paris in particular. Mm -hmm. Good luck getting that one through in a pastry shop. More like... Right. Not sure how much English you need to speak in a pastry shop. Okay, sir. Good you luck to you in France. Clearly, the Chocolat, first timer in Paris. You know, 10 to 12th, but you know. Good read. Then you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're just deliberately being... No, you just walk up, you point at the pastry okay. you want, you grab it for okay. euros, you throw it at Pierre, and you're on. You know? Why do you have to bring Pierre into this? Because he works at the pastry shop. Leave Pierre alone. It's my guy. How cool does Kevin Pake look right about now? You see that? He's chilling. He is indeed. Six max is four to eight. Got slumped down in the chair there. Looks like the day has been a little long. Sitting right back up on cue as Suvarna ace nine suited in the Burberry kit. An intern in the hijack. Yeah, jam fine. Min open, call off. Also an option, but got to just rip this one in. Kevin asking for a count on the button. This doesn't feel like posturing. And indeed it isn't, with Queen Jack suited on the button. Has Savannah covered by just 5K. Yeah. Kevin knows that the bounties come into play tomorrow, wants to try and build a stack so he can go bounty hunting on day two. Yeah, as opposed to be bounty hunted. Don't really dominate much. That's that's the issue with Queen Jack flipping at best. Going to be dominated a decent amount of the time as well. Hands like King Queen, King Jack, Ace Jack, Ace Queen, all jamming. Yeah, this hand is more a sub. This is sub more like a, equation. Yeah, it's like more like a thirty big blind rejam spot where you can fold out some King Queen O's, some Ace Jack O's. It's going to think this one through. Really chewing on it. Not referring to his lower lip, just kind of more metaphorically. Five 
Haas eventually decide to get out of the way. Wow, and a king jack and another queen jack behind him. Both mucking as well. How about that? Take it down, Santosh. Yeah, Santosh with a bit of a menacing glare and a smirk there. There's nothing menacing Putting about Kevin Santosh. Through the blender. That Maybe man feels like he got him to fold a better hand. He's a teddy bear. He is. One of the biggest. How are you feeling, Henry, as I throw the question back at you? I don't know. don't really know how to... Don't want to dig back into the Brits and Americans abroad. But I feel like you knew exactly what I was talking about there, you know? You've seen it. I know you're a man of culture, but... Uh, yeah, they're, they're not the best tourists. <laughs> I say they because I don't align myself there with that sensibility. There we go. I that know sensibility. you disassociate yourself with. You're a cultured man, I get it. You're out here speaking 17 different languages. I've heard you speaking here in Parsi and Spanish, English. I like to flex whatever part of the brain is associated with language. What is it? Broca? Is that, is that the region associated with speech? I'm no neurologist, but I feel like I'm onto something there. It's Pake. On to the King Salmon Premium from the cutoff. Limping. B R O C A S. Little tickle, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Broca's area? Here we go. It's the motor speech area. Kevin with the cut off limp. Trying to see a flop with a suited king. Kat says go ahead. With 6-4, which turns into a gut shot straight draw up against Trips. That's a fun flop. Potential double up spot for Kevin here. Could see Lee pounce. Forty-two K in the middle. Kevin gonna fire out a big blind and now action on Lee. Check raise, check call. Check all lead turn. Oh, here comes the heat. Can't blame Kiat for this line here. Obviously, range advantage feels like it's his out of the big on this board texture. Yeah, not at all. Can fold out a bunch of queen high, king high, ace highs, has equity against hands that want to continue, even against trips, still has 14%. You don't expect Pake to be doing anything trappy as a limper from the cutoff in that stack depth here, late stages, but once he calls the check raise, questions start to formulate in our mind as Lee improves to sevens and sixes, Obviously still needs to hit that straight card on the end in the form of a five to have hopes of taking this one down. Turning some equity, SPR less than one. on the turn and if we're Kevin Pake we have to feel like King 7 is so good so often with 103 back though 
He's going to flat, Henry. Yeah, you, you know, Kiat's just going to have hands that are dead in this spot. Well, he wasn't dead until the nine of clubs rolled off. And where will Kiat Lee go from here? Rainbow board on the turn. So some of the hands that bet called the check raise with some backdoor flush draw. Oh, Kiat's going to empty the clip, and this one's going to get snapped off by Kevin Pack as he scoops in a 310,000 chip pot. Back up to north of starting. And a bit of breathing room. The playable 25 big blinds now. Kiat Lee's aggression does run into top of range. Easy to be results oriented, Ali. How do you, you feel about the, the jam cards. on the river there? Be honest. I think it's fine. I mean, I think Kevin's going to have ace highs that limp. Called Beck a check call. race, called a turn, though? Yeah. 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 There's going to be some. I mean, we saw Adrian Mateus call down a triple barrel from Boss with ace queen on a 6 5. Sorry, seven six three, king, ten board. Called flop, called turn, boss jammed river, and Adrian called with ace queen. Was he good? No. <laughs> Bullet number five. <laughs> Looks like he's still in the mix with bullet number five. Currently sat in 49th with 18 bigs. Well, whenever the hood goes up, we know Christoph Vogel saying we'll be entering the pot. TBD, in what manner? Off of 200K with this King Jack off suit. The German drops 24,000 out there. Min Ray's open. Ace seven for Suvarna in the big. Would love nothing more than for him to pull his hoodie up over his head for a dueling hoodie flop. I would pay good money to see it. And just stare down Vogelsang in the process as he slowly lifts up the hoodie. All in. Play all in. Oh. Wow, this is a pretty gangster jam. Yeah. Christoph Snap asking for a count. The Santosh. Santosh was doing this all day yesterday. He sure was to great effect, by the way, Henry. It felt like he picked good times to make these sorts of moves. Might this be yet another example of that? A hundred percent is. I mean, King Jack in a tough spot. Does make the call and cards on their back. Savannah with the best of it, going to be happy with this development when he does get called to not be shown a bigger race. Christoph with two live cards, but the worst of it. Benefit of having Suvarna covered ever so slightly, though, as they jockey. Ace in the window, followed by an eight and a four, as it is an all Suvarna affair with 338 in the middle. And Vogel saying we'll draw dead, courtesy of an eight on the turn, inconsequential river, and indeed, Suvarna, yet again, demonstrating kind of newfound aggression, this I almost want to call the, it. Yeah, this could be the trip, man. I mean, seems like a different play. By the way, from an emotional regulation point of view, Bar the win, obviously, where the excitement and the happiness was expressed, but seems more composed and stoic at the table as well. Less emotional, taking the spots as and when they present themselves. Even there on the ace eight four, refusing to celebrate on the flop, knowing two cards to come, and we got a bit of a different Santosh here. That Triton title, first Indian to ever take down a Triton event. You know, or even the Indian flag proudly here in northern Cyprus. I love that you mentioned that, Henry, because as I think back to his presence 
I last September, time around. Yeah, yeah it, it just it was a very different affect out there on the felt versus what we're seeing here. I think it's certainly a byproduct of who's at the table. Look at this lineup. We have Stone Cold Killers. He seems to be more dialed in and less chatty when that's the case. Bring in Uncle Paul. Bring in Leon Sukunik, and I'm sure some banter will be exchanged. But for now, he's just, you know, paying attention. Well, bring in Leon Sukunik, and Santosh will immediately break into a cold sweat as the PTSD of the coin rivet will certainly be upon him. For those that don't know what we're talking about, simply go back and stream the bubble <laughs> from the 200K Invitational at our last Cypress Festival, and you'll know exactly what we mean. As Kevin Pake's King Queen from under the gun made it 24K to go. Vogelsang promptly sailing in his final 40. Perhaps presumptuous doesn't have to be his final 40. I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm laughing at thinking back to that Leon Santosh hand last uh, hand of day it, one. It was from it's a like planet Le other than Earth. It's like, Leon, what are you doing? <laughs> He's just <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm your friend. <laughs> Why are you going all in, you know? It's brilliant. Well, going all out is Kiat Lee with the ace 10 suited there, Henry. Yeah, facing the under the gun open. A modest jam over the top of it. The door would be open for Kevin to obviously come over the top. That departure, by the way, is a very key one in terms of Vogelsang's ability to win this pot. What can Christoph do what Santos just did to him? The over-under to the two Broadway cards. Let us find out. With 110 in the middle, King Jack 6. It's all Pake for the time being. Turn card is a deuce. And one of those aces in the muck already out of Kiat Lee. So it's an actual two outs. For Vogel saying, neither of which materialize on the river. So a late end to his event number three. GG's Vogel saying, one of the legends of the game. Nothing materializing in the first three events, but still plenty more fights. Well, you probably already know that our official online poker sponsor is GG Poker. But did you know that new players can sign up and be showered with a whole host of bonuses? We've got daily Triton free rolls and opportunities to qualify for Triton events. Goodies galore. Keep watching for more details or just head on over to the GG site. Utilize the promo code. What is the promo code? <laughs> Where did it go? Triton underscore 2023. I lost it there for a moment. I saw your finger trailing across the paper. I was like, all right, pay the bills, Ali. Come on. Passwords given out throughout the day. 200 million guaranteed across that festival. Nine qualifiers into event number one. One of them made the final table, did they, they did not? Indeed. Was yes. it Heidorn? Tobias. Tobias, correct, yes. Meanwhile, Mahar Noida with ace four suited, being three bet by the ace five suited of Kiat Lee. A couple of hearts find their way into the muck. That is problematic for Noida. I really like this at this stack depth. North of 40. Just taking the reins in terms of aggression post flop. See if Maher wants to come back with a little bite of his own. Certainly a four-bet opportunity at this stack depth. He's shown he has some moves. He's thinking about it, Ali. The devil on the shoulder. Pitchfork, red cape, know him well. Brandishing the old 4-bet logo, but the cards hit the mark. Gave it some thought. Nice little pick up there from Kiat. He's got that weird thin mustache, too. It 
Kia or? No, 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 the devil. Okay. Cat doesn't have a weird thin mustache. I don't know, man. You've said stranger things before. Confirmed. Noida did have the looks of a man who was being prodded by a pitchfork. Ultimately, into the bin it went. Getting to those final levels of the day, Henry. You know, there's a few who make a subconscious decision to coast their way into day two. Others who identify the propensity for some to be guilty of that, and then they pounce, as Kevin Pake certainly seems poised to do with a couple of kings here in the small blind facing the Savarna Open. Please click, Kevin. Small. Induce the jam. 75K, yeah, does that qualify? Yeah, three is smallish, given that it is from the small blind. And just sending the message that, hey, I still have fold equity. You can still fold if you jam. Daring Santosh to come over the top. Shout out Ike Haxton, by the way. Go on. Okay. You guys are going to see him. Don't know if he's going to the beach or to go and play cricket. The orange swag. Ah, yes. Kind of a technical pant there. Ready for a three-day test. I'm very, very lucky. Shout out Jason Kuhn coming over to the broadcast booth. Self-proclaimed luck box. Skill box, too. <laughs> and look at Suvarna making good decisions, Henry. He was thinking about it. You're allowed to think about it. Burn a time extension if you need to. But just don't burn chips in a bad spot. I'm telling you now, Santosh, another final table this trip. I can feel it. Version 2.0 is upon us. Different man. He's been in the lab, and it's very evident. Very, very evident. Kevin Pack taking that one down. Jason suggesting that Pake is wearing a pricey piece of Audemars Piguet. It is indeed. What else? Is that the gold royal oak? You're going to spend all that money on one of the best six max no limit cash game players in the world. Well, I can point you to several places where you can punt large sums. Consider myself an expert in punting, if I'm honest. Jack-Jack-10 with a couple of diamonds here. Lovely development for Kiat Lee, who's got trips and the desire to let Kevin Pake go to work on him. One wouldn't blame Kevin for doing so with Ace-10 here in a 66,000 chip pot. Yeah, disastrous development for Kevin. Bottom V, big blind, ace 10. Going to be the best hand a decent amount of the time. And a bunch of gut shots, straight draws, flush draws that Kia could obviously have. Weaker 10x. There's the check raise promptly and with such wet texture. It doesn't have to be a jack that Pake is up against. Though we do presume that the draws be a little bit more content to just check call, try to realize equity. Or what do you think, Henry? Well, there's that. There's also the history between the two where Kevin limped with the king seven, can't check raise with the gut shot. So maybe that kind of playing through Kat's mind now wants to wants to mix with value. Also Absolute blank on the turn, by the way. Forgive me for the interruption as Pake made the call and now 178 in the middle, Henry. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, a hand like Queen Jack, flopping trips, decent amount of turn cards that end up causing Kevin to slow down. So in terms of extracting value, 
Check raising makes a ton of sense. Should a diamond roll off, you know, makes it a lot harder to get value from a 10. Over pairs, ace king, ace queen. Ninety five K from Kiat on the turn. Two tone texture. Might be showers for Kevin here if a brick rolls off. Be very impressed if he can get away from not two pair. Especially on a ball texture like this. He's going to make this call. I think a diamond on the end helps him find the exit. Diamond certainly does. Queen, king, or a nine also helps. Diamond could also slow Kiat down, potentially. We don't know. Yeah, but the five of clubs, that's the kind of card that you had in mind. They could find Pake. This is tough. Kiat's done a great job at setting up a very natural SPR as well, going to the river for around 0.66. And with everything bricking, question's going to be asked of Kevin. Yep. And it's the kind of question that requires one's entire stack to be answered. I'll take a bit of time to mull this one over. When it's a player of Kiat's caliber who's capable of having the bluffs here, Yeah, the irony is when you do get called in these spots and you are bluffing, it isn't a function so much of disrespect as it is respect. Yeah, of course, especially at this level of the game. You know, if that's me tripling off against you, Ali, I've got at least a full house. Quads plus. Quads plus. <laughs> when is Kiat Lee? He can have the queen nines, the nine eights, the nine sevens. Sure. In spades as well, where added equity obtained on the turn. Yeah. And those combos are unblocked by Pake. Queen 989. He's flicked in. The, no, he hasn't flicked in the one chip. I do apologize. That was a time bank. Yeah. Extension. It's flick and say goodnight, by the way. Lights out. For Pake. Is it a jack or nothing at all? Is 100%. basically what Pake's thinking? Yeah. 100%. Trips minimum. That is a good fold, sir. Sure is. That is an incredible fold. One that allows him to live and fight on. Bit of a disrespectful fold, not going to lie, I mean, I'm out of there. Kiat can have the king, queen, the queen, nine. Out of there in terms of the oh, event. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm yeah. back to the hotel room, you know. Yeah. That's a world-class fold. And I jest, of course, about the disrespect. Nothing but respect between these two. Hence the call on the flop and turn, but ultimately... Coming to the right decision on the river. It did feel like the kind of board that really <coughs> Pake deserved to be calling Kiat on. Rather, Kiat deserved to be getting called on. These guys don't have their results courtesy of bad decisions, though, do they, Henry, as we see Anson Yu joining the party. Promptly participating with the king queen off suit. Just a skosh north of the min raise open. Yeah, Santosh unable to defend. The invitation extended by Anson, but Jack 3 0. Not enough. As we head towards the final break of the evening in about 10, 15 minutes time. We'll play two more levels. The remaining players will bag and tag and then they'll come back for the bounty part of the tournament. Start of day two 
Bounties will be in play. 23 places paid in this one with a min cash of 27,000. Top prize of $540,500. So it remains to be seen as to what bounties players will be pulling for. $2.3 million in the bounty prize. I'm I can't wait. I'm saying 500k, man. I mean, that would be an amazing envelope. That's like 20%. Meanwhile, Kiat Lee Don't heating do it, up. Santosh. Pocket aces from the button opening to 28,000, and the queen nine suited is a bit tempting. Flat call, though. Nothing further. As Suvarna in trouble, not just against Kiat Lee, but obviously against Brewer, who. Understandably, joins things with Queen Jack from the big 96,000 out there. And this Jack High rainbow board, bit of a setup for Brewer. Top pair, decent kicker. Dry ball texture. Bunch of gut shots out there as well. I'm blocking. Some of the backdoor flush draws. 96k in the middle. Cat Lee on a bit of a heater after flopping that trip queens, getting two streets of value from Kevin, and now getting at least one street of value from Santosh with the queen nine of diamonds. Yeah, with Excited. Brewer behind him. This is something I didn't expect. The check call, looking for equity on the turn. The queen nine wrapped around the jack, backdoor diamonds, you know. Let's see a turn dealer. Brewer has other plans. Sure does. Looking for focus and clarity. Brewer, three X's to 90,000. And does Kat make noise now, given that Suvarna's still involved, or does he flat... He's a short position from this point forward. He is. Uh, I'm not sure about bet three betting. Not blocking any of the flop pairs. Thus, I'm blocking, you know, sets, two pairs. And that was enough to dispatch Suvarna. <laughs> well, and that is enough to give Brewer the lead. Trip Jacks would have been a diamond draw for Suvarna were he allowed to take the turn. Instead, over 300 in the middle, and Chris Brewer's got Kiat covered. Trip Jacks seems to be the theme of this orbit. Annoying for Kiat, by the way. Doesn't beat any value, obviously. Would Brewer check raise a hand like 10 9, 10 8, 9 8, potentially with a backdoor? It's a sizable turn bet. 200 into 300, two thirds pot. Really signaling to Kiat that, hey pal, we're going to be playing for it all going to the river as there's now 700,000 in the middle. Oh, my word, Ali. Two outer on the end. The big, beautiful ace of clubs giving Kiat Lee top boat. And now Brewer playing 474 effective with 706 in the middle. How can it be anything other than a jam? I think we have ourselves a new tournament chip leader. What we're going to have is... A gentleman with real indigestion. If this jam comes in and Kiat's going to beat him into the pot. Sinking feeling when you get snapped. Perhaps getting ahead of myself, but it sure feels like that's the way this one's going to play out, doesn't it, Henry? Feels unavoidable. Also one of those spots where it's like, okay, what do I get value from? Queens, kings. Tough on this run out. Would a hand like ace, queen, ace, king continue on the turn? It wouldn't, but there we go. 
Snap City from Kia and a 1.65 million chip pot. You see Brewer shaking his head as all we expected comes to pass. Not sure it goes down a whole lot differently if the players switch seats, so situations like that, perhaps no need to be too frustrated, but. No, no, with the Santosh flat, understandable check raise from Brewer out of the big with top pair, wants some protection from gut shots, back doors. So needs some value as well with his top pair. Is he turning trips? Betting two thirds and leaving Kiat drawing to just two outs. And yeah, the ace of clubs on the river. Shout out to Kiat Lee, by the way. Just scooping in the pot like a true professional and not really engaging in some of the conversations that were asked from him. Yeah, that's a mighty pursing of the lips there as Kiat well aware. And he got fairly lucky. Second in chips. I do apologize. First in chips, now ahead of Biao Ding, part of the Malaysian contingent. That show up to these series in force. The big pocket pair brigade, counting Anson Yu among its ranks here, as under the gun with two red queens. He opens, and a queen 10 suited on the button for Suvarna. We'll find him involved. We all felt that one. We've all been there before. Does cast a bit of a wet blanket over the table for a short stint, doesn't That's, it, when yeah. that kind of yeah, yeah. collision takes place. As we Everyone's see, been there. Ace nine five. That pesky overcard to the two queens, leaving Anson Yu to check the flop. Suvarna working the nine of clubs hard, and that eight of clubs on the turn after his check back is a delightful development. Straight and flush draws. It's a fun turn card. Half pot from Anson. All options on the table, bar folding for Savannah. Comes with the call. 160 in the middle, 161 behind. Oh, and the back door clubs roll right in as the board pairs. The gear of Santosh. Anson. Astutely checks. Can't beat a five, can't beat clubs, can't beat an ace. Goes milky. Yeah, Ad can't love this to the list of realities. Really not greedy here. Targeting 10 through kings, weaker ace x, or weak ace x, I should say. And it looks like he's going to get paid. Any extras today, Savannah? Yes, indeed. Up to 406,000 now. As he looks over to his rail. As he scoops in another pot. I mean, no double up by one sound. What a start to the series for that man. And what an end to that frame of play as we've got still a couple of levels left. 35 minutes each before we draw the curtain on today's festivities in event three. Kiat Lee, 138 bigs on the back of that mighty aces full that he binked on the river against Chris Brewer, who's still second in chips with 46 bigs at that table. That look at the chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. Ali Nijad, Henry Kilbane back with you at the break desk. Players going to break. We'll be headed there as well. Why don't we get straight to it? We'll have a chat on the back end when we bring the action sure. back in. Don't go anywhere. Still more to come from here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino after this.
GG Poker. It's the best poker. The song. biggest poker. Song. This is a crazy. No way! <laughs> Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from preflop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Bradley's been looking for a spot. Dealer button. Queen Jack. Ten blinds. Go time. Almost. Effectively. One million into the middle. Leaves himself 175k back. Just in case. 
It goes three bet jam. And both blinds have got playable hands here. Chitwick gets out of the way, leaves it to Marta Rossian's fives. Which ask for a count. And ask for the rest of it as well. Off to the race as we go. Certainly could have been worse spots for Ian Bradley to find himself in here. But two overs will have basically a coin flip mm -hmm. against these two fives in a two and a half million chip pot. Queen 10 4. Top pair for Bradley as he leaps out in front. Just needs to fade a black five. Martirosian slips the prepay out there. Deuce is clean on the turn. And the river. Oh! Nailed it. Where do they come from? Dirty. Yeah, Kuhn would agree. It's Bradley. I'm going to start... Some sort of snake oil app. Block a raw wizard. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Snake oil. They say you need multiple income streams, Randy, to build wealth. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that they had to be legitimate ones, though. Big Just keep me out of this. Hold on. <laughs> Three oh, and this, fours. No, this come is on. This is not fair, is it? Pipped again? Got a huge one. Oh, this <laughs> it can't <laughs> be, can it? <laughs> This guy fair again. Fair every fucking hit, every hand BVB. I think we're going to chop this one. 8, 8, 7, 7, queen. Nice guy, Jason. I don't know about that. Just 17% is Martirosian. There we go. All right, we're going to chop. We can chop this one, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Paired board with a five dangler and a decent amount of the time. 16% to be exact from here forward. These guys will carve it up. Ace on the turn. Now it's 13% of the time. Ace or a five for the chop, a three for the win, and instead a 10 to put the nail in Artur Martirosian's coffin. Jason Kuhn polishing his man off. You got, you just, what can you say to make Artur Martirosian feel any better there? Obviously, he didn't do anything wrong. No. It's not like he needs to beat himself up and go, I made mistakes, pocket queens, pocket threes. Retaining Mateos. Exactly. Now, obviously, he would have given him a visit to the locker room readily had Adrian decided to slide his last 300 in there with that queen high. But Yeah. It's great news for Mateos, though, right? Second life, he shouldn't be here right now if, um, you know, if someone happens to play it differently. So a second suited queen will... Draw the all-in from Adrian. And Barsegian, small blind, A7 suited. This if he's not the customer, <laughs> Kanan behind him is. It's actually um, not quite clear what you're supposed to do if you're of A7 clubs, given you're shorter than the guy in the big blind. Do you mean in terms of fold, flat, or raise, all three yeah, options? I, I think so. It's definitely not something that you visit on a regular basis. You can see that he just calls here. Because what? He goes all in. Big blind wakes up a hand. You actually might bust out before Mateos, who's sitting on just two blinds, uh, depending on how, who wins the hand. GG It's the best poker the biggest Okay. There we are. That seemed like an unscheduled moment there. Late <laughs> night hours. Things like that happen from time to time. Welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. It is event number three, the Mystery Bounty Day 1. 15K toward the prize pool, 15K toward the bounties, none of which are available until tomorrow. Alina Shad alongside Henry Kilbane just cut you loose a few minutes ago, and as we come back, it'll be 6,000, 12,000 with the 12K ante at the top of the leaderboard. Biao Ding, followed by Kiat Lee, who, of course, with aces full against Chris Brewer, picked up a big haul of chips as we take the Triton Poker Plus app. Stephen Chidwick 
Thompson, the Ivan Liao Player of the Year Award, hunting that 200K. Will anyone be able to catch him? That is the question. Danny Tang, Steve O'Dwyer, and a whole host of others over our shoulder as the action continues momentarily. Henry, from that past frame, what stood out? Well, I mean, Kiat Lee, for yeah, one. Obviously, sure. the flopped trips against Kevin, managing to get a couple of streets of value. Then the, obviously, aces against trip jacks of Chris Brewer, that two outer on the river. Uh, Brewer still got chips, though, and as, you know, you get your cage rattled a little bit, sometimes it's tough to, to recenter, but shake it off, I think, would be the advice. Break time definitely going to help with the shaking off there, as it was just, what, a couple of hands before the break. So, yeah, I mean, Chris been around the block long enough to shake those two outers off, but when it's for the chip lead deep into day one, it hurts. It reminds me of in a boxing match, you know, the bell rings right when a guy's in the corner getting maybe roughed up a little bit, and Chris obviously welcoming that break as we send things back into the arena momentarily where the action will be continuing. 50 runners of 155 entries. The night shift. Upon us. 10 and 15,000, the blinds, as they've gone up, yet to be updated there in the Triton Poker Plus app, apologies. Ike Haxton and Morton Klein will be the mayors of this town with 920K apiece. New feature table upon us, Seth Davies, Andre Lubavetsky, Dan Devoris, and Anatoly Zlotnikov rounding things out. Yeah, 1K chips brought out. Chip counts brought to you by Bookmaker. It's the night shift, darling. We've got 70, 70 minutes on the clock. 23 places paid with a min cash of 27,000. And we see all eyes on the top prize of 540,500. And those mystery bounties, from what we heard from Danny Tang and Jason Kuhn, I believe what's been said to the players is a couple of days until we have a bit of lull in the action, if you will to then draw those bounties just to not interfere with tomorrow's tournament. Don't need to talk about it just yet, but come tomorrow, Henry, we're going to be having Have some real word. conversations yeah. about things that look a little different in terms of the play, and it's going to have everything to do with bounty-specific strategies. Yeah. So much value to be gained if you're able to claim pelts, says Davies on the hunt with a couple of nines. Couple of yawns let out there. They've been at it for quite some time today. Some of them starting the day in event two and looking to finish it here in event three. First time I've seen DD this trip at a feature table. And just 17 bigs, and we need to spin the wheel. DD being Dan Devoris, of course. Fifty players remain. 155 entries in this one. Down to one third of the field. Walton Klein. First time I've had the pleasure of seeing him at the feature table as well. Towering figure, by the way, is Morton Klein. Yeah, even for me. I don't know if that's a more normal occurrence for someone like yourself, but not many people I have to look up to. Strange to take credit for something biological that you had nothing to do <laughs> I with. Wasn't and taking, you know, I was just bringing it up. I mean, I like, could have been six three too. I'm not six three. Six. But you four. could have been. What are you six two? Back to the action. Queen five on the button. Those that come on. I know it's the night nice shift. Well, I didn't ask for your mother's maiden name, Henry. Just I didn't know, give how, it. How tall are you? Six five. Are you serious? That was my guess, yeah. Last time it was ten times. What sport did you play? Tennis. I guess height's useful there. What was your highest ATP ranking, uh, Henry? Just out of curiosity. Non-existent, Ali. 10.7 millionth in the world, is that what it was? Something like that. Six foot five, I can see you out there covering the gutters. <laughs> Bull boy of the year, 2007. Yeah. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> oh. Come on. 
I could see you being a ball boy. Not now, but back when you were age appropriate. The one armed bandit. No, currently you couldn't be a ball. You'd be quite worthless as a ball boy in your current state. As far from worthless as an ace 10. Under the gun, Deems Morton Klein takes it up to 35,000. Little suited connector into the bin from Haxton. And it's going to be like 15%. Yeah, probably, yeah. There you go. Some speculation. Dan was saying top bounty is going to be around 15% of the bounty prize pool, which would be around 350, 400k. Slotnikov into the bin. I, I, I got a tough time looking at that brown hoodie and not envisioning Winnie the Pooh. No, it's the baby pictures from like the Star Wars enthusiast family that's like, yes. oh, look at our little Ewok. Yeah. Chewie's here. Welcome to the yeah, world. Right. To be fair, Ewoks are cute. I, I, I'm in favor of the Ewok infant onesie. If not the infant itself. Remember when people just used to have babies and... They still do. Didn't have baby showers or didn't have to scroll through Instagram watching everyone. Like, congrats, guys. Well done. It, it is important to point out to new parents out there who obviously are not streaming because they're busy trying to catch up on sleep that they've been deprived of by the needy little offspring. But uh, you care about your kid a lot more than anyone else does. That is true. By anyone else, I mean me. Thanks for the pick. Or six that you sent. But uh, a lot of times they're not that cute either. And you're like, well, what, what do you want me to say here? It, it, you know, maybe it'll grow into its face. Ace two suited, meanwhile. Seven. Think I'm ready to be a dad, Henry? Ace four four. Axton. That four of spades got me excited. Unfortunately, no action cards behind. Klein was just seven high. Yeah, nothing exciting about this development. First and second in chips at this feature table. You know, what am I meant to say, Ali? Congratulations. How many times can you say cute? For a second, I thought you were looking for sort of direction assistance in terms of being a color commentator here in the booth, and I thought it was a bit late for that question. Well, you know, learned from the best. Here we are, eight of spades. Some potential excitement now. Got shot straight draw. For the Norwegian, who's got just shy of 60,000 in career Triton earnings. All of it coming in his very first event at his first series back in Madrid, which was a 20K 8 max no limit. Has failed to cash since. And while that card did give equity to Klein, it also provided Haxton with the nut flush draw. Potential check back spot. Yeah, you know, spades. Let your opponent river a pair. That's exactly what's happened. Well, he is a fisherman. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, Ike Haxton, one of the best. Has earned himself 20K that he would not have otherwise. Certainly not with a bet on the flop. Probably not with a bet on the turn. But here, gave Klein enough rope to find himself sitting on sevens and fours and betting. Against this small sizing, around 20%, certainly value to be had. And the real spice would come from the bet three bet from Morton with some very key cards in hand as Ike does take it north to 110,000. Blocking six five, blocking sevens, a seven, 
seven four, four five suited. All of those kind of hands. Go on, reach for more chips. Let's cut out the calling chips. can kind of understand the, dare I call it, confusion on Morton Klein's face here as played by Haxton. Yeah, check, check, flop and turn. Under the gun v big blind. All options on the table, you know, fold, call, raise. Be pretty gangster, although after this much time in the tank, maybe. Leaning more towards just calling. Always easy to level yourself into calling here as well. When you bet so small, it kind of feels like you're opening the door for Haxton to pounce. Well done, sir. Gets away from it. Uses up a couple of time banks, but ultimately makes the correct decision. A little pick up there for Ike. Love the flop turn and check from Ike, by the way. Nope, pants at the ready. Jason Kuhn had a cool one at the final table of event two with Pocket Kings. Checked flop and turn against Adrian Mateos, who had... Queen nine of hearts. Tiny, tiny little bit of chips behind, but Jason was trying to keep him in there to allow him to take advantage of a short stack. So there was some obviously different circumstances under which he took his line, but nevertheless, observe and take note indeed. So much to take away from these streams. I mean, you ask some of these pros that are actually here what they do in between series, and a lot of them will talk about reviewing final tables from Triton Super High Roller Series. If you want to learn from the best and how to approach some of these complex ICM situations, why not get the notepad out? Haxton flopping a gut shot straight draw here in the big against the Ukrainian Lubavetsky, who's got himself top pair backdoor hearts. Off of 315k comes a follow through barrel of 15 exactly. Into 85, that is timid. Again, options on the table, but Andre with just 300k. Uh, you know, still deep enough to check rates, but check call. Cool. Two overs to the four threes, nice. Board pairing turn as Haxton made the call and failed to improve. Potential lead spot for Ike. Going to have more forex from the big blind. Gets to fold out some ace highs, some queen highs that stabbed. A leading turn. Tag me in, coach. I'm ready, chat. Haxton. Little 25k tickle, Ali. Leading now. In these sorts of lines, again, you just took note of another one that he had, which was a bit unorthodox. File this one under that category as well. So check bet. called 15 now, leads out 25. Trying to rep the four, I guess, exactly? Well, exactly that. That's what I was talking about, you know, from the big blind. Going to have more four X. Just to fold out some random 10-9s, jack-10s, has equity against the continuing range, gets to set the price, potentially get some folds. Does he have too much showdown value now For after sure. hitting the 7 to bother firing again? May go small again here. Block bet. There we go. 
similar-ish sizing. Check the side, also an option. There we go, knuckles it on over to Andre. Well now Lubavetsky. Obviously feels like it would be silly to check back the King-10, but at the same time, this is Haxton, who could be up to no good. Check call, lead, now check. Problem with checking River is Lubavetsky is going to have a lot of check behinds if Ike did have value, like a four. I think he'd want to just try and extract value. So the check really does open the door for the Ukrainian to fire out as he does, one, two, five. Five of spades is a bad card. Blocking ace five. Bravo, Ike, giving Lubavetsky credit for a winner correctly there as he puts the seven into the muck. Lubavetsky, by the way, Henry might be tempted to think he's a Triton first-timer. Finished 17th in the... Seven max for $40,000, but Madrid was his first ever Cypress Series, and he cashed for 10th in his first ever Triton event, the 20K 8 max. Yeah, Merritt, regular, if I'm not mistaken, commentated on him in a few of the Merritt mains, typically, what, 5K buy in three mils. Seen him run deep in a few of those, a couple of FTs. I mean, why wouldn't you venture out to northern Cyprus, poker paradise, Mediterranean Ocean, just a stone's throw away? Did you just call it the Mediterranean Ocean? I mean, it's big, but it's not an ocean. No? It's okay. the sea. There we go. Learn <laughs> something there. It is 1 a.m. Mediterranean Lake. Grow up. <laughs> Mediterranean Pond. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's crystal clear and beautiful out here at Merritt and worth a dip. It's part of the pregame ritual of many of these guys. Dan DeVoris, I believe, at breakfast mentioned that he'd already gotten in there. He said it's a little bit chilly. But 20 minutes, you can handle it, was the scouting report delivered by the Canadian. 954, meanwhile, in a three-way affair, which... Gives Seth Davies the Jack High Flush Draw. Pairless pack of six cards. I'm going to get a notepad. Start noting down the amount of times you name drop on stream. It's like commentating next to Helmuth. Name drop the players that we're looking at who are all well, here you know. as part of a small grouping. How many players did you go to breakfast with this morning? Oh, listen, it's not <laughs> as though it was intentional. I wasn't invited. I just happened to be there, and then they were sitting there, and then, you know, You're I like, just hey kind of moseyed in. And Can I join? Had my lunch tray, and, you know, awkwardly, they were like, well, I guess we got to let the commentator sit with us. No, I was... Like the new inmate trying to find friends in the canteen hall. Looking for some innocent faces. Hey, these guys seem friendly. Maybe they'll let me join. Nothing like that. <laughs> That's how I'm picturing it. Seth Davies with the Jack High Flush draw. Continuing against the ATK. Haxton picking Hike. up a gutter on the turn here after the King of Diamonds rolls off. He's worked it up to 280.
Mike has a nice bet fold. Ninety. Yeah, I like this. 11. It's not like you're hating, you know, getting raised in terms of not getting to realize your equity. It's such a minimal amount against the made hand. But a lot of good things can happen here. I fold out some ace highs. Some one pair holdings that really struggle to play across three streets. Even hands like this. As played, I put you in Davies's seat. What do you feel like you're up against? I could certainly have ace king, pocket pairs over the nine. Although maybe not going to bet that sizing as the six of hearts gives Davies the check mark. Four sixty in the middle, four five five behind Ike with. Queen of Hearts in hand. Is he going to send it? Well, we're certainly awaiting that decision. Scott Davies covered. All in. One SPR for Seth. Certainly within the realm of possibility, isn't it? Got to imagine it would be a mistake. Don't see a world in which Davies came this far to put a jack eye flush into the muck where he asked for it all. Oh, we're high-fiving the dealer. Yep. Calling the friends over, clicking the call button. Maybe premature to call the friends over, but... Goes for the non all in sizing. This bet really designed to fold out the one pair holdings, sevens, eights. And do so efficiently without the use of the full 455. Yeah, getting a good price on his bluff, of course. Posturing here from Davies or thinking about whether or not to call or jam? Oh, we're jamming. Okay. Just taking his time. Although maybe, I mean, if he doesn't feel like there's value to be had from weaker hands, but no, here we go. All of it, one chip behind. Snap fold from the Prince of Darkness who had his hand in the cookie jar on that river. Davey's now playing a very healthy 1.1 million. He's gonna go bounty hunting tomorrow. He can maintain that chip stack. Well, dare I intervene, Henry. Please do. And point out that we might have thought Davies was going to go money bubbling in event number two based on how deep his stack was to start the day. And That's yet, true. took an ace-king in the battle and managed to be on the outside of that bubble. Here, you've ridden the broom, presuming that Davies will go bounty hunting tomorrow. We still have a couple of levels of play and a lion-hearted man who isn't afraid to potentially not end up bounty hunting tomorrow. we got 45 minutes on the clock. I'll give you 10 to 1 on Davies making it through today, too. Look, I like your side. Don't get me wrong. But... If I were a betting man, no, I am. Let's not jinx Davies. That's such a sick run in Vietnam. A couple of crossbars. Couldn't quite convert. The deep runs into a win. But does find himself in the hunt for the Ivan Liao player of the year leaderboard, although Chidwick's third place finish today, Jason Kuhn's victory 
and Greenwood's fifth place yesterday. Kind of leaving Davies on the outside looking in for the time being. Forty K open from Morton Klein from the cutoff with the Jack Ten suited running into an Ace Queen suited for Haxton from the button, making it a cool one hundred as Henry is looking on at the Ivan Leal Player of the Year leaderboard yet to be updated with Jason Coons and Stephen Chidwick's win and of course the points. Obtained by Chidwick as well, but Kuhn ran fourth, Davies third, Greenwood second, Chidwick first, coming into today. Morton, meanwhile, makes wow. the call, flops two overs in an open ender, up against the nut flush draw. Checks with the flow, 240 in the middle. Million chip plot, pot, please, dealer. Nine eighth tray, couple of spades, open ender for the Norwegian. 240 in the middle, SPR less than two, Ike with the two overs and not flush draw. Eighty-five. The number dialed up by Haxton here as a follow-up act. To the pre-flop three bet, of course. Klein not gonna go anywhere. Flats, pot up to 410,000, and there is a beautiful seven of hearts as far as Martin Klein is concerned. Turns the nuts, checks. Haxton totally unimproved. Four ten in the middle, three seven five behind. What Ike wants to do here, SPR less than one. What are the thoughts? Arguments in favor of betting and Checking respectively. I think checking makes a ton of sense. And Morton not folding tens, not folding jacks. Obviously, sets we're in rough shape against. Only really beating hands like queen, jack, queen, ten, which, you know, is a small part of the range. So the Haxton check back, perhaps delivering a little mercy on the river, if not a spade. As the four-liner materializes and Klein gets busy, betting 205, exactly half pot. Yeah, unfortunate stint at this feature table so far. So far? So far for Ike Haxton. Things just really not going his way, trying to bluff with that Queen Jack earlier. Ace Queen three bet pot, no good against the turn straight of Morton Klein. And Ali finally got to test out the demo back in Madrid. A new world of poker is coming. You can pre register now with the QR code. Try to play is a social poker game that is looking to revolutionize the way the world plays poker. And they're open for pre registrations. I know you, Jeff Gross, some of the team have been. Beta testing, delta testing. When you see the QR code pop up, be sure to scan it. Start your journey into the new world. Try and play with some really exciting stuff coming up. A stealth demo, a London giveaway, and so much more. And knowing the hours the team in at KL have been putting in over the last, what, I want to say 18, 24 months to get this launched, Ali. They've toiled. But listen, if the Triton Poker Plus app is any indication of what our crew is capable of, 
I, for one, am very much looking forward to that Triton Play app release. And, of course, KL, short for Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia, where we are headquartered. Shout out, Dr. Chan. Orthopedic surgeon based in KL. Oh, is this the guy that's tasked with uh, putting you back together? <laughs> there we go. Okay. He did get your insurance info, right? He did. Okay. <laughs> Make sure. I'd hate to see you free roll him. <laughs> Man's got, you know, no, that's an student eat. loans to pay. Well, yeah, well, maybe. Although I think this many years later, he's good. Found yourself a veteran, did you? I did indeed. Highly recommended. Yelp. Soiza. <laughs> <laughs> has been trending in the wrong direction, has Haxton. Here in these late rounds. Still enough depth to play some poker, which is what Morton Klein wants to do with King Jack suited. Suited connector for Haxton. Just comfortably tossed. Yeah, no longer the stack depth to be peeling in position, unfortunately. The back end of that ace queen and queen jack. What we got, Arlie? You having a look? Yeah. Try some Poker Plus app. I'm wondering why you didn't give me the last money, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my word for right it. There. Can track every <coughs> hand played from every event. Your favorite players that aren't necessarily on the feature table. Chip counts brought to you by Merit Poker. Blinds 10,000, 15,000 with a 15,000 big blind ante. It's a sight I never want to see again. Why are you laughing, Henry? Never seen a grown man dance to a chip count. You look like the crazy soundtrack. Frog. You remember? You seen that? You remember that ringtone? Morton Klein with the Norwegian flag out in pole position. Anatoly Zlotnikov down at the bottom of the chip counts with just seven big blinds. Really been a spectator for the bulk of this frame. Cards not cooperating. He's just looking for a spot. Deck hasn't afforded him one just yet. And that continues to be the case as 3 4 off suit. At least he's comfortable. Looks like he's engrossed in his phone. It's a way to pass the time in between pots. Davies, ace nine. Takes it upstairs from the small with a 4x raise to 60,000. Jack 10 off for Morton. And we're on the million. Just over, yep. Sorry. Morton Klein inquiring, facing the 4x. Closing the action, of course. Plenty deep against Seth Davies. Jack-10 working for him so far against Ike Haxton. Davies deep himself relative to Morton's stack, though, and he decides that 4x is a bit too rich for him to want to contend. Yeah, that's a discipline fold late in the day. Thoughts of the plushy king-size bed at the Merritt Royal. Diamond Hotel, the day two bag. Do you want to play a bloated part with Jack Tenno? Mm -hmm. 50, no, 30 minutes left on the clock. Is a king size bed enough to contain the stature of a man like Morton? Great question, honestly. I think the feet might be hanging off the, Maybe. the end of that thing. They might just be. Ike admitting that 
He's been getting himself in trouble so far at this feature. Levovetsky. Perhaps welcoming trouble with an ace queen up front. And this rates to be the moment that Zlotnikov has been waiting for, Henry. Sure enough. <laughs> I mean, the chips go in, he's going to get shown the ace queen, and there's going to be a bit of an eye roll coming from Anatoly. Not sure we're going to get a glimpse at it, given the lenses. True. This patient look down at ace queen, and you're actually at an equity disadvantage against your opponent with the same hand. I was just saying, nice hand. I have a nut one. Nut spade pointed out by Zlotnikov. It's got a point. Yeah, it's got one less point in equity oh, as well. And King Jack Trey on the flop. That ace of diamonds was working for Lyubovetsky, but in the end. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Left these guys destined for a chop here. Late in the evening, coming up on 1 a.m. local time here in Karenia, North Cyprus. Count Lee getting busy on the outer tables against second in chips, Jose Barbero. Running trips for both players. Barbero with kicker problems, meaning Cat Lee's extended his lead at the top of the chip counts by almost 400,000. Jose Barbero in second, Biao Ding in third. Adrian Mateos, bullet number five, going much better. Finds himself fourth in chips as things stand, and Stephen Chidwick in fifth, rounding out the top five as we head into the final stretch of today's play. I'm going to step in with a bit of inside advice. Barbero, safely call that man Nacho moving forward. I didn't even know who Jose was. <laughs> Once you say Barbero, though, that's our man Nachito. On a hot streak, by the way. Oh, yeah. In tournaments. If you ask him. Is Nacho. Some of the content he's been putting out on the socials, the year of Nacho. <laughs> Branding campaign, huh? Yeah. Quite the year it's been. Hung out with him for a little bit down in uh, downtown Hoi An, I we believe. Did, did we yeah. not? Always eager for a night out, that man. Not eager, however, to be facing this raise to 45,000 is the five-do suited of Ike Haxton and bottom of range manages to get the job done there. Tip of the hat to Andre with the nine deuce dust ball. Some celebrations from someone on the outer table. Outer tables rather as the blinds go up to 10,000, 20,000 with a 20,000 big blind ante brought to you by Shambhala Jewels. So Chase and Kuhn Snag a piece of that fine jewelry earlier on today in the 20K. This card just has like writing all over it. <laughs> it just has like a bunch of pencil all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone got the crayons out. I wrote you a note on that one, Seth. <laughs> Zlotnikov with the deuces. Doesn't look thrilled. The position he finds himself in. Putting that gum to work, though. Some great value being extracted there. Yeah, I'd hate to come back to life as a piece of chewing gum in his pocket. Boy, that was... Oh, man. Intense levels of mastication. <laughs> you always go. <laughs> Flat call from Davies with the King-Queen. 
Oh, everyone else going to get out of the way. And we are off to the races. Fair fight. Two overs against the Ducks. Look at Zlotnikov trying to get a sneak preview as he leans into Davies. See a slight equity favorite here. Emphasis on slight. 310k in the middle, and Zlotnikov's deuces have held on a paintless nine high board. Uh oh. Same story on the turn, but now the dreaded counterfeit is available. Let it go, let it go. And it comes in, running two pair on the board. Davies plays king high, and Zlotnikov showered. Dirty way to do it. It's just like all over the back of the It's the most obvious in the corner. I was like looking for like the whole time. Looks like someone looks like someone just gave a toddler a pencil and just started fucking screaming. Haxton really getting a kick out of this seemingly blatantly marked yeah, card. That happens, just put your hand over it. Yeah, yeah, I, could, I, couldn't, hand I couldn't believe it. I was just like, what is yeah. that? Was it yeah. somebody's signature on the? I don't know. It <laughs> I think like so, it. yeah. Yeah, I probably shouldn't Maybe say Aaron something. Was well, you know, when you don't have a piece of scratch paper and you're looking for anything to write something down on, a king of hearts will do, apparently. That was hilarious. Well, not laughing, of course, is Zlotnikov, who will not get an opportunity to go bounty hunting tomorrow. And Seth Davies will be quite all right with that, is absorbing his stack. We'll leave Davies with 62 bigs and roughly one and a quarter million. Yeah, top 10 stack for Davies. As things stand, going to be coming back tomorrow, covering more than half the field. So, you know, some early day two gamble spots potentially on the horizon. That brought to you by Poker Steak. Just 41 runners remain of the 155 entries in total. It's back underway, presumably with a cleaner King Queen than the one Davies put to use moments ago. Five handed they proceed here at our blue feature table. Ace Queen for Mr. Klein. Got a 3x from the hijack. King 7 suited for Ike. Nineteen bigs. Took a moment before pitching the King Salmon. Now it's King 10 on the button. Same choice. Devoris, not a candidate. But Davies in the big with Ace-8. Yeah, against the 3x open, reverse implied odds of, you know, defending with the Ace-8, flopping top pair, and all of a sudden playing a inflated pot out of position, deep stacked. Just going to pitch it. Let's get the Daniel Torres spin going, by the way. Been painful to watch. We know what that man can do with a stack. Adrian Mateos, by the way, bullet number five, up to third in chips. How many bullets do you think he was going to be willing to throw at this one? Oh, he was emptying all of that money earned from the 20K. All 197k was going straight back into the prize pool of event number three. And beyond? And beyond. I want to talk about deep pockets, aren't we? Play table tennis down there. Oh boy. 
Davies, small blind, king, king. Haxton off of the 370, sticking more than 10% of it in the middle in the form of this open. Minimum in size. Davies three betting to 150,000. Note the king of spades, busy in Klein's hand. Well, Klein's gonna get out of the action back on Ike. 16 and a half bigs behind, two bigs already committed into the middle. Gets this size as well, I mean. 220 back is Davies ever folding to a jam. Do we have enough hand to peel? Wow, and it goes. Yep, the jam from Ike. Davies, of course, quickly calling. Yeah, both of them. No scribbles, though. So. Isaac might be peering over with great interest as his tournament life hangs in the balance, as does the opportunity to go bounty hunting tomorrow in this 780K pot, where he finds the Ace of Diamonds, and he's got the Ace of Spades protecting against any flushiness that Davies might have had as the turn pairs the board, and Davies is left with just two outs to get rid of Ike Haxton, and instead gets the two of clubs. A lifeline for the Prince of Darkness after things at this feature had not been going his way. Back up to a very playable 40 big blinds. Feels like such a, an unfair nickname, dare I call it, for Ike, the Prince of Darkness. He's actually kind of a, a lighthearted guy, in my experience. He's just always laughing. Very comfortable when he's out there. Do you know the, the origin origins story. of the Prince of Darkness? I think we'll have to get Jungle Man on call. Fairly sure. It's none other than Dan Cates. He's coined the quite a few nicknames in his time. So he christened Ike the yeah. Prince of Darkness. Well, my guess is he's hurled the Prince of Darkness moniker at more than a few people just based on... No, no, no. Just strictly Ike, Strictly you think? Ike, yeah. Okay. Ace 10 for Lubavetsky from the hijack has piqued the interest of one Dan Devoris with just 80K in total. Yeah, five-handed. Gonna have to put in half our stack in just a couple of hands. Could click it. Opens the door for Lubavetsky to come over the top. Kind of the incentivizing players behind to tangle rather than flatting, which would invite the big blind to defend. Four bigs, queen eight suited. And with the clock ticking as well, I mean, going to have to put half our stack in, as I just mentioned. But say we bag four or five bigs tomorrow, we know level one. If we don't pick up the goods, people are going to be going after us. Definitely would rather be on the hunter than hunted side of the stacks as distributed coming into tomorrow's action. And that might lead to some get busy decision making here. Not necessarily with the 9 6 suited. Defendable. Yeah, yeah, defendable, but not. Let's rise up and get squirrely because we want to spin up a stack coming into tomorrow. First step is get to tomorrow. Yes. Haxton plunks in the extra 20 and whiffs the Jack Deuce Deuce board. Same story, of course, for Lubavetsky, but the kind of texture that could quite easily find him firing the follow through. Oh, 
Ike shouldn't have too many do-sex from the big. Feels like an easy C-bet spot. Go small. Sub 20 big, uh, 20%. Nine, six of clubs. Whenever I see Ike in a hand, I'm always thinking about the back doors that he sees. Does eventually let it go. There's a little pick up there for the Ukrainian. All pots are welcome at this point for Lyubovetsky. Hovering in that 20 blind territory. Up to 24 bigs after that one. There will be a redraw, Ike, to answer your question. <laughs> Queens for Seth Davies. And big pocket pairs. Not working out for him over the last... Orbit, Kings cracked by the ace jack. Paused on Haxton's small, I doubt for very long with the four or five off. Jack nine suited. Defendable kit from the big, obviously. Twenty-two bigs closing the actual. Okay, here we go. That is absolutely not what we would have expected, and the look on Henry Kilbane's face here in the booth says it all. I mean, I I love it. By the way, yeah, you know, we fold out hands that have us dominated the offsuit varieties. Queen Jack, King Jack <laughs> have plenty of equity against, you know, his King, his Queen obviously in rough shape here, but has flopped a piece. On the Ace Jack seven board, second pair hunting Jackson nines in this 940K pot that snuck up on us. Hello. Now more outs as a gutter comes to fruition. Davies nervously looking away through a smile. And a safe three of clubs on the river as Lubovetsky gave it all he had there. Kilbane, you said you loved it. But obviously the sword is double-edged. And on this occasion, he ran into the two queens and was unable to issue a bad beat. And as such, finds himself busto. Yeah, Lubovets, he knows that Davies is going to have a ton of raise folds from the cutoff. Heading towards the end of the day as well. Maybe just trying to play the role of table captain. Jack nine is fine. In my opinion. This has been ruled the other way two out of three times it's come up so far this tournament. <laughs> Easy, Ike. What was the exchange? I believe the question was dead small, or does another player get brought over to come into the small? And I know for a fact that we had a dead small earlier on on the feature table. Ike saying that that's the case as well, but the floor saying no. Player coming. Chip counts brought to you by Bookmaker. Seth Davies out in front after losing with Kings against Ace Jack, but managing to regain some of those losses with Queens against the 
Jack Nine of Lubavetsky there finds himself seventh and uh, ninth in chips rather on the overall leaderboard. Adrian Mateos, bullet number five, going incredibly well. Was just first, but has been dethroned as I started the sentence. Now down to fourth in chips. Kat Lee out in front. Playing that massive pot against Chris Brewer earlier on today. Nacho Barbero chilling. Third in chips, 1.6 million the year of Nacho continues, it seems. Arthur Martiroshi and Stephen Chinwick, Henry Kecklin, Biao Ding, Seth Davies and Steve O'Dwyer rounding out the top 10. 40 players remain. The initial 155 entries, 2.3 Two five million in the bounty prize pool, same in the overall prize pool, and some speculation from the players that 15 20 percent will be the top bounty. So maybe tomorrow, you know, 400 450. Why not round it up to 500? See what Luca brings. He's going to crunch the numbers tonight. Well, whatever they come up with as the top envelope, I for one. You want to be there. We'll absolutely be there and be reveling in the opportunity to get some envelope swaps, maybe some people to sell their envelopes. You're an absolute menace. You were. You were at it, weren't you? One million percent. I remember yes. when it got down to the final three. Monica, Victor, Victor Jong, yeah. and Victor Malinowski. And you're like, do you want to swap? Would have made Monica an extra 70K. Tried to help the woman. You did. That was pretty rough, you know. Two of the richest guys both pull out the 100K. You're a 66% shot. <laughs> she got 20, was 30, it? 30, 30, 30, but yeah, yeah, you know, same thing. There we go, Dee Dee. Gets a free orbit. Off of that relatively shallow stack. For those of you that haven't already, get involved in the conversation with us on social media. Posting a ton of content behind the scenes. Exclusive interviews with some of your favorite players. Some of you know, more up close and personal stuff. With some of the legends of the game. Triton Poker on Instagram and Twitter. Highlight reels, hand histories that you may have missed from previous events. And of course, Click the like button if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel. Not only do we have 13 more days of action here in northern Cyprus, but as Randy mentioned today, just recorded a five-part series of a nosebleed, no-limit hold'em cash game, including players like Jungle Man, Phil Nagy, Paul Poit, going to be released later next month, I believe. So if those aren't enough reasons to click the subscribe button, then I really don't know what to say to you. Ali, anything? Click it. There we go. You varmints. <laughs> <laughs> not even sure I know what varmints means. It's just something I heard in Looney Tunes as a child. And now I've grown up to be a Looney Tune myself. As Devoris likes the tune of an Ace-10. Picks it up. Trying to grind his way into day two. Shout out Montclair. Morton Klein knows what it's about. I see you, Harley. Bulk of my Triton checks are signed over to that store. <laughs> I've seen it first time. Shockingly enough, given that it's a French Italian ski wear company and I live in the desert. <laughs> Go figure. Shout out the Adrenaline Studios in Vegas. Not sure why I need a goose down parka. <laughs> they know all too well about the Montclair outfits that 
Holly likes to pull up him. By the way, Jason was rocking a little streetwear Montclair en route to his victory in event number two. It crept up on me. I don't usually shop that collection, but Montclair nevertheless. Do not believe that Ike's short sleeve button down is from the house of Montclair, but Are those watermelons. Strong. Has he been inspired by Linus's strawberry Dolce and Gabbana <laughs> shirt? Or was it cherries? Surprise me. I can't me. remember. Adrian Mateus has taken the chip lead of the entire tournament, by the way, on bullet number five. Yeah, didn't spend much time off the pace, did he? As a very cherry king-queen suited for Alexander Shelukin. And raise open. Going to get through Dvoris' 10-5, I presume. But then what happens when Davies with a six suited in the big blind gets his turn? So three more hands to be dealt. Ali, the conclusion of this hand. Standard and customary end to the evening. Tournament staff will draw for the number of hands to be played at each table. It's not unique to us. Sleep will be had by many. Flush draws and top pair will be had by this duo as the preflop raiser on the button. Not flush draw. Who will fault him for barreling on this board? Certainly not I. And Davies not going to get faulted for checking top pair and seeing what's what. Calls the 25K. Pot up to 160. <laughs> and there is the six of spades. The most troublesome card in the deck insofar as it's given. Davies aces up. Top two, to be specific. But it has given Alexander the flush. At this SPR early, and I know Seth Davies is capable of doing it, but this would have to be some fold on the river unless a fourth spade rolls off or a, you know. Well, it would be incredible to get away from this, especially when ch turn goes check, check. 160 in the middle. Davy's going to go for value, understandably so. Let's say that it's preordained that he's going to bet here, but would be surprised if he doesn't. Oh, it's the overbet as it well. It sure is. 150% pot. Of course, when we hold the nuts, the bigger the better in terms of sizing out of our opponents. And The crazy thing is, is now this is like the most under-bluff spot ever when Davies bangs in with the 150 on the river to then jam with just 140 more, a.k.a. zero fold equity. Good luck finding bluffs, I mean. He's not checking turn with ace five, then jamming river, right? Like, it has to be some really weird queen, I don't even know. <coughs> Weaker two pair, doesn't make sense. But music to Alexander's ears as he jams. And now I want to see Davy's reaction. Is ever a time to get away from it? Now would be it, of course, but who could fault Davies for clicking call with aces and sixes? But at the same time, what makes sense for Shelley Keane to have been taking this line with? Exactly. I mean, that's what's going through Davies' head right now. Check, check, turn. IB 150 river, and this guy's jamming on me with 140k more. You know, you can put the pot odds out the window. 140 to win 780. What do I beat? What bluffs does this guy have? Kings with a spade? Never. Don't beat queens anymore. Jacks with a spade? Never. So you're having 
to give this guy a hand like King Jack. King seven with a spade is he opening that off suit variety. Makes the call, understandably so. Gonna get shown the bad news. Seth Davies losing 465,000 in that one. I'm struggling to find bluffs, but I'm very curious to ask him about it for a post-mortem later on today or tomorrow. That would be the top of the list of questions. Is he like jamming ace jack? Ace king, king of spades? Uh. Time goes check, check. Yeah, you better be able to identify hands that you can beat if you're going to make a call in that spot. Three. But one and three. didn't feel like there was a whole lot of them as played. How are we doing, Chachi? You excited for tomorrow? Bounties galore? Come on, you already know the answer to that. Hell yeah, I am. Not just me, by the way, the players. And quite frankly, Henry, I love to see the enthusiasm shown for this particular event, given that it deviates a bit from the pure poker mm. in terms of strategy. But these guys are game players by heart, and I think they kind of enjoy exercising their, their minds, their brains in a different way, especially if they're able to make it into the bounty period and figure out what optimal strategy is. It's just the cloth from which they're cut. What we need to do is find Luca Vivaldi, lock him in a room, maybe back him into a dark corridor. Full stop. <laughs> and have some conversations about how we're going to go bounty hunting. Because I loved the Vietnam experience, as did a lot of the viewers. But I understand. I'll look after the players. We don't want to get in the way of the poker that needs to be played and all this. But maybe if we back him into a dark enough room, we can convince him. <coughs> this flop, not backing anyone into anything as both holdings are unimproved here. Haxton, the pre-flop villain. Klein with the under rep taste queen. 85. Ike just doesn't slow down, man. Relentless, all over you. Smothering. And what's the plan with Ace Queen from here? That's the question on Morton Klein's mind. And if you can't answer it well, then it would certainly behoove one to just get the next hand underway, which I believe will be the last of the evening, Henry. Last two. Last two. Okay. Hence the passiveness from Klein. You know, he's already. In dreamland. Him and me both. I checked out two hours ago, pal. <laughs> Saw you taking a little nap. Two more? The old 15 second power nap. Not a lot of power behind it, I, I assure you. <laughs> Enough to keep the clock ticking 15 for 15 second. minutes, you know. Narcolepsy special. <laughs> Long days, and if you think it's grueling here in the booth, just put yourself in the shoes of those that are out there making decisions for massive sums of money and doing so against guys that'll make it as tough on you as possible. I'm a little intense. I would give anything to be capable of that. I've got, would, would you I've got feel something. consistently waking up at like 7 a.m. for two weeks straight? Nope, take it back. Okay. Because it's not that hard. <laughs> Immediately take it back. <laughs> few brain cell cells to the Xanax god. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrificial neurons? There we go. I, I, Just I, to get a good night's sleep. There we go. You tell him, Dvoris. Sort of. It's like the Andrew Huberman of our community. Philosophical logic. It's 
far too late in the night. I was about to say, I don't think Ike night. wants to hear that. Out Come at me with that sage wisdom. I feel like it's going to be zero beers tonight, but otherwise it's... <laughs> zero beers for Ike tonight. Well, are there beers flowing most nights after play? It did sound so. like that, didn't it? Like yeah, it, didn't I just it, yeah. didn't want to put anybody on blast, but... I think that's the needle from Dvoris saying, like, right. you're drinking beers and eating food just before bed, then expecting to sleep. I mean, Didi, you tell him, my man. I don't know how to break this to you as Davies is in a very bad way against Shelukin's ace six, which has him covered here. But... Uh, Full belly tends to get me down for Couple an extra downs. REM cycle or two. It definitely does. And then also over time, quite a few extra kilos, as you put it, as well. Not the best practices. The A6 is playing slow for the time being, Henry. Yeah, from bad to worse for Davies, especially on this rainbow completing undercard to the flop. Top pair, cut off a big blind, plenty of value to be had. And unfortunately, has run into top of range and a deceptive check from Seth, the Trey Trey run out. Bit of pot control from Davies. Potentially gonna save him. Overbet would be spicy. I like 210. He's nine, no good, Davies. Yeah. <laughs> Gets called, and then uh, promptly Davies just heads for the loo. And go get his call. <laughs> what do I work here? Making the dealer work, I mean. Just said cool, didn't flick in a chip, showed the ace nine, ran to the bathroom. Sounds like he's holding that one in for some time. But there we have it, Ali. End of event number three, the 30K Mystery Bounty day one coverage has concluded. Devoris lean with just six big blinds heading into tomorrow. But the good news for the Canadian, of course, is that he gets to go bounty hunting with the rest of the field. Going to be on the hunted side of the spectrum coming into play as we close things off with 39 runners, 155 total entries in the prize pool going to afford the winner 540,500 for give me 23 places paid 27,000 will be the min cash but of course half that prize pool going to the bounties and as you mentioned envelopes going to be drawn a couple of days later as we seek not to disrupt any of the tournament action that is taking place and as we Wind down the evening, Henry. Final thoughts and takeaways from that last frame or beyond? Well, from that last frame in particular, I mean, there was some funny jokes shared between Ike, Dvoris, Seth Davies, all sorts of shenanigans going on. Some sage wisdom as well from Danny Dvoris, even though he sat there with a short stack, but still wanted to remind his friend that, hey, listen, you've got two weeks of high-stakes poker ahead of you. Try and focus on the sleep and the sunlight in the morning to just... Keep you going. and you can, you can get into a nice little routine over here, though, in can. terms of a pregame that gets you fresh and ready to go. And to be fair, restarts don't happen bright and early. No. They happen in the afternoon. Plenty of opportunities if you're a bit sleepless to get some REM cycles in there and show up tomorrow ready to go, ready to pick up some envelopes. And on that note, Henry and I will bid you adieu, but certainly thanks for joining us for these Hours and hours of coverage that we have brought you today and so many more days of it in store here from the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. But that is all for this evening on behalf of our entire crew, Randy Lou, Laura Nisi, Producer James, and the Sharehan folks. We say goodnight, and we'll see you tomorrow.